as well as we join into game number one, NAC4 finals, Leary against Hera, and Leary has chosen to go with the save with the worst win rate in this tournament so far, the Hindustanis, he's going to be matching up. As we see our live viewing there, they're getting pumped. He's going to be matching up against the Magyars. Yeah, and the Hindustanis, you pick them because of their cheap villagers. You pick them because of their very strong camels. The issue for them has been a combination from the knight players, the knight and crossbow. Suddenly, it takes a little bit longer, a little bit more economy to get to the camels and elite skirm. But I think Leary learned how strong the Hindu standings is yesterday in his semifinal against the Viper. And I do actually prefer the Hindu standings here due to the eco. Cheaper villagers is huge. And if this game goes late, which is so can so often do on this map, look to the Hindu standings to dominate. A hero on the other side, though, going for a bit of a comfort pick. Cheaper scouts and also having forging. That right there, combined with Hera having no real eco bonus beyond... You know, the villagers giving a little punch to a wolf. Uh, is Hera's, th this tells us that Hera's going to be the aggressor here, Dave. Yeah, I think Leary needs to play towards the defense. Maybe a few more spears produced in Feudal Age because those Magyar scouts are cheaper and they're stronger initially. And they're going to come out onto the field faster here for Hera, even though he is lacking the eco bonuses that the Hindustanis possess. However, the military for Magyars, like, they can have a very strong Feudal Age. They can have a very strong Castle Age. And their Imperial Age, their Death Ball of Cav Archers, Magyar Hussar in front, even against a Civ like Hindustanis can find opportunities. I mean, they're just a, a powerful civilization as long as your economy is running fine behind it. Okay, so we have lots of Civs to talk about very long best of nine final. Do you feel as though the pressure on these two individuals is any greater or any less than it would have been if they were not facing each other. Because I personally feel like they both set out a goal to be on separate sides in semifinals, mm -hmm. to not run into each other. The goal was to meet in the finals. I really feel like we might see some of their best Age of Empires here because I think they'll be happy for their butt if they lose, you know? I think Leary really, like, more than any other time, I think Leary's put so much practice in, so much preparation for this tournament. He really, really wants this one. I know Hera is just like, Hera, there's no question in my mind. Like, Hera shows up to every tournament expecting to win and being bitterly disappointed if he doesn't win. He probably takes it harder than any other player, right? Because he puts so much expectation on himself. Leary is usually a more laid-back individual here as they both get a hit initially they're not close to feudal age so uh it is hera that's gonna have to run away after he takes a hit from leary and he's gonna try and dodge around this villager get that hill leary i don't know why you're going for that gate there buddy there's plenty of room to run around anyway to finish my point leary seems more emotionally invested in this one than okay. i've seen in the past and especially after one of those games yesterday he was like talking to himself he was pissed off because he lost mm -hmm. which is something that i haven't seen from leary on offline events. I've seen that online with a little bit of frustration, but he's never shown it to us offline. So that tells me that he's all in here. And I, I know, you know, it continues the point and we'll obviously move on to the game here as they're both most likely going scouts, but there then is a question of does that make you greater mm -hmm. or does that make you weaker? I know in my case, the higher the pressure is the worse I play, but these guys are elite competitors and elite competitors typically can bring out even more elite levels under that pressure. So 6.20 feudal times. Again, nine villagers start here, so things are a little bit faster than your standard Age of Empires 2 uh, games. And Hera right now looking to confirm it is scouts for Leary. He will see that. Hera on the other side, also doing the same. Interesting, though, he's kind of gone for a little wall-in situation there with his buildings on his lumber camp. I, I like it. It's economical, right? He doesn't want to spend any more wood than he has to as Leary just uh, runs. Uh, uh, doesn't get hit. It's why fine. Why do TCs not it's, do damage? It, TCs just don't hit anymore. It's fine. Leary completely calculated half a second of idle time for all those villagers from Hera. He's, he's done the math, Tristan. He's figured it out, and he's already causing damage by just running straight into the TC from Hera. He's it, gonna be happy with that it's one, It's gotten to actually. a point where I don't even garrison my TC anymore. <laughs> I'm just like... It never hits that first volley, <laughs> even if they're running yeah. directly at the TC. It, it's, he's, they're chucking like nerf out of the TC, yeah. a little nerf gun, but... Okay, so Magyar Scout's cheaper, and then also have the attack, so it should be advantage Hera for now. Leary still choosing to move forward, though, is interesting to see. And Leary will need some Spearmen at home. Sometimes you can advance forward. If you do so, you will encounter a wolf here or there here on this map. Oh, nice little hit there from Hera. And every hit like that really matters because then Hera has to be slightly less concerned about those scouts coming to hit him at home. He can defend with villagers or maybe one Spearman. Leary needs to keep producing Spearmen here, in my opinion. He's housed, which is quite annoying. First game of the day. Yeah. Yep. 
and Hera is going to see that Leary is housed, and Leary gets pulled away from that. Luckily for him, Hera moves along, and he's able to finish it. Leary now looking for opportunities, but Hera's back there in defense, and this is just the point of the game where the Magyars are supposed to shine, right? The early feudal age. Yeah, much cleaner start here for Hera. Not that bad for Leary, obviously, but he's got to be careful. He does have two scouts here. He actually Ooh. could take out the farm, which I think he might have. No, Hera deleted that. But good work there from Leary to move forward. He has moved forward with more confidence than I expected here. He but did. that means that don't Hera wasn't in a position that. to attack him. I think he did get that. Oh, maybe. Vodka is pointing out the res to strike. <laughs> oh, is he? <laughs> yes. Oh, that's sick. Okay, yeah. yeah. I like the little passive-aggressive hover. <laughs> so we say something Vodka's wrong. Like, if, I had a mic if you're right really now. paying attention, you can see two or three of those a game. Vodka is, of course, our observer, and he's a very good player himself, so he knows all about this game. Well, Hera getting housed here as well. First game of the day, right? It's going to be a long series here, guys. And Town Watch isn't going to hurt him, right? Normally, you see that researched if you can no longer produce villagers. He does see that there's three scouts there from Leary on higher HP. Pulls his uh, scouts back, and Herod should be fine here. The question now is, will we see more scouts from both? The answer currently is yes. We have five scouts for Leary, and we have six scouts for Hera. I would be the I would be afraid to be the first person to stop producing scouts in this matchup, especially the way that you are so open at your bases. You can see Hera, like having three scouts at home in defense in addition to the spearman that shows yep. how nervous he is about this and he only has three forward he's trying to use his mobility but leary is setting up his base nicely with the spearman in the right positions and neither player has really taken damage look at the res collected very very similar for both of these guys yeah and this is where you start to see the differences between the two players leary loves to switch into the archers early so he's gone to gold with six on gold whereas hera he hasn't created as many spearmen He's creating a lot of scouts, and Hera could definitely find value with those scouts. But if Leary moves forward with enough spearmen with his scouts, also with some archers, it should be great. And okay, thank you, production, very much. Making sure that we're reminded. 80k uh, prize pool. 80k prize pool here. Thank you, everybody, for contributing, taking us over the limit. You definitely thought that was viewers I, for a second. No, didn't no, you? no, no. <laughs> I thought I actually was about to say. I saw 80, and I was going to be like, "Yo, production, farms are only 60 wood. What are you talking about?" <laughs> I thought it was a meme. So I'll act a little bit more excited. My apologies. Leary getting bloodlines now, so spending some of the gold on that. I, I don't love the Skirmisher edition. The fact that he made it Skirmish probably because he spent some gold on bloodlines and wanted to produce something. But, oh, man, Leary moving out. The Spearmen are on their own at this point in the game. Hera will take that every single day. And I think he only got, like, two pokes with those Spearmen. And Hera took the downhill fight against that. So not the greatest engagement there from Leary. He still has plenty of Spearmen behind. And it, look at Hera's approach. Instead of adding that archer range, Hera is going to go into a second stable first. He knows Leary is still playing wide open. And, like, he's getting near the the amount of scouts that he can just dive on Spearman. Oh, man, I, I like, raised my hands in the air. Like, what are you doing, Leary? Oh. But he had enough Spearman there. And now Hera, Hera needs some damage control. And the scouts are going to loop-de-loop -loop around here. Oh, Leary this is doing the right serious thing. damage control he needs. Because Leary can just, yep, he can just get right through and the house there and bye-bye one villager from Hera. Maybe a second one following here. He's got scouts behind. He manages to path that villager around and save his life. Leary only taking one. He's trying to run away with the weak scouts. Not going to find a way to get away from Hera's wood line. And I would take that trade all day if I'm Hera. Absolutely, because now you have army and you don't need to worry about the scouts hitting you. I think that was the worst thing for Leary. Killing the villager is good, but killing one villager to now have no way of pressuring Hera at all means that Hera is just going to be able to move forward constantly with those scouts. And you can see there's an overchop in the wood line that Leary's got to pay attention to. He's actually farming pretty far away from his town center as well. And against Magyars, he could be losing scouts. But it is Leary. He does have archers on the field, and so far he hasn't taken any loss. I think now that you've cleared those up and you know there's no scouts coming towards you with 13 on the field from Hera, you can almost just, yeah, just get Wheelbarrow and then go up to Castle Age. Yeah, agreed. Until you lose significant numbers of these scouts, you can always track the archers coming across. You know there's no scouts coming to the back of your base for if, from Leary, so you should be pretty safe to just build, build up resources. Leary, going to have to play a little bit more defensively here. Yeah, it's either that, Dave, or you just put your pedal to the metal here and just continue to produce more scouts. But I think Hera feels like he's got enough scouts to get value. And this is easy pickings for Hera as he's going to kill the villager there. Does lose a scout or two. But will be later to the Castle Age, at least the way it's looking right now. Best of nine final here at NAC4. It's been a crazy week, week and a half, I guess you could say. 
And we're getting closer to the conclusion here. Leary with the blacksmith. He doesn't still not have moving fletching. out. Yeah, he still doesn't not even moving have fletching. Out. He doesn't have any upgrades other than bloodlines. Yep. And we're comparing that to the forging that the Magyars got automatically. But his res, he's about to click up to Castle Age, so maybe he's done enough. I love the way that Hera's positioning his units. He's got half his scouts, like, in the middle tracking the army. And the other one's looping around behind, causing havoc for Leary. So Hera is doing a great job splitting up those units. He's making sure he doesn't need to make any more reinforcements until he's already clicked up to Castle Age, which he's done. Leary is up around the same time. Patience from Hera, right? And these Light Cav could be upgraded to Light Cav. And then he's also going to get more attack. Hera sees one Spearman, goes for the attack, doesn't get the kill. Checking the wood line, forcing reactions constantly. Not the start you want to a final if you're Leary. And I don't even know if Leary can ever move out, honestly. If he moves out, then I think he's just going to lose his army to scouts once they're upgraded. Mm -hmm. Chat's not going to let that one go, dude. What? These light, light cav, cav could light be cav. upgraded to light cav. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> chat. And neither am I. <laughs> Sorry, chat. I saw you look immediately to the chat, not even to me. But, Dave, this is just not a, a good situation for Leary to be in. He loses another villager there. Harrow with 12 scouts, still creating oh, more. No. He's in on the wood line. Oh, no. And Leary needs to run away. And this is the danger when you lose all your scouts. You have nothing at home to defend with mobility. Your spearmen are running so far to try and protect your economy. And Leary gets kicked off the wood. He's only got four on wood right now. Like, I know we can go into camels, which is something that Leary doesn't have access to. And he's forward with some archers, but it just doesn't seem like he has enough to push this back even once he reaches, reaches Castle Age. Yeah, exactly. I think maybe just... He just loves his archers too much, right? We haven't seen archers have much success here at all. We've seen most players go for scouts. He did start with scouts, of course. But Hera, just continuing where he left off with consistent army production, consistent control over games. Yo did not play bad in the semifinal. Yep. Yo played good, but Hera clapped him 5-0 for a reason. Oh, boy. And there's the light cap upgrade. These light cap will be light cap soon. And Hera sees that market, and that tells him a whole lot. That tells him Leary's eco bonus, bonus, or sorry, balance, bonus, whatever. His balance is completely out of whack, and uh, that market is not usual to see from Leary in early Castle Age. Leary has 850 gold in the bank. We look at Hera's economy, it's much more balanced. He's might ready to produce GG knights. Here. Yeah, might see the GG here, honestly. It's the first game, and you do have camels, but... Man, I mean, your counterattack army gets cleared. Hera now dropping Monastery number one and two. He's not going to rest. Uh, 32 villagers for Leary. No real opportunity for him to counterattack or even take wood easily. So he's going to drop that town center. I do like that town center. Mm -hmm. But Hera's opportunity is now. He should be able to win this game if that army just finds the right spots. One thing Leary is really good at, though, is kind of giving himself an opportunity once he's been hit early in situations like this. We've seen it a few times through the tournament where he loses like six or seven villagers in Dark Age. You think he's completely out. And then he survives somehow, and he's got army advantage and he's pushing back it's gonna be incredibly difficult to do that against Hera however who is running around with these light calves and the Knights using his mobility good walls there on the TC from Leary he's gonna keep that up the camels are already getting value but it's difficult when your opponent has so much more military and Leary taps out game one goes to Hera yeah and it was an easy game for Hera that if there was any pressure really eases the amount of pressure you're gonna have it was clean play from Hera it was scout play from Hera as we all expected and Leary thinking, man, I've now lost on this map twice. Granted, there's not going to be another series for him after this, so it's not like he can really go back to the drawing board. However, yep. I think felt like both games he played, the game on, on Graveyards yesterday, and now the one today, a little bit questionable for me. I have not had a single question about Harris' approach the entire tournament. If you're going to play archers there, I think you need some more walls. Yeah. If you're going to do that, I don't think you can play archers open like that when your opponent is Magyars with as many scouts, especially after you lose your initial scouts. At some point, you're going to have to get some walls up. And I, I think it's really tricky, right? Because if I say, okay, continue to make scouts, there's going to be someone who's like, well, 290, it's cheap scouts and Magyars have fortune. Yep. True, right? But you do have the cheaper bills of the Hindustanis, which you're, means you're going to save more food, right? So resources should be about even at that point. And you just want to extend the game to Castle Age without taking losses. Mm -hmm. So I would have liked to have seen continuous scout production there from Leary. Just match the scouts, catch up on the upgrades if you can from Hera. And then maybe that game turns into Camel against the Light Cav with a better economy for Leary. And if the game extends, then Hera's going to have to do some crazier things with the Magyars. But again, best of nine. 
And so you've just got to, you know, move on past that one. Leary gets to choose from one of his home maps or Hera's home maps if he chooses to. He's got Frigid Lake, Hippo Arena, Outcrop, and Golden Lakes. And I'm looking directly at that Frigid Lake at this point because I don't think you want to pick Arena against Hera. I think Outcrop could be good, but you might have some concerns uh, Civ-wise. I guess he does have Tatars I mean, on there. Leary's won the last few Arena games I've seen him play against Hera. Leary has actually become quite a comfortable Arena player. He doesn't it's, have Burgundians this time. <laughs> he doesn't have Burgundians, but like uh, to give you an example, the last best tournament I saw them in at the Grand Melee, he literally walled Hera in. Yeah, that was he cool, right? He literally walled so him cool. in. Yeah, yeah, and Hera had to get... Hera was Burgundians, and he had to get Onager to try and cut out so of cool. his own arena. So cool. So Hera has... or Sorry, Leary has really diversified, and I'd love to see that arena pick on his side of the draft, because even a year ago, we would have been stunned if we saw arena. He's grown into, like, a very versatile... It's... it's a beautiful butterfly of a player now instead of being I'm wrapped in his little butterfly. in his little <laughs> land map cocoon, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, man. I actually watched... We're not going to go too far on this tangent. I actually watched A Bug's Life last month for the first time in, like, a decade. What? Great movie. <laughs> Great movie. And are you kidding me? <laughs> Thank you, production. <laughs> that was not something I Bro, expected. Bro, he's ready. He's hydrating, right? I'm glad oh, they didn't oh, actually oh, oh, stack oh, oh, that okay. up there. That makes yeah, sense. Yeah, that debated me, dude. That would have been I very like, distracting. There was a part of me that was like, let's not distract the players right now, guys. Like, they've got a final to play, but okay. Well played. I legit this, thought there was more yep, water This bottles. stream has been brought to you by water. <laughs> and I had also Trademark. seen Nilly run back to the mm -hmm. back room, and I was like, that's totally something Nilly would do. Mm -hmm. Anyways, game number two. Hera going for a civilization. He told me and everyone, including in interviews, that he would ban throughout the rest of the tournament. He did not do so. He has the Cumans in the blue, and Leary has a very common pick for outcrop in the Tatars. Oh, the Tatars are very, very strong here, right? We have the extra cows, and I'm... I'm Really glad to see Leary leaving his base instead of pushing in deer, as we've seen some people do here early with Tatars. He's going out early. He's finding those cows because, of course, with Tatars, you will get an extra 50% food from all herdables. So sheep, pigs, cows, llamas, you will get that extra 50% food. It's really, really great for an opening on this. Thank you again for the donations flying in. We Next really appreciate it. And uh, is that what the request was? No, no, no. They said that Force Nothing got them into AWE 2. So I figured I'd say a next game Force Nothing there. A little there. bit of sellout from T9. He goes a long way. Meanwhile, on the other side, we have Cumans for the Hera. Or for Hera. Uh, like you said, Tristan, he thinks they're very strong. And I would agree with him. I mean, Cumans, not just because of the second TC that you can get up, but also the cheaper production buildings, the archer range and the stable. You can provide a lot of aggression. And when you're providing that aggression against your opponent, gives you time to get that second TC up safely behind it. And then you just slowly make your way to Feudal Age. It's a very dangerous suit. I would be very surprised if Hera goes for the immediate 2TC boom here. Mm -hmm. His feeling is not unique in that sometimes if you always die when someone goes two TCs against you with Cumans, and you die when you do it yourself. So I feel like what you do here, you use simply the civilization to add some level of mind game to this. Yep. Make Leary respect the fact that you can go two town centers like everyone else has been doing with the Civ, which is going to change Leary's strategy. And then you just go for a strategy that you're so good at in the first place and won the first game with. I'd say go scouts here if you're Hera. I actually really love Hera's base setup for this, too. You look at that where that secondary gold is. He can defend that so easily, man. He, he like this rocky terrain on the outside, on these like outcrop areas here, um, you can't build on it. So it's very, very difficult to get safe walls down where you're not being ranged by Mangano. But that back gold is a fantastic position. Obviously, all of the stone located on these areas at the sides. So players will need to stretch out for that sometime. What do you think uh, Leary's opening should be here with the Tatars? Is it just like an archer play, or are you opening scouts? I, I think it's Leary, and I think he's going to go archers. He did add the barracks early, so I think there's a world where it's man-at-arms, and you can see the militia now. And this is what's so cool about this, guys. Everything that I said would probably have played a greater role if this was two different players or earlier on in the tournament. I'm fairly certain that Leary's like, Hera's never going to go two TCs, yeah. so he's not even worried about it because typically you wouldn't go feudal age aggression against that. And from what I'm looking at here, Hera actually might. So I don't know where Hera will build it. Maybe he will build it near the gold, as you said, Dave. 
but no barracks for Hera tells us he's going to try it. Mm -hmm. And I, maybe you can get away with it consistently just on nine village starts, right? Like on three village starts, maybe your opponent is scouting your base earlier. Yeah, that's true. They, that's true. They can punish you earlier, but on nine village starts, it's like three minutes into the game, you're clicking up. Yep. And then by the time you get up to Feudal Age, you can just safely put that down because even if your opponent goes for a Drush like this, they're not going to be there in time. However, Leary is here with the scout, and he could be pretty annoying if he finds this t TC location. Hera's going to place it over there. Hera's got a setup where he can wall around his bills, so the Drush shouldn't do too much. And also, if he sees this Drush coming in with the house, he should be able to quick wall on the, on the Lumber Camp. Can we get some moves in the chat for all these cows underneath the town centers? Holy cow, and oh man, Hera needs some moves to get out of here. He deletes his Lumber Camp. He'll and lose a villager that to was, this, too. Tristan, that was before Double Bid Axe came in. He was oh. researching Double Bid Axe, and he had to delete the Lumber Camp, so we, we'll keep you apprised of whether Double Bid Axe actually happens here. Right now, Hera is being punished for this 2TC opening. Leary, just with two Militia and a Scout, getting in on the wood line, denying Double Bid Axe, forcing him to delete the Lumber Camp, and killing a Villager. It's only two Militia, Dave. It's not like he even has to upgrade for Man-at-Arms. And this is so funny. You mentioned the scouting. We're thinking Leary's going to have a tough time scouting what Hera's going to do. He finds out the best possible way, catching yep. Hera off guard. And Hera really was a bit greedy. He probably collected the cows over scouting his opponent. Mm -hmm. No lumber camp now means no wood upgrade. Unless you want to build a new one. I mean, I think, I think Hera was just being a little bit too cute there. Like, he could have. If he was playing safely, just palisade in the wood line. Agreed. And then no damage whatsoever. But instead, he tries to go for the diagonal yeah. gate, trap the scout into the TC. That's he had already, the wads He had already walled to the south of where the lumber camp was. So where he just built that house in palisade actually could have been closed off. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly we're saying this is an amazing position for Hera. But yeah. he does still have two town centers to produce vills, which still puts Leary under pressure. I think Leary right now is like, where is this guy taking wood? <laughs> He's like, what? I need. I'm making archers. I think he know it's from the it's from the it. second TC, right? So yeah, he yeah, can yeah. loop his archers around that way. But it's you'll be ranged by the TC, and now Hera has to put another lumber camp down. It hasn't been pretty for him, but he's able to consistently pump villagers out of those two TCs because of all the hurtables he collected early. Now Leary on the other side still has plenty of cows left. Like, let's get a view on how many cows he actually has under his TC here. That's a lot. Whoa. Like, he won't have to make farms for a long time with Tatars. No. Yeah, and I like this from Leary. It's not a crazy investment. He didn't rush the blacksmith down too fast. He didn't even make the third militia or get men at arms. So he saved a lot of resources here, which is important against the Cumans because they will get a build lead against you. There's double You're going to need Castlage to come in at the proper time. And yeah, there's Hera with bid axe. Credit to him for double checking that because, like, if True. I deleted my lumber camp, I would forget about it till Castlage. Hera is, has just attacked the cow. Hera has attacked the cow. The cow is so beefy, though. You need to get two hits to kill it. Yeah. Jeez, he didn't run away either. He's no coward. Yeah. That <laughs> I see what you did there, Dave. Dave, Dave is a list of... He didn't okay. move at all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, Dave, you're really, you're really milking it now, okay? Please, it's game number two. Let's not start this. Oh, man, Archer's behind the wood line as we see Hera seeding farms now. And again, this is just chip damage. This is going to build up towards something later in Castlade with 500 food in the bank for Leary. But I, I like it for Leary right now. Mm -hmm. I'm still terrified of the Cumans if I'm in his position. Yeah, and I think Leary needs to really prioritize that Castle Age timing. You can see him right now. It's like one archer at a time. Don't get uh, Fletching until you've clicked up. And he's banking up the food right now. He's got a lot of gold in the bank too. So he's ready to go up. He still has yet to make a farm. So this is a really tight build order from Leary. And as soon as he clicks up, he needs those two villagers coming across right away, and unless he feels like he could do damage with early Thumber and Crossbow, but I think you need that Forward Siege Workshop. You really have to capitalize on the space that Hera has given you at the front of his base. I really like the idea of a stable as well. And one or two knights with crossbows, it just feels so much stronger well, than just the crossbows. Time, and there he goes, yeah, he's clicked up. Now what Hera's gonna try and do, is he's gonna try and take some map control back, but it's gonna take Hera quite a bit of time, and I think naturally what Hera might do is he might add a range, because mm -hmm. he sees archers. Uh, but look at the Leary scouting for more cows oh, there. Oh, find him, find him. Oh, he see. Okay, he'll come back for that. He set waypoints probably. Eventually, yeah. yeah. So he will see that. And all the cows he's getting in, he's still taking cows. He's still not farming at all. And he's actually added the stable behind. So maybe, 
a few step lancers potentially added in from him. That's the spot, by the way, where the army just was for Leary. That's where you want that siege workshop. Place it right in Hera's face. The Hera still hasn't clicked up, but Hera has a 16 villager lead. Leary's not sending the villains, though, Tristan. Is he? He's not he sending should. anyone. He should. You have to against the humans. You can't just drop your own town centers. It well, has to be a forward. I mean, Leary's going to be in over here, and Hera, Hera is going for... Uh, Hera is going for the full house wall. That will take a while to complete, and he's going to have to wait to go out that way. Villager potentially coming forward now. I think that's a little bit too late for Lyrian. I'd love to see two, because I think you need those villagers forward to repair the, the Mangonels and to get that Siege Workshop up ASAP. Also for Hera, if you suspect this is coming, which you should, you should make the Siege Workshop while you're going up yep. to Castle Age. A lot of players forget that. I think Hera's going to be one of the ones that gets it. In fact, we're actually we've at a point now. We've seen it so many times. Yeah, we've seen players make that mistake so many times. I think that at this tournament, we shouldn't see them forget the Siege Workshop. Uh, it's a Hera. little bit late with that. Oh, oh she she's not go. late to anything, dude. Woo. She's not late to anything. She's letting us know that she's going to arrive perfectly on time, moonwalking into the front of Hera's base. It's not a bug, it's a feature, okay? We're very happy. Thank you, devs, for leaving that in the game. Villager, where are you going, though? Where are you going, lady? Is he going to make it within Hera's visions, my Do question? It. Do it. Why? What? What? Oh, he was distracted with the vill. Oh! He was distracted with the vill, and he but regrets it now. he doesn't even go in. Yeah, he tried something fancy, just like Hera tried with the gate earlier. And Leary, he's waiting for the wood. He's waiting for the wood. Tristan to drop that siege workshop potentially had to make oh he made the second TC I first I don't love I it. don't like that I think you need the siege workshop and then the Mangano and then the second TC and you need a lot of army right he's only got nine crossbows some of them are weak Hera's got 54 villagers he could get away with losing five or ten bills still be well in the, uh, the lead which is why I went up against the humans you need to commit to that aggression mm -hmm. Let's see, Hera is finding the crossbows with just feudal skirmishers. Militia are being pushed back as well, and just seven crossbows here for Leary left on the field. He would have loved to have those extra two over with his soon-to-be Mangano on this side as he goes for a camel. So he's got a camel, a knight, a spearman, two militia, and seven crossbows, plus soon-to-be Mangano joining in on this as Hera now stretches out. Hera looks very, very comfortable here just running out for another TC. I've said this before uh, about some other players where civilizations they hate, they play very good with. Yeah, Nikov. And, and I don't, yeah, yeah, like Nikov's a good example of it. Shout out to you, Nikov. Love you, buddy. But, like, I think Hera, he knows why the humans are amazing, which is why he abandoned them so frequently. And we're seeing it here. And I'm just going to assume that, like, Leary maybe doesn't realize mm -hmm. how you can't just shift into the three TCs and have a lot of success, or he's going to surprise us both. Because currently, Hera in a position to move out. He's got a lead skirmisher. There will be some siege on the front. Hera, I actually, now that I think about it, he's got a lot to deal with here. If Leary can snowball it now, I'm starting to feel a little bit I better mean, about his position. Leary obviously didn't hit the momentum timing that we were thinking of, right? The transition timing to Castle H. He went for that second TC first. It was a deliberate thing from him. He sent the villager late. Hera also has stretched out to that stone rather than going for a Siege Workshop defense, which True. I think yep. most players would do. So Hera is playing a little bit greedy here. It's something he does better, I think, than anyone else getting maximum value in defense with low numbers of units, but sometimes he gets punished for it, especially against a player like Leary, and it looks like Leary is starting now to snowball this push as Hera is trying to defend against the Mangano with just two skirmishers and a TC. Yeah, I mean, and he he went out with four skirms. Clearly, Hera wasn't expecting oh the stable boy. possibility. Oh boy. If, if Leary goes if there, this that. game could be over. Yep. Even though Hera's got a 20 villager lead, Hera microing. Now he's adding the siege. And he's confidently attacking the, yep. the Mangonels. It's a dangerous game to play, though, Bro, Hera. If you're, if I'm Leary, like, uh -oh. I'm trying to get a rhythm of when Hera pops out of that TC so I can attack ground. But look at this. Leary has found villagers at the back here. He needs to kill a whole lot to even it up. 66 villagers for Hera, 48 for Leary, and he's going to find three more here. This is a good start for Leary. He needs to do damage. And Hera's economy is looking kind of disturbed at the back here, and the TC is still being repaired at the front. That militia, it needs to move. That guy, you've still got work left to do. I know you were created in the Dark Age, but you could still do something with your life. Go to the north! 
Dave. He's this not is your doing turn it. now. He's yeah, not yeah. doing it. He's not doing it. There's an outpost coming up here from Leary. And finally, a Mangonel in defense here from Hera. Let's see how fast Leary sees this Mangonel. Hera is creeping around the other side of that TC. Leary doesn't see it quick enough. And Hera takes out one Mangonel already. It looks like he's going to take out a second here soon. No. Villager survives. She's forced to retreat. And Leary is stuck now not able to range that TC. So losing a little bit of momentum, we still haven't discovered the stone miners in the north. You know, Hera's just like, where are those crossbows? I don't see them. I'm scared. Please mm -hmm. let me see the crossbows. <laughs> oh, oh, big shot! Big shot. And now the crossbows could move in a little bit more comfortably, which means Leary still probably won't find the stone miners. There are the crossbowmen. So Hera's going to assume that he can get his castle up in that outer area. A big shot from Hera. Hera still microing, but still with the worst army composition here with Leary all over the front of his base. Ay, ay, ay. The Jeez. micro here is insane from both players, though. Can we, like, can we go to their point of view just so we can see Leary selecting, like, three different groups at a time? This is Leary is playing as the orange player here, and it looks like he clears up another Mangonel from Hera. He loses one of his own, but he's got to manage economy behind that uh, fight right there. So it's impressive stuff from Leary. And now he's stretching out to the north side. He still hasn't found the stone miners from Hera. Yeah, it's, it's really interting that they're both town centering in the north because we've seen games where one person goes to the north, one person goes to the south if this goes late. This means to me that this game could actually be a little bit shorter and early imp could matter a bit more. Notably, with both players going ranged units where the Tatars can't get Arbalest to upgrade the crossbowmen and the Cumans don't even get Bracer. Mm -hmm. So the transitional game is going to have to be stable units eventually, I'm thinking, or units out of those castles. I think I'd love to see Hera get something more on the field. He's got Skirms and Mangonels. He's, he needs another unit, Dave. There is a unit that he could make out of his castle I know you're in love with, though. Yeah, the Kipchaks, they can find value. They can find value in the later stages of the game. I think in the mid-game, they're going to struggle as that militia is walking back and forth up there. He's patrolling. He's waiting for Hera to leave. And he gets, oh. keeps getting just closer <laughs> and closer to that little economy setup that Hera's got in the north. When we get an opportunity, I'd be really curious if that's the militia oh, that got the kill. Because that, guy, that guy's got zero kills. He's useless. Yeah. The guy who got the kill died. I think the scout. Listen, all right, Tristan. Listen, he's still patrolling up there, all right? Let him cook. Just let him cook. I'll let him cook. Eventually, he's going to get some value. Hera managing to kill the knight, and now Leary is coming in. He's got some confidence. Attacking the TC with three Mangonels. He's going to be able to take out this Mangonel from Hera. And suddenly, it's wide open behind this TC, unless Hera keeps his military production up. But right now, he's only got nine on food. Still five skirmishers, just one Mangonel. He really needs this one to get value. But the Skirms oh. are in, in harm's way, and they're going to die. And Hera has to drop a castle that's behind his original town center. Not the game plan coming into this one with the Cumans. You have to get secured, uh, security uh -oh. excuse me, in other areas. Yeah, Leary, Leary just it lands an attack ground. He saw all those weak vills and that Skirmisher. He's going to get some value here. 88 villagers for Hera, 73 for Leary. So Leary is slowly catching up here ever since... The Castle Age timing. Hera, as Vodka points out, has 4K more resources collected, but a lot of that has been put into farms, it's been put into villagers. Leary's resources are being put directly into his military and his push. I think if Hera gets bloodlines, which is so important, there you Militia. go, Mr. Militia. Dude, um, we just had to let him, we just had to let him, let him find it himself. I, I think if Hera gets bloodlines for the Kipchaks, he's currently got gold, he's currently got plenty of wood, plenty of food. Kipchaks are actually going to be sick here. We only have seven crossbows on the field for Leary. Again, you can't upgrade the Arbalest as the Tatars. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, those Kipjaks need to micro like Harris never micro before. <laughs> Hera, you might need another siege workshop, dude. <laughs> dude, Leary, Leary is bringing a force <laughs> over to that TC. That militia called, dude, he blew the horn of war like he's coming. <laughs> Five Mangonels advancing on this, and those cows are toast. Uh, Leary is just waiting for these villagers to oh, abandon but, the position. Oh, but don't stack them like that. No, stacking, that is a no-no. There's four Mangonels on the right. He's, I think he's got he's got an outpost there, so he should have full vision on this Mangonel wandering around. Yeah, right? maybe. Let's, ooh, he doesn't, but he knows it's back there somewhere. Camels and knights need to be careful of their own friendly He'll fire, get it. and He'll get he it. dives on it before he loses a Mangonel, immediately splits oh. away with four of those. It's so beautiful from Leary. Yeah. And Leary has somehow punished this so nicely. It really felt like the timing wasn't there. But he has good economy behind this, Dave. There are the Kipchaks. Kipchaks. Villagers on the move. Let's see how these Kipchaks do. 40 HP units right now. 
without bloodlines. Yeah, and the range is limited too yep. on them. They the one good thing about the Kipchaks, which makes them feel better, I think, than they actually are, as Leary lands some amazing attack rounds on the villagers coming out to attack those and kills villagers over here. Leary is almost ahead in villager count now. Is the fact that the Kipchaks don't have the uh, fire delay, right? Yep. So they feel really good. You can attack, you can run away, you can attack, you can run away again, but all it needs is one Maganel shot and those things are toast. Yeah, and there's five of them, right? The timing wasn't really there. When Kipchaks excel, you normally have them much earlier. I like this from Hera, though. Trying to put some attention from Leary at his own base. Mm -hmm. uh, and funnily enough, Hera now isn't paying attention to his own base, but the, the right idea is there. He's going to clear that knight up, and we see... 10k? No, it's 20k on the channel. Double 10k. They didn't have the graphic ready, apparently, but we can all do math here. Big moment, though. In the south, Leary spotted that town center with something. I'm not sure what it was. I think something died. Yeah, he must have been trying to place an outpost. He does know there's a TC there. Uh-oh. A hundred vills for both. Goodbye. He's got, dude, he's got the flying V, all right? He's watched the Mighty Ducks. He's got the flying V for the Mangonels, and he couldn't quite get that attack round in time. He's actually going to kill his own knight instead. Okay. So Leary not noticing those Kipchaks moving in just on time. But there is a castle in the north now. Yeah, so again, I'm thinking late stage army comp. Hera now doesn't have easy gold access. Um, he, he's going to try and secure the gold with the town centers. Has to use the Kipchak micro. Herp. Goodbye, Kipchaks. <laughs> but, I mean, I, I'm just not seeing it, Dave. Unless Hera goes for a bunch of light cap with 48 on food, I'm not sure he can really do anything. I think the worry for him is he might actually lose this TC before he has the army. And if that's the case, I think Leary's going to have the time to contribute more. Because Leary's economy is looking better and better now. Army count's really the only thing he has to How's fix. How's he going to stop the Knights? How is he going to stop the Knights? Harris, 42 on food. He yep, just yep, needs yep, to get yep, his gold yep. set up behind this. And if he clears all the mangonels over here, he can start taking that gold and produce more Knights. Harris just doing Hera things here, adding Ten farms. Knights. And now military. And he's going to clear all of this up. Wow, I, you know, I didn't see he had 10 knights. I thought he just had two or three there. Saw the camels coming forward from Leary and the upgrades. And that's a bit of a wake-up call there for Leary. And Hera, 40 on food. Mm -hmm. He's got defensive castles as well. Like, this game's going to go to imp tape. Yeah, and Leary now forced to add in more camels here as the Tatars, as the knights are pushing him back. Hera finally has gold access once again. He's selling a lot of his wood for gold. The resources from Hera, he's about to click imp here, Tristan. This is getting pretty interesting. Leary has killed 30 villagers, and he evened up the villager count. But now Hera has killed a lot of military, and he's starting to even out the uh, map control part of this map as he takes control of the bottom area, and Leary still has control of the north. Most of the time, we're seeing castles in the north or the south to protect or deny resources. I think the defensive castle that Leary's just placed is okay. It's very nice, yeah. I, I would prefer it between the TCs because I think he's going to get raided like crazy. But defensive castles are going to be needed here. Great work from him to understand the direction this game is going. The I only thing I don't think he expects is the fact that Harris up to imp right now. Yeah, I think there's so much stone on this map too. You just have to you have to place castles in order of importance. And he feels like Harris is not going to go to the north first. He's going to come around to the south. Yeah. We already took a good engagement and try and get in on that farming echo. So I don't mind that castle. He should have a second one soon, or a yeah. third one rather. Interesting. I mean, there's still so much space for Hera. He still has gold. I also wonder. Love the outpost from Leary. I have to say. I agree. Yeah, Hera's got vision, or Leary's got vision everywhere. Rather, I wonder if there's a world where you just stop producing knights right now, click Cavalier, and hope to go for fast paladin. It seems a little ridiculous. You probably should just go Cavalier and Halb, but I, I, I feel like this game's going to go on so long that maybe researching paladin early could surprise Leary. All right, we've got knights raiding in the back there from Leary. Leary coming down here with camels, and he's going to be able to clear these knights. Still no plus two armor on those. Still no plus no plus two attack on those knights. So Hera has to be careful, and he cut production for a while to be able to afford going up to Imp, get some of his upgrades. Now he's producing again. The question is, is he going to go for that fast paladin approach? If you're going fast paladin, what you need to do, stall out your production, hope you don't die, get paladin, and then suddenly go forward with a wave of like 40 or 50 of them. Um, it's a momentum-based attack. I've been asking myself this for a couple minutes here, and I, I have to apologize to the viewers. I have a feeling Tatars don't get heavy camel, but I'm not 100%. 
It'd be a bit of a weird thing, though, right? Like, they have the flaming camels. I think humans make out are the castle. only ones that don't get heavy camel. I feel like they should get heavy camel, which means we should see they that do. upgrade in. And so we'll see if that's what we, we see the full commit from, from Leary, because Leary has actually stopped making camels. And he's actually going for the Cav Archers to Tars Do. Someone's called me a noob. Everything's as, as I remember it. It's fine, we're casters. If a pro was up here saying this, everyone would be like, well, he Dude. doesn't need to know Yo, it. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the things that Yo and Nikov didn't know this week were surprising me. Let's just say <laughs> we that. didn't even mention Jordan. Let's, yeah, yeah. Let's, <laughs> let's throw the players under the bus with me right now. In the grand finals here. Ay, ay, ay. But I mean, this is really shaping up for late game. Such an important win for Leary. Both players obviously need the game, but you don't want to go down 2-0 against Hera, who doesn't let many raids slip. Leary. Really good raids. He keeps coming back to this part over here, and Hera has to keep sending units yep. back, and I think it's going to be that fast Paladin approach. Like, he's got one knight in the queue, right? I love this. Cavalier this is, is so almost good. in, and he is going for the Paladin upgrade soon-ish. Maybe sell some food. He's got 2,000 food in the bank. Well, I think the point is, though, he can he can wait a little bit, right? Because he's not being pressured just yet. He is being raided. So obviously, OK, it is pressure. But he still has gold. He still has all the food protected. So I love this decision from Hera. Now I think we're going to see Paladin, potentially Hussar later for Hera, and Halb combined, whereas we see Hussar and Cav Archers for Leary. The one problem for Leary is the fact that it's really hard for him to raid. With, with like uh, the way this is going to shape up because he's going to need a big ball of units to respond to the Paladin. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, he's done his best so far. He sees the Pikeman. I just think Paladin's going to come as a big surprise. I think when he sees these Cavalier here, he has to suspect it's on the way because Halb Tech has still not come in. And if he's checking the upgrades here, he'll see that the infantry didn't That's really good. have any upgrades. Yep. And now he's going to run away with these Cav Archers. And he's going to have to have a meat shield in front of these because the Cav Archers against Cavalier feel so much better than they do against Paladin. Paladin have a lot of pierce armor, and they're going to yep. rip through those Cav Archers. Yeah, it's all about castle positionings and if you can have farms long term. Hera's not going to worry about the villagers he lost here because of the safety net he's brought himself. And he's starting to push out here, which means it could be a north versus south situation in terms of the gold control. Look this at the is castle crazy. set up for Leary. One, two, three, four. He's close to being able to add another one. If you can just get that line of castles, even if the Paladins or Hussar go for the raid, yep. they're going to get so much damage just running through, and you can force choke points with your Cav Archers. And Leary's got 50% of the map controlled. Like, Hera's not even contesting that north side yep. at all yet. So Leary has done a fantastic job here. We see him at 193 population, almost fully pop-capped. Hera at 180, and Paladin Research is coming in right now. Leary is going to see that. He's going to have an incredibly tough army to fight against here versus Hera as Hera just fights uphill against Tatars. No chemistry, no heavy cav archer there, so it makes sense the Paladins are going to push the CA back, but those hills will be very important against the Tatars because they do more damage, even more damage than most civilizations while fighting on top of the hill. Is Hera going to hit his timings here with the Paladins? He's only got 29, Tristan. I, I, and the techs are ju have just come in for Leary, like chemistry, heavy cav archer. We see all these hills he can sit on. He's got 28 of these, and he's got the castle I, stack behind it. I love the, the the castles that we're seeing from Leary. Look Beautiful. at where they are. Yep. He's not trying to overextend into the south right now because he knows that uh, could be an issue. He's placing castles within range of castles, mm -hmm. knowing the Paladins could be an issue. And it, at some point, he could even tech into Keshiks if he wants flaming, to. No, if, flaming camels. Flame, oh. Flaming camels. No, it's it so was good. So, bro, it was so underwhelming. Well, no, Tata was dead. No, no, no. Tata, Tata. was dead in that game. Flaming Camels would be so good here, Dave. I'm okay. telling you, okay. Leary. I'm I'm here for it. Do it, or I'll be very upset. I am here for it. He's trying to find value here with the Cav Archers. You can see how little damage those are doing, but he can micro back with them, and those Paladin are incredibly expensive. Hussars distracting them in front. So Leary just trying to keep his mass oh! alive. That was a decent engagement there for Hera. He only killed one, though. Yeah. He only killed one Cav Archer, really. Mm -hmm. He did take a lot of HP off. He was Archer. attacking uphill, too, so it was it was tough for him. Uh, final armor, or second armor upgrade only coming in for those Cav Archers as Hera now has 44 Paladin on the field, and that is not 
the Flaming Camel upgrade, so oh, I don't know not? why you're clapping no, right now, I but Tristan is super oh. hyped as Silk Armor is coming getting, in. Oh. He's just, he's a big Silk Armor guy, oh. trust me. Okay, well, I mean, I thought he had Silk Armor fans, I'm so sorry. Literally clapping but, like a seal beside <laughs> me. <laughs> uh, I mean, it, honestly, maxing out your Hussars and your Cav Archers first is key here. Uh, much to my disappointment, I love the decision from Leary. Still hoping we see Timurid Siegecraft come in Murder at holes. some point. I actually Murder love holes. that too. It's a cheap tech and he's got so many castles. Why not? Yeah, just like Hera getting ballistics, which will help his castles. But my goodness, I, I love this from Leary now. He's going to split up some of his Hussars to raid. There's a risk where sometimes you try and use your Hussars as a meat shield too much. And it's not really what you want to do when up against Paladin. But Hera building up for that big ball, Dave. He's got 50 Paladins. He's got Trebs on the way, so he will push at some point. And I don't know where the Trebs are right now, but if I had to guess, Hera's going to try and push the north because that's where Leary's taking gold. This is kind of reminding me again of that um, Jordan versus Leary game on Outcrop where Leary had all those Chakram throwers, and he had them in a gr big group, yep. and Jordan was winning against the Meat Shield in front. Jordan was pushing everywhere with the Imperial Camels, very similar to the Paladin, but Leary kept that group alive. And he just kept getting value until eventually Jordan ran out of steam. And if Hera isn't careful, we could have a similar situation here. Obviously, Chakrams are a bit of a different unit than Cav Archers as Leary is trying to save these now with There's the mobility. There's 50 Paladins. You need, you need the Sands demos. You need something Ooh, that, can, that, that has a bonus against Cavalry to explode in the middle of these groups. It would genuinely be huge if Leary could get there, but Hera has 30 Paladins in queue. A lot of these Paladin kind of weak, though. Flaming Camel here would feel amazing as the Cav Archers continue to fall back. And I, I honestly don't think Hera's going to be able to do enough with this Paladin push right here. Maybe it's just to support that castle and those Trebs moving forward. He actually might unpack the Trebs on the <laughs> castle foundation. Can he place it anywhere else? No, I don't think he can. Uh... <laughs> now he has to pack up and go again. That's so frustrating if you're in Hera's position. And now he's trapped all of his Paladin in there. He can't escape with his Paladin if he starts building that castle, Tristan. Those things are dead. Yeah, not the time to use your Paladins, but there is still a beautiful thing for Hera, and that's the fact he's got 40 of them in queue. And when you're 200 pop and you have 54 on gold, you freaking spam Paladin. When your opponent doesn't have Halb research, Heavy Camel research, and you haven't seen a single Camel flaming, you push. And 190 population for Hera, 145 for Leary right Heavy now. Camel is coming in from Leary, but that is one of the slowest techs in the game. And if you ask Leary, he probably wishes that was in two minutes ago. Absolutely. Before that fight, it would have been massive. Paladin still in the north there, getting tons of kills. I think we saw 13 on that unit. Heavy Camel is in now, and Hera's got to be careful that his population doesn't drop too low here. Now that we're speaking about it, though, he's got 140 only population for Leary, and Hera has 62 of his villagers on gold right now. 26 Cav Archers, 11 Camels. Uh, one Paladin had more success raiding in the very north there than some of Hera, uh, Leary's Hussars, excuse me, were able to do. This is amazing from Hera. We thought he was dead earlier. But we knew the humans can be incredibly strong, Dave. And Hera realizes eventually he runs out of this gold. It's got to be now. He protects his trebuchets. What a great position for Hera. I think Lyria just needed Heavy Camel way earlier. Way earlier. He was I, producing Hussars for a very long time. If he had the Heavy Camel, just even five or six of them in front of yep, these Cav yep, Archers yep. could have made a big difference. He is coming out now trying to snipe those Trebs. Loses the first defensive castle on the right side. Murder Holes helping out there in the north against those Paladin. But the Paladin wave keeps coming here from Hera. 51 on food, 53 on gold. What an eco balance from him. He's taking all the gold in the south. It's going to be gone soon, but he's hoping to kill off Leary before that happens. Wow, this is so good from Hera. He's also sending the proper numbers, right? Just two or three Paladins instead of 10 to 15 Paladins, because if you send too much away from the main battle, you could lose this position. The castle spot has been huge here to fortify. The Halb upgrades now there in front. I feel like... It, it, the problem for Leary now is he's lost a lot of map control and he has to hit and run. And yep. you don't want to be running the wrong way. I think it could be a decent fight, but as we say, Huns are Huns and Mayans are Mayans. Paladin is Paladin. It still is insane, even against a counter unit like Camel. Yeah, if Leary had those two castles that Hera just took out, it would have been a great part of his defense, but they're no longer there. And credit to Hera for coming forward with that castle placement and building up those trebuchets before he made that push. Yep. That was an insane... Um, grasp of momentum there, kind of, from Hera, as Harry, Her as Leary is unable 
to defend against that. Yeah, seriously, I'm, I'm wondering now if Hera's going to be able to fully clear up what's in the north for Leary. Uh, he should be able to shift some siege over there. He certainly had paladins find enough value. Hera still has all the gold in the south, so there's no shortage of gold for him. You don't see Paladin in 1v1s that frequently due to the shortage of gold. Not on this map. Do you see that? 153 Paladins, the most created unit for Hera. Wow. It was 111 Hussars, the most created unit for Leary. Hera wins with the Civ. He said he hates the Cumans. He's up 2-0 in the finals. I like how he didn't really try and, uh, like, he didn't try and do a two-pronged attack. He didn't try and send that many units to raid. It yep. was just, like, one or two. He had all of his Paladin in the same spot. He realized he was going to have to use them to basically buy time to put that castle down and get those trebs forward. And once he did that, Leary was in a position where he couldn't really push out. He didn't have a heavy camel in time. He didn't have the numbers of heavy camel in time in front of that. You've got three units that will do some bonus damage against Cav. You have the heavy camel, which we saw after he had lost ground. Mm -hmm. You have the halb, which is somewhat questionable with the Tatars because they don't get the final two armor upgrades. Still an option, though, and we've seen it in the past. And then you have the Flaming Camel, which I talked enough about at this point. Did feel like maybe there was potential there for some big booms in those groups. But, of course, Harewood maybe adapted to it. I think, like, how wouldn't have even been that bad there, even with Tatars. You're getting yeah. a ton of bonus damage. You just, you know they're going to die anyway. I it's mean, tough I, I'm going to say that Hera it. adds in Kipchak behind, yeah, yep, right? Yep. Yeah. It, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a long game regardless there. Yeah. But if you're blowing up groups of Paladin after, like, the fourth wave then maybe Hera is out of gold. The problem was Hera took out multiple castles, and, and man, did he play good here. So Leary's going to have an uphill battle here. It's 2-0 so far in this final. Game two a lot longer than game number one. Leary, of course, his choice now between Golden Lakes, Hippo Arena, and Frigid Lake. The good news for Leary is that the civilizations he's lost with either didn't have the best of win rates, so maybe he didn't, didn't expect as much, or that was later on in his draft. The bad news is that Hera's picks were in the equivalent spots. So, like, Cumin's Magyars were weighed at, similarly in his mind in terms of strength, mm -hmm. meaning that both players are going to have strong sieves available. Thank you, Innocent Man, for the $46, if that is your real name. Ay, ay, ay. Well, uh, I agree with the message, though. Thanks to Nilly, Nilly, and Nilly. There's been other people to thank, of course. I will leave that to Nilly at the conclusion of the event today. But... Uh, Thank you, Nilly. This has been a good time. Great final so far. 2-0 for Hera. Who did, who did Hera play last in the group stage? Last in the group stage? Yeah. I think he... Was that a series against Leary? No. No, that was that was second to last, wasn't it? Yeah. I don't know. Where, where are you going because with this? Because I'm thinking Hera has just won seven games in a row. Oh. For And I wanted to know... If he had won... He played against Tato, and he lost... I think he lost a he game lost against Tato. He lost one game. Yeah, okay. so production can maybe figure out how many games in a row Hera has won here. But that he's is, that is pretty crazy. Yeah, yeah, he's on a roll. He is on a roll. It's wild. And this is like one of the most high-level tournaments we've ever had in terms of the general condition of the players coming in. So the fact that Hera is just this far above the competition is crazy to me. Yeah. And, like, Leary hasn't played bad. It's not like Hera has punished Leary's mistakes, per se. Mm -hmm. But he's making Leary look as if he's making big mistakes by not doing certain things because he's always so consistent. Nine games in a row. Nine games in a row you've won in a tournament setting. Leary's going to have to win it's a lot in the row to be able to win this final. Row. Uh, it is a best of nine. Hera's on the cusp of winning two best of nines like just <laughs> in a row. That's uh, sweeping. That's um, just wild. To the, to the viewer that's watching that uh, showed up just now, because you've been trying to get a new ELO record and you unfortunately went the other direction and lost four or five games in and a row. And now you're, you're just trying to forget about it. I, exactly, yes. Uh, sorry for bringing it up. Uh, but I, too, cannot do what Hera's doing. So it's okay. We're in the same boat. Mm -hmm. Your placement matches, though, those are fire. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> well, a bit of time before we've launched into this next game. So maybe Leary really thinking about things. You might want to think about things a little bit more now because... I mean, you, you know kind of where you want to play civilizations, but you really want to make sure that you don't use a civilization somewhere and leave yourself without a good civilization on these future maps. Specifically, Portuguese, Lithuanians, Byzantines. It feels like you can kind of play them anywhere. So you got to make sure that they're placed properly as your top three picks. 81K. $81,231 now in our prize pool. We started at the beginning of this week with $50,000 in the prize pool. Sponsored by Microsoft, of course. 
and uh, this is amazing. The fact we've gotten here and the fact we have these two players here, game number three, and it is on Kawasan. Leary has the Portuguese here, Tristan, and they can be so brutal. If you get a good start with the Portuguese and you get control of that middle area, there's like no coming back for the other player. Yeah, what's really interesting is I think both of these players are going to see Portuguese as a superior sieve in the long term. But Japanese are a civilization that's all about early bonuses. Mm -hmm. And if you think about how Hera's played, I think game two might be the exception because he did kind of give up some map control. But typically, Hera has had consistent control over every game. And he doesn't make mistakes, which means he's maybe able to win against the Portuguese if he's got the lead from the get-go here. So he's going to go for the dock a bit earlier since the Japanese saved one on the lumber camps. And they're going to go to the same side here to dock, which could be extremely awkward for both of them. Yeah, Hera just misses that hit on Leary's scout. Could have got one there downhill. downhill. He gets one right now. I don't think that was a downhill hit, though. I think they were both on the uh, the high ground there. And uh, Leary is one HP ahead, so one of those was. Yeah, uh, interesting. Oh. Hera, uh, Leary goes to deny the dock, and Hera didn't pre-wall it. And That's he gets huge. the bill. Leary gets the bill. What is this? Is this, like, a planned strategy from Leary, or is it just improvisation? What is the percentage on that dock from Hera? 69. Because that oh, is... Oh, it is 69! Nice. We can round up to 69 on that dock, because that is absolutely devastating there yeah, for Hera. Leary needs to wall this in. Oh. No, he's got Loom. He's fine. Okay, he's got Loom. He's got Loom. Okay. Uh, honestly, we, we just talk about, you know, Hera might be 9-0 right now. Perfection from Hera. Oh, so good from Hera. 69-0. Dude, that, that sloppy stuff right there. You mm -hmm. saw the direction that was coming. You saw the villager. And in that situation, I think you have to put a little bit more HP on the wall. One of the rare instances where these pro players who don't like to fully build the Palisades because they want to get their villager back to their dock a little bit faster should have maybe fully built that. That's what Leary needed here. It's just a rough start. Like, Japanese can't have a rough start here against Portuguese. Agreed. You can't let them get to Castle Age first and start harvesting those berries in the middle. We saw when Hera did that. He had, like, 64 on food, right? That, that game against Mr. Yo. And his wood count was, like, ticking up. It was like having an additional 15 villagers on wood. It was, it was wild. So Hera's going to dock the other side now. The, the reason this is so big of a deal is because he doesn't have fishing ships yet. Mm -hmm. And there's already going to be two fishing ships for Leary before he has one. I would love to now see the point of view from Hera on that dock foundation because he actually hasn't deleted it. And he doesn't know it's been walled in. So typically on this map, you want to contest the water. I believe Hera might be hoping that that doesn't get walled in and he can send a vill to just finish it and make fire galleys. Yeah. If he runs out there expecting that he can actually build that dock, he's going to be mistaken. Look at the difference in the res collected already here. It's it's like 60 more for Leary, but that 60 in Dark Age really starts to add up, and he has three fishing ships. So over the next few minutes, you're really going to see that start to climb here for Leary as Hera still hasn't produced his first. There we go. It's finally onto the water, and Hera is on the way to the Feudal Age, but he's a villager uh, behind Leary on the way up. So all of the advantages right now in Leary's favor as he's scouting that other pond, looking for the villager, and he's going to go all the way around to the backside. Credit to Herod for trying to be sneaky there. Yeah, agreed. Um, but I think Leary has enough experience in this map where he's never going to turn around. Now that I've said that, he might. I also, <laughs> also, but honestly, that's, he does. Herod didn't see a shore fish, so yeah. I think half of it was he's looking for a shore fish. But he does turn around. Oh, no. I, I knew it was going to happen, bro. Yeah, way to go, Dave. <laughs> I'm sorry, Leary. But, you know, the important thing here is this eliminates one of the go-to strategies with the Japanese. He didn't have the food income fast enough, so you can't go for man at arms. So Hera's going to play into Archers. Hera now scouts to see that that dock is walled up. Leary's going to be faster than Hera into Archers, though. So that's, yeah. it's just tricky, right? It's just tricky all around. You see how Hera deleted the dock foundation, though? That's so cool. Yeah. So he, it's good that he scouted it because it could have been disastrous if he assumed that he could build that. And it's a little bit of extra wood, so that's going to feel nice. Yep. Uh, putting that back in your pocket as Hera is almost Whoop! in the feudal age, and he traps the scout in. See you later. Hera with a gate, a wall, and a house, and that scout is dead. That's the stuff we love to see from the Canadian. Yeah, it was really good play there. Again, because I hold Leary in such high regard, I will say, he had a little back and forth there. He saw the villagers moving around, maybe could have noticed it. He's placing the archery range, though, and he's headed over to the right for another dock, maybe? He already has one there. Oh, no, I'm so no, no, no. stupid. This is Leary. He's not, yes, this is Leary, this Dave. Is Thank Leary. you. And I think he this realizes, right I think he realizes you, you should 
after you've lost lost your scout and the score is like getting closer now you yep, should yep, probably yep. realize that uh Hera has a dock and he's coming over here already with a villager he's also got a spearman so he's going to explore the edges back there as Hera goes out to gold Hera's got a fire galley coming out and Leary is just doing his due diligence over here on the left side scouting that pawn Leary also going for some big walls behind I love the game sense here from Hera to recognize that it is likely going to be a dock from his opponent. Mm -hmm. Both players looked with their fishing ships and they didn't really see anything, but Hera recognized that's the way this game is going to flow. Uh, he will have archers and skirms. Uh, he's actually just opening skirms, excuse me, because he probably expects that Leary's going to have archers. Leary does have archers playing very safe there with the walls. So far, pretty close game. Leary's had the lead, though. Mm -hmm. When Hera played Mr. Yo, he went out to the berries pretty early. I thought maybe too early with the Portuguese, but he actually judged it perfectly uh, with how much wood income they're going to bring in. And Leary is going to be pretty annoyed here as the fire galley actually forces <laughs> this villager away into the waiting arms of that scout, but he wisely walls it in in time. He's got the archer forward. He's got a spearman forward. He's trying to take care of this skirmisher, but Hera looks like he's going to be able to defend by now. And Leary does go out to those berries before he places maybe a second dock on that pawn to the right or maybe a blacksmith. This archer dies because Leary lost his scout. That's the beautiful way this game works. Uh, I think Leary would have been too wise to move out there otherwise. Leary's going to get a sick castle each time here, dude. Yeah, can, that's like, He's got 15 so nice. on food right now. His fish is not being harassed. So he could even justify adding in maybe another fishing yep. ship. He's got five fishing ships, and one of those is working way on the box turtles on the left, so he can see any docks from Hera coming in. Yep, Harrow does have the scout to be able to see what Leary's up to. Doesn't really have an army that can really punish right now, and I think Harrow's going to be feeling that pressure. And it's never good to be uh, defending your own fish in this situation. He will likely keep his fish alive, but Leary's okay with that because Leary's just all about getting to the next stage here. Demo coming out from Leary. I wonder what the percentage is on that thing. It's at 60% almost. Hera's got to be careful. Of course, his fishing ships have a lot of HP, and he's going for a demo of his own. Remember, yep. it's two docks versus one over here for Hera, but Leary's resources are looking pretty good. He is adding in scouts, though. I'm not sure I love that. Addition, you're fully, you're like almost fully walled here. Yeah. Just get to the castle age. You can add scouts on the way up. It is very unleary like to do that in this situation. We'll see if it pays off, though. Hera, I think, feeling the pressure will likely sell off that stone, not plan for a future town center, and just buy some food with it. Uh, Hera being patient with the demo. Very good play from Hera. Demo now from Leary. Good play from Hera again. And that is not the best demo I've ever seen. <laughs> there you yeah, go. Yeah, take what you can get at the end of the day, right? <laughs> Leary couldn't find value. Hera couldn't find value. So they both just end up going one for one against the fire galleys. As the scouts now come out from Leary, Hera's already killed the starting scout, so he knows this is a stable from Leary. But the resources from Hera looking pretty decent. Leary's still a ways away from clicking up. Maybe a few seconds here if he doesn't have a market. Hera does have the market, and it looks like Hera's going to be up to Castle H first. In my opinion, Leary made a big mistake there going scouts. You can't delay your Castle Age. Yeah, you could make an argument. I, I think on the bright side here, he's not going to be that far behind and scout vision is going to be very helpful. But there. you can add those uh, on the way up, though. Yeah, you could. You're right, right? And then maybe he's concerned he can't move out with his archers because the skirmisher timing could be there. I mean, Leary's economy is looking really good right now, but Hera's going to switch into archers. The other thing to mention, too, and it's always so deceiving with these faster uptimes, is oftentimes the player who arrives to Castle H first has had to cut some corners with army production. So Hera's got three archers with two on the way. Not really the force he'd want to do a ton of damage in early Castle H. And we can see all time 54% on that archer yep. range. So he hasn't kept it producing. He obviously he had to keep the fire galleys that's huge. coming out and the all time percentage. That's a very Leary archer range right there. 82% yep. is really, really nice. And Leary has now found a position for his archers to march in. They're all marching in form. It's very, very satisfying when your archers sync up like that. And he's found the gold from Hera. Hera actually had to sell his stone to go up to the castle age. So he can't go for a tower anywhere. He can't go for extra TCs immediately. And he's gonna have to find a good fight against an archer army that's like twice the size of his. Yeah, this is so good from Leary. Uh, I don't think Leary needs to dive too deep here, using the scout to distract the TC fire, making that look easy. Still has the dock up, still making things competitive there. And I think he'll be a little surprised to see Harris clicked up, 
but a villager kill. Oh, good. They're going to see another villager kill as well, and Hera needs to stop this somehow. Yeah, stop the bleeding, but it doesn't seem possible, right? You can't even fight this army. And uh, Leary probably has reinforcements on the way, too. He's 30 seconds away from Castle Age as Hera reaches. He's going to be able to kill another villager here. And Hera's got to be very careful with these archers. He wants to kind of force the archers from Leary to stop so he can engage with the skirmishers. But Leary is perfectly content to just take out the archer numbers now that he sees Hera's in Castle Age. That's so good. And Hera is just getting Feudal Age armor. You know, we talked about things you could do ahead of time. You could have had that one while on the way to Castle Age. There's going to be zero fishing ships working for Hera. There's there will be zero additional town centers. And Leary's not only going to have berries in the middle, which gives him food, but with Portuguese, you actually get some wood from that as well. Just perfect position for the Austrian. Yeah, and you can tell how much wood he's getting. We'll see once he starts foraging here. You'll see that wood count go up by one. It's kind of like Khmer Farms. Hera didn't have fletching. <laughs> Super good synergy. Hera oh, didn't even no. have fletching either. He really sold his soul to get to Castle Age, yeah. didn't he? Oh boy, and now he's giving up the middle there, and I think Hera knows that this is just going to be a tough run back. Yeah. There is like a 10% chance that he brings himself back in this game, I think, if you were to ask him. If you were to ask Neely, he'd say 9.1%. Yep. Still like 100 times higher than your percentage of qualifying yeah, for NAC4. Okay, <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. I know you lost in Bomber, Cannon, Dodge, but we move on! Uh, Bod Canero now in for Hera, still just on archers, no elite skirm either, so really at the limit. And I think Leary's happy here. Uh, he could also add a knight, it looks like he killed another villager there. Could kill another villager, but I'd like to see a knight or some siege in the middle, which is pretty common. Leary, Leary's gonna see this university and be like, okay. Yeah, ballistics <laughs> into what, dude? Like, ballistics <laughs> with what? Is that for your town center? Because you're not gonna have army. <laughs> dude, he's gonna see this, he's gonna be like, well, I know you don't have any TCs. I can see that you don't have any army. Yeah. I know I've killed your wood eco, your gold eco has been idle, and you probably don't have any stones. Yeah, so, yeah. thanks. <laughs> I guess that university is perfectly acceptable. It, I think these are important moments for Leary, too. The first two games were kind of brutal. Game number two maybe left a lot of questions in his mind on what he could have done differently. And this is going to allow you to forget about it. Mm -hmm. For Hera, you know you're dead probably. You know how good Leary is. Just give it one more shot, right? Yep. He's getting crossbow, massing I, some army. We'll have ballistics. Maybe there's a chance. Bro, I love this ram too. If you see the university, you know there's no way he has wood for a siege workshop. Dude, ram the and market. There's, <laughs> the, ram the market, or you ram those two. You go with the mangonel first, and then you ram the two archer ranges. Yep. And then Hera has to commit with, like, vills to kill it. And I then think, you can just snipe the vills. I think if you ram in the right spot, you'll actually damage both archer ranges as well, which could be really nice. Yeah, maybe. But I don't see it as being a fight that's going to be too easy for Hera. Ooh, Does have Michael ballistics. Hera, oh my goodness, he's getting maximum value with those skirmishers, isn't he? Yeah. Jeez. He, he did make it look easy right after I said it wouldn't be easy, right? But he's got more crossbow numbers, he's got more HP, so he really should be looking to push out now. Uh, Leary just hasn't Leary felt didn't the pressure find the to get ballistics spot. at all. He didn't find the sweet spot. The cozy yeah, oh, on oh, up between oh, the two oh, of did those. you see that? Yep. Nice little dodging of the ballistics there, so it's clear that he knows. And still just a big eco lead here for Leary. Hera desperate in and out of the town center with the crossbows. A little whoop. I in. think that is something that is going to define this tournament for me. I think we've seen more of the hopping in and outside of TCs on this tournament than any other Age of Empires 2 event. Any other Age of Empires 2 event? I don't know if I have enough memory to recall, you know, other events, but it's so common out with monks as well, right? Like. Mm -hmm. Monks especially these days, it's happening a lot. I do remember a really big highlight MBL had against Hera a couple years back with Aztecs. But, yeah, Hera trying, right? I mean, he's not going to have a TC to hop into this soon. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> Don't try this at home, kids. <laughs> Hera's just having fun, dude. Hera's just having fun. Again, like, yeah. I don't know what his win condition is here. He has no economy, really, compared to his opponent. But he's doing everything he can to give himself a shot. Yeah, if you try that at home, not only will your TC be dead, half of your economy is going to be dead, and all your crossbows are going to be flattened. I don't know how, but I probably accidentally delete my TC or something like yeah, that. Maybe. Um, but, you know, Harris thinking about a counter, uh, so he's going to go do that now, but I think what he's really needed is defensive siege here, Dave, because, you know, his opponent has siege. He, he had to do the little in and out trick to have any chance against it. I think maybe defensive siege plus the crossbow counter could have been a play. Oh, Leary, Leary surprised, though, to see Hera here. This is something Hera could use. Yeah, and Leary's trying to dodge around ballistics, doing an excellent job. He's waiting till he hears that fire sound or he sees the arrows start to come out, then he moves away. 
But still, he I think he's fine with taking that engagement because he's still got the three mangonels yeah. over there. Yeah. He's got the TC in the middle. You can see that wood count taking up one by one. He's taking out both the archer ranges, Ooh. and now he's taking out the market. He does lose a mangonel, but he's got a mangonel over here to engage against the crossbows, and he loses a second one. Hera is still alive right now, but he has no TC gaming, <laughs> and he's only got four on food. And he's making a trade cart. Uh, that is a guy who is not fixed his hotkeys in his market. He's starting like the me. trade. He is going to start from oh, the market no, that's being attacked. No, don't deny it, Leary. Oh, he canceled the don't trade. Don't deny. Card. Oh, Hera. Yeah, maybe he has like market sell hotkeys. That's a good. That Manganel has found some value. I'm not going to lie. Well, plus two knights will be out. And uh, with this economy, Leary should be able to make enough knights to kill 12 crossbows. Yeah, Hera's, Hera's not giving up here. He's taking another Manganel. I think I saw a little grimace there from Leary. Like, uh, this game's going to go on another two minutes now. <laughs> and then I lost I mean, that Manganel. I mean, Hera's on that 9-0 streak, right? Yeah. Like, he doesn't want to give that he up. He doesn't want to give that one up. But... You know, like we say with first game of the day sometimes, sometimes you play out the games that you think you're dead in a little These bit longer. Knights take the pressure off yourself. Absolutely steamroll yeah. everything from yeah. Leary. He's got plus two on those. Leary, did you just delete your crossbows here? Is that too disrespectful? You, you know what? You might even just patrol them in on no attack sets. Give him the Let shot. Hera get the shot and yep. then just jump in with like yeah. 20 knights. You give him a little bit of momentum and then you take it away. Yeah. I mean, Harris Micro has been on point. And this guy can do incredible things when he doesn't have an economy to look at. <laughs> he still doesn't see the Knights, and there's 10 of them already. And Leary is pulling them back out of the vision. He's trying to flank around to the left side. First time Harris sees the Knights, and they've got plus two on them. And there's five Knights coming from either direction. <laughs> the attack rounds his own crossbows and says I GG. Love it. I love it. He knew he was dead. <laughs> I love that. I respect that so damn much. Yep. Yeah. He's hey. padding the stats, bro. <laughs> Yeah, that was great. We won't look at the KD on that one. Well, you know, that game was over for a bit there. I do think Hera gave himself a really good opportunity to, to come back in it. But in reality, the thing you question here is, why didn't Hera get those walls down on the villager? Mm -hmm. It was a, a unique scenario there where both players encountered each other on the pond. And Hera having some fun here in this semifinal. Still up 2-1. That was a must win for Leary. That was his, I think, first civilization pick. And he, going down 3-0 versus Hera would make life far too difficult. So we'll see what Hera ends up choosing next. He's got Northern Isles, Golden Swamp, and Enclosed. I think I'd go Golden Swamp here, actually. I haven't seen Leary play a lot of Golden Swamp. I think Leary's play style, which is typically land, isn't so good uh, on Golden Swamp. We haven't seen land much at all, um, if I'm not mistaken, or at least have it work. So that's where I'm at. Uh, Hera probably wants to hold Northern Isles in his back pocket. Enclosed could be a solid pick as well, though. Uh, if it is a water map, Hera's got Italians, mm -hmm. he's got Vikings, and, you know, some of the other ones that incorporate water could maybe see as well, like maybe Britons or Mongols. The good thing about a sieve like Italians, literally viable on four of these maps, all right? Yeah, maybe any of them. Any, they, you could any play them. them on Hippo Arena, too. They uh, can hit those timings. Yeah. It's sick, yeah. Just all depends on what you think uh, Leary is going to go for. I think you can make the same argument maybe for Malay for a few of these as well. Yeah, I think they're Leary. underrated. Yep. I think <clears throat> if we wouldn't have seen Vinchester play Malay against Jordan in the group stage, no one would have played Malay. Yep. So shout out to Vinchester. And I believe, according to what Vinchester said, shout out to Dragonstar, who had played it against him or talked to him about it. Um, game four coming up here. Game four of nine. Thank you, everyone, again for watching. I've had a great time casting it so far. The games have been really good. And I'm sure they're only going to get better, right? Because the first couple's games, they mean something. They mean as much as a Game 8 or a Game 9. But they don't carry the same weight as if we get deep into the series. Yeah. I'm wondering about that Ethiopians pick. Because I talked to Hera uh, after his win against Mr. Yo. And we asked him about that. And he said, Mr. Yo defended against that better than Leary ever did in our <laughs> practice games. <laughs> and I'm thinking, like, damn. And Leary probably played against that strat like five times, yeah. right? And yeah. he... He felt like it was unstoppable. Hera is, uh, he's uh, stretching. Not only can Leet Desk um, get you up to the proper uh, height, but it, you can also use it as a workout station. What kind of stretch is, is this a gamer stretch? This is, is the eSports stretch. I've never seen that stretch. is bringing another chair, sponsored by Backforce, oh, by the way. Oh, it's warm in there. It is very warm here as well for casters. I can only imagine in there because they've got smaller space. So Hera was opening the window. They need to like, oh, there we go. I've seen that one. Okay, dude, what if you like? What if you got a cramp? <laughs> what if you got a cramp right there? 
It would be funny. I've occasionally gotten cramps like mid game in my thigh. <laughs> <laughs> I, and we're not allowed to pause for non technical issues. <laughs> like, on, imagine trying to play through that. On day two, I started to, I got a mini cramp in my hamstring, and I was really worried that I couldn't get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> and because, you know, sometimes you got to like stand up and yep. move around. Stay hydrated. Yeah. I mean, listen. That won't be a problem for, I know, for Leary. You know, listen, viewers, I don't want you to get the wrong impression, okay? What we do is hard work. All right, it is physically exhausting. We get cramps like an athlete would. Yep. Very difficult to talk about video games. All right, we're going to see game number four coming up here in a moment. And these two preparing themselves again for what will be Hera's choice. First time he'll get to choose. And he might choose to go for something on Leary's side. I think these guys are pretty comfortable on all the maps. People don't seem to believe us that we need to be in tip-top shape for this, Dave, but that just means we need to impress him more, and Harris stands it. up again. Yep, it's a different routine this time. Did somebody <coughs> fart in that room? Is that what this is okay, about? That's not. There's only two people there, too. <laughs> if you're, if you're going to bring that up, it's got to be, what's the minimum number? It's like five, Okay, that's right? True. Just so you there can be some sort out. of, like, yeah. Because I saw him open the window, and then I thought it was warm, <laughs> but then, you know, he wanted to distance himself from Leary, so I wasn't sure. But Maybe that's, Nilly that's popped fair. in for a second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Nilly didn't want to disrespect everyone else yeah. in the house. Yeah. That would be griefing. <laughs> that would actually be laming. <laughs> I, I've read a lot of handbooks. I've never seen a rule against it, just saying. Yeah, that would be uh, disrespect, I think. Well, maybe we could see the draft again here. I think they're about to launch in here, though. We will see game four. Thanks for your patience, everybody. And it really feels like, okay, I got jabated there. I did ask for the draft. I thought we were going into the game. Is it realistic to say when these guys are so good and so close that if Hera goes up 3-1, Leary can't come back? Or is that too brutal in the best of nine? He came back in the best of five. He That's was true. Up he won three games in a row. And it was a really close third game. And then he, well, he won two games in a row. Yeah, and then he won the fourth game after oh that. Oh, my so. God. We're ha are we really looking at tech trees We're looking right at now? tech trees right now. Wow. Okay. We are looking at tech trees. At least they didn't That's, pause to look at the tech It tree. was a fake stretch. It was a fake stretch. The reason he wasn't actually stretching like a normal human the first time is because he knows he needs to get into the game. So he's like, oh, yeah, I just got to stand up and, like, lean over here. I don't subscribe to your hypothesis. I think it's a stretch. I don't know, dude. He's looked at a lot of tech trees. It, it is rather funny, though, he's looking at the Dravidians, right? The Dravidians have been singled out so much in this tournament. <laughs> they have, but he did win with them yesterday. That means, but if that... If he's looking at that, that tells me we're probably going to see Frigid Lake uh, or Golden Swamp. He's trying to determine what's going to be played. Yep. It could actually be Northern Isles. I actually think Dravidians are really good on Northern Isles, too. So what do I know? It could be three of the potential six maps. Looks so like insightful. they're into it now. Looks like they're into it. Also, I have to mention, the way Leary holds his keyboard is so weird. Did you notice that? He anchors it with his thumb, and then he only uses the four fingers. Oh, yeah, he doesn't use Can't his thumb hit on the space, space bar. Can't that hit is the space weird. bar. Not possible with the way he holds his hand. It's so strange. Anyway, Hera, Leary, game number four. Hera is playing the Britons. Leary is playing the Malay here on Golden Swamp. So the Britons we've only seen a couple times on this map. Used to be very popular in the past, but uh, it has been tailored more towards the pure water civilizations here at NAC4. And Leary going for the Malay, and the Malay timings can be sometimes really, really ridiculous here. Uh, stats guy could maybe double check on this. I believe we saw this matchup one other time in the entirety of the tournament. It was Malay for Vinchester. It was Jordan Britons for Jordan. Britons, yep. I believe you were casting that one with Dash, Dave. And Malay were able to win the water, and then the Britons weren't able to come back. And yep. that is kind of the theme of the map as well. So you need to make sure you can get your town centers rolling for a lot of economy for late game but you cannot fully lose the water on this map where it becomes so difficult. I mean, don't get me wrong. Britons are a fantastic Civ pick here, and we've seen Britons Agreed. find success here many, many times in the past. It just seems like the meta for this tournament has shifted away from that. But who are we to talk about the meta for this tournament? Hera has literally steamrolled everyone he's been against. Yep. So he should know better than us as he starts with a dock a little bit off to the left. He's going to find some fish over there. Concerning point here for Hera is the position of those two golds and the stone on that side, but at least he has a back gold. His other stone is pretty far away. No, it's in the back behind that woodland. That's actually not terrible. Okay, so hear me out. We have seen 99% of players just compete for water against each other. Mm -hmm. 
81.7% of the time, you just see the fishing ships go down anyways, right? Weirdly specific, but okay. I've done the math. If that's the case, and you're getting all this additional food uh, because of the gather rate from the water buffaloes with Britons, can you not go for the fishing ships now, expecting to lose them, transition into a barracks and a range, and change the game a little bit? Because the meta for Golden Swamp before this tourney, at least on Threeville starts, was some water transition to land. If they're then reacting to your land, you go back to water. I, I feel like if anyone's going to do it, it's going to be Hera. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, Hera could try for an approach like that. I think the difficulty for him is going to be the timings, right, that the Malay are going to hit. Like, Liri's going to be up to Feudal Age at around the same time or significantly before you. Yes. Usually you want to delay the, vi the villagers so you go up like two villagers ahead of your opponent, reach it at the same time. And then the Castle Age timing, even if you're doing damage, if he finds enough resources, if he gets his market up, maybe buys his way up to Castle Age, he could be there at a ridiculous timing. Yeah. And it's hard to deal with that if you're going for land pressure. Exactly. And that's why I hated, no offense, Jordan, if you're listening, that's why I hated when Jordan, when he played this matchup as Britons, just kept throwing docks up and just, just fighting into a disadvantage. I think you need to switch it up a little bit. And look at that timing for Leary. Oh, he's hitting Feudal Age at a ridiculous moment. He is going to be almost a minute ahead of Hera, so Leary will be opening with that dock approach. He d he won't have enough to make the mining camp a barracks and an archer range, yep. so it's definitely not going to be land pressure here. It's going to be just the water pressure. I wonder if he stays on one dock and opens galleys. I, I he think will he have time to, to produce too. one, and then yeah. I think he gets the second one before the fire galley comes out. From Honestly, him. I think it comes down to what he scouts here. If he doesn't see double dock commitment from his opponent, that could change things. Mm -hmm. And Hera did out of barracks. I, I actually would love for Hera to go scouts. He did it with Vikings, um, and he was able to compete on land and then switch back into water against Tato. Mm -hmm. nice. Oh, how can that scout not hit that fishing <laughs> ship, bro? <laughs> that's, that's good fishing ship micro there from Hera, and good fishing ship micro from Leary. But he has to be careful, actually. He could lose that. Yeah, he's got to be very, very careful on that side. He's standing in between the fishing ships and the dock of Hera, as Hera is going to be able to find this villager. Liri probably wants, really wants to finish this house, but he's going to have to pull that vill away. And now his fire galley is on the water, and it's going to head towards those fish. It's actually big damage that his scout has done, because now the fire galley is far more likely to kill those fish. I, I love Hera's decision here. I do not know if it will bring him a victory but it just suits the situation. Mm -hmm. You're going to lose water against Malay most likely. You have lots of food because you're Britons on a map with additional sheep. So just try and compete on water in some other way. Try and get back onto it later on. There's a lot of walling you have to do on Golden Swamp. And if I'm not wrong, I don't think Leary has necessarily scouted any. No, of he yet. hasn't seen. I don't even think he saw the barracks, right? So he's no still wondering if Hera is going to go for water investment. I think this should tell him the fact there's no fire galley Agreed. out Agreed. that he isn't. And I think that scout should make a beeline for the front of Hera's base to figure out exactly what is happening. He might just assume it's archers. And that's terrible yep. <laughs> if he's making that assumption. Yeah, he's adding a range now. But um, no spearmen. Which isn't necessarily the worst thing ever. And yeah, he did add the barracks pretty early, so I think he expected this. Uh, Dear T90, Vinch with Malay beat Jordan's Britons in round three. Jordan built 45 docks in that game. Vinch built 25. The average is around nine. Well, thank you. I wasn't expecting that level of that's detail. That's an amazing level of detail. And Leary's going to be like, uh, do you know what sieve you are, Hera? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is not yeah. typical for the Britons as Hera shows up here and snipes a villager. And you can see how unprepared Leary was exactly. for this strategy. It's just such a mix up here from Hera as he's about to get another villager. And he's probably going to get a third and maybe even a fourth here from Leary. This is a terrible beginning here for the Austrian. And it's as basic a strategy as you could basically have. Add a couple fishing ships, give up the water, add scouts. I mean, it's not that crazy. Mm -hmm. It's just no one has been doing it. And Hera, he's going to be so happy with this lead. It gives him a lead heading towards Castle Age 2, potentially, which could mean cheaper town centers with the Britons. Good patience with a yep. scout micro. Uh, Leary and somehow needs to recover from this with fishing ships. Leary might not expect also, like, Harold keeps doing the unexpected. He might expect only four scouts from Harold, but yep. Harold has six right now. Yep. So he's just going to keep pressuring here. Harold is feeling pretty comfortable. Leary, of course, with the three fishing ships, Harold was zero. And Leary is hanging out near the berries over on that side. So maybe potential to pick off some villagers. <laughs> Harris still being annoying, though, killing another fishing ship from Leary. Yeah, the scouts would probably never happen if this was a traditional water map where you couldn't use your land units as well. But because you can, Hera kills a fishing ship there. 
And so you have to constantly respect this, and Hera's making fire galleys at home, so Hera can actually come right back on water. This is precisely what you want. It's just a back and forth flow. You're taking the initiative. 400 food in the bank for Hera. He's collected 200 more resources. Still potential to kill plenty of villagers. And what a victory this would be here. I think oh, so good. That's a weak villager. He spotted it as well. That could be a kill. Where? On the wall there. Ah, he's trying to snipe that. He's also distracting on the berries. There's another weak one on the wood, but he can't really go in, and he doesn't get the one on the wall. And now he's kind of trapped in at the back there. Hera adding a blacksmith. He wants to go up to Castellate shortly as Leary wisely walls that villager in at the back, and he's got Spearman heading around. But Hera splits away from the Spearman. Oh, he's going to be so frustrated yeah. with these scouts in the back of his base and by, by another villager there from Leary. Very neat micro there from Hera. Look at Leary's walls. <laughs> he says enough Leary's of this. Like, enough is enough. I don't really care about those other villagers. Don't leave a hole there for him to go through. Maybe he wa deliberately wants to go through that hole, though. Okay, good. <laughs> it's just, I mean, Leary has two villagers trapped now. These guys are like, guys, what the hell? <laughs> Bill, Bill in the back, maybe. Potential for that. Oh, my God. Leary's been waiting for his moment. He's coming forward with the archers now as Hera is looking to get another villager, and he will. But Leary's been waiting by that hunt forever with the scout. And if we look at Leary's point of view, he should be able to see those villagers and uh, he's waiting for his moment he, to come in. He's waiting for fletching to come also, in. He's also also attacking fishing ships at the moment. Uh, or fire ships, excuse me. And he's going to lose that. Well played, Leary, on the defense. Leary's coming in with the archers now uh, around the berries. Hera oh, is still being very annoying. But boy. Hera notices it so quickly. And Leary's not in a position to block with his scout. A little bit of mis mispathing there. So that's a villager down from Hera. He's about to click up to Castle Age. And he should I be feel, there even faster than the Malay. I feel like this might be one of the most relatable moments for viewers at home in relation to Hera. You go for a scout raid when you saw your opponent was going archers, and you just spent so much time micring your scouts that you never added your own range for skirmishers, right? Like, uh, very greedy and could be punished for it now. And the lead one. could disappear here because Leary's using his starting scout. He's still got water. And Hera's trying to think of how he can keep these units away from his base. And he, he results in a tower. Results in a tower here. Maybe he could go out to that stone a little bit later, but this means he can't immediately add TC. So yep. Leary's made things messy for him. Remember, Leary is the Malay. As soon as he gets resources for the Castle Age, he's going to be up surprisingly fast. So I don't think he's going to be that far behind Hera, but Hera has gotten himself a really good opening with those, what, five villager kills, four yep. villager kills. And I think the important thing now Ooh. is that this is shifted into a land game where you can make a knight or two and you have double dock fire potential, which is really the key there. Those are some very weak archers there for Leary. One of them dies. Um, so Hera's not going to be able to afford a lot, but I think Hera can afford enough here. Uh, again, as we've said so many times about the Malay, and I think, you know, we've said it three or four times in this game, Leary's fine. He could recover. Mm -hmm. That uptime's going to come in before you know it. Great job and great harassment on both woodlines. And you can see the fish kind of evening out as it was at 69, 69 resources collected there from Leary for a moment. But it's very, very similar between him and Hera yep. right now. So the fish kind of evened out the amount of villagers that Hera had killed early. Now, obviously, the fish are going to fall off after a period of time, and he's only got two left as Hera reaches the castle age, and Leary is about to click up in a couple minutes here. Hera's like, oh, I have cheap TCs with Britons. Don't have the stone. He, for he forgot he doesn't have the stone here. Yep. That's really funny. So he'll need to... Ooh, how how oh, does he even oh, get that oh, stone? He doesn't even have a market. Lady, don't farm there. What's going on? Hera, make it night, bro. Oh, this is, this is going to hurt. This is going to hurt a lot. And he's sending those villagers north. He has no way to get that stone, Tristan. He doesn't even have a market. Oh, I don't that think. hurts. Oh, man, he's got such a window here. But instead, he's going to lose And the knight goes bills. down. The knight goes down, which means the archers can continue to find value against these villagers. Leary's going to get another one, I think. Yikes, that hurts. And now Leary's going to click up to Castle Age. Leary will be very happy he's he able did. to get that villager as well. 6 to 5 KD. Leary also has time to possibly recover on water. A good job from Hera, though. Th did he build the TC? No, or? no, no. He had to build a mining camp to go to the stone oh. to get enough stone <laughs> for that TC. That's Yikes. rough. And I think it was because he tried to trap Leary in. He placed that market foundation, and mentally he thought he might have a market oh, that's, to that buy the stone. That could be it. That's yeah. actually a really good point. Um, Sometimes you trip yourself up, right, yeah. when you're in the moment. You're like, oh, I hit that hockey for the market. Well, you didn't end up building it. That... Dave, you didn't want to admit it, but I believe that the reason you knew that and were so insightful is because that has happened to you a lot. Thousands of times, dude. <laughs> Thousands of times. Okay, well, three fire ships there on the dock. 
It looks like about two fires out on the field, maybe One in that dock for Leary. 1,000 more res collected for Leary. I yep. love having that stat on screen, just to keep us constantly updated, give us a general sense of the eco. Leary's eco has been much more efficient than Hera's, even after the villager kills. And listen, Hera might lose this game, but I love the fact that he didn't play straight up water against the Malay. Mm -hmm. he, he switched the type of game we have here, which means other things are going to have to happen. Leary has to drop a monastery, as he's thinking of converting some uh, oh, some of the knights. This is that dock and the archers. Ooh. So close. Yeah. Also, no war galley upgrade for Hera because he can't afford it. So very likely Leary will end up dominating water anyways. And he's got archers looping. Oh, man, those archers could find That's such So many positions. ships, Tristan. <laughs> he's got two demos, and he's got the war galley upgrade coming in. Here comes the demo. Does he find value? Good demo. It's okay. He clears up the weak one, does half damage to another. And the fire ships are now pushing back. He's also got another demo coming in from somewhere else, Leary. And the archers are looping around. Where is that demo from Leary? It is somewhere. I think it's back in his ah, dock. Okay. They forgot about it. And the TC in the center. I like the TC in the center. A little surprised by it. Normally, you see the TC in the center be the third one because you do have enough gold for now at home. But I'm most focused on where those crossbows are going to go for Leary. Mm -hmm. Uh, he doesn't know where the town center is, so he could actually run right underneath it. He still needs to no, be really close Still attention. no Bodkin from him either. Yeah. I would expect Bodkin to come in. Well, there you go. Uh, speaking to the game itself, and Bodkin comes in right as I call for it. Crossbows, like you said, likely to run into that town center. Let's see how quickly Leary notices this. He Hera might just shoot Vils. And we'll stay see under this it. right away. He shoots Vils. Hera is distracted in the center. He doesn't expect Leary to be literally under his TC, and that's why he's uh... distracted. He's denying the TC there. Hera doesn't have many villagers to garrison in this, and he's going to be so surprised <laughs> when he looks back and sees a ghost town around his second TC. Uh, guys, you know, <laughs> it's like both players are like, oh my god, I'm killing Vils. I'm killing Vils and they don't realize they're losing on both <laughs> sides. So a little sloppy there. Does hurt more for Hera, it looks like. But the Eco KD is actually 11 to 10. Who wins the Knight of the Crossbow? Ah, oh, the TC screwed it up, bro. Ruined. <laughs> Both one hit away from death. Hera still hasn't lost his docks, which I think is a big talking point here. He is forced into Siege, which is not something he would have wanted to do, but obviously need to do it. Third town center for Hera. Hera's transition to the farming eco and town centers is normally better than anyone in the game. Mm -hmm. And the Britons can do some crazy things in Imp, so Leary either needs to do some do more damage or catch up on the economy himself here. I want to see who goes out to stone first, because castling this area is going to be very, very important. I'd also love oh the monk boy. addition here from Hera. Could be a oh, big dude, conversion. Dude, what He's are you trying doing to charge there? up on the crossbows. What are you doing, Leary? You know it's in that dock. You have to know what's in that dock. He's backing away, Dave. He knows. He, the flag is tripping him out, and Sanctity on the way for Hera. I love the fact he's added in this many monks. He's not going for the relics yet. He knows how much value monks can get against the fire ships, and maybe even convert a demo and send it towards the uh, the crossbows I from think, Leary. I think Leary sees his food count, and he's like, screw it, let's just go fast imp. Maybe. Um, you know, there is a world where he makes it to imp and can't really afford a lot, because that happens frequently with the Malay just because you're so fast, but he hasn't added the third town center yet, which is shocking Eco, to me. I mean, Eco for Leary is still super efficient. Look at the idle TC time for Leary, too. 35 seconds here with yep. all this craziness going on with all the villagers he lost early. I know he's only got two TCs, but super impressive stuff from the Austrian. It don't get too close. That's enough crossbows to one-shot a demo raft. And also, but not still. that formation, okay? Yeah. Like, you need to use spread formation, so if you do get hit, you don't lose everything. But I think Hera's going to have a massive vill lead here. He's got 56 vills versus 51, but he's on four town centers. Yeah, Leary has to be careful to send, sending this demo oh. in because Hera is charging up against these crossbows. He does get one conversion, uh -oh. and he converts uh -oh. the demo. Uh -oh. oh, no, uh -oh. Leary, how can you get away from this? Wow, Leary only losing four crossbows. I say only because it could have been an absolute disaster, but he's in on the wood line again. Yeah, and maybe that's why Leary let that happen, because he was able to be here. Hera does react, but loses villagers. I think Leary will be kind of okay with how that went. Obviously, he doesn't have the highlight, right? So when the things are clipped, it's going to be all Hera there with the conversion and the kills. I'm not sure I love the hesitancy here from Leary. You've just taken out three monks. 
Now is when you should move in with your fire ships. Hera hasn't even upgraded your ships yet. I, I so, think you can wait, though. Like, look at look at the Imperial Age timing for Leary. Maybe. With Malay, it's going to be absolutely insane. And we look at the food in the bank. I mean, Hera's got 24 on food right now, but he's down to 15. He yeah. only has three villagers queued. Like, he's not close. Yeah, maybe. Now, Hera will be happy to maybe also shift around to the oh. sides. So good. Yeah, maybe you win water fully and then drop the castle on Hera's face. Mm. Not even in the middle here because this whole build-up is for pressure. I would really like that, I think. I think you can go in the middle, because I think you're going to be able to afford a castle by the time you hit him, and then you still keep the same amount on stone, and then you build towards another castle yeah. while you get your text, right? There's no need to go super forward there. What's the 104 taunt? I know 105. I am not aware of the 104 taunt. I am an old school player. I go up to like 45, <laughs> and that's about <laughs> it. Dude, same, 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 same. I know a couple of them, but... Uh, don't resign. Ah, interesting. Okay. It's for the AI. I see. Yep. Don't resign. Well, I mean, if they have to put up with any more of my jokes, they might just do that, so I should shut up. He's got sanctity. He's a holy man. And uh, oh. that holy man is not making it through the fire. What are you this doing? What are you doing? Into another demo. What are you doing? Like, before you saw the flag and you were scared, you got too excited there to kill the monks. Extreme hesitancy here from Leary as Hera now up to 80 eco. Hera has the better KD, probably the worst water sieve, but that economy is looking on crazy. 40 on food. He was just at 20. He loses another monk sanctity versus a fire ship. It just, we, we figured it out. We've done the math. It's not enough. It's <laughs> not enough to beat the fire ship. We have a good sample size now as Leary is looking to put that castle down just a minute away from Imperial H. It should be the perfect timing here. If he pulls all these villagers, that castle will be up by the time he reaches Imp unless... Hera can do something with these monks. I don't think he's going to be able to, though. If Leary loses this game, he is going to be so frustrated. Okay. Little demo revenge, and he gets That's the perfect nice. position. That's a double shot. As like, the fire galley somehow resists conversion for a very long time. Hera created a tower and one scorpion on land, right? Everything else he's been able to defend with in the middle there with that one dock. That dock's been the MVP. So important for Leary that if he does go to land again, he uses the sides. He had opportunities here. Leary, I think what Leary needs to do here is obviously control the center area. He's yeah. kind of already doing that. Another castle in between this castle and the shoreline on that buildable terrain could cut everything off. But also some outposts on the sides would be very, very valuable, especially on that southern side. He's got outposts in the north, and Hera is actually taking those out. Yeah. He doesn't want Leary to have vision on any push he comes out that comes that way. But I think the south, he's still missing some vision. Yeah, redemption coming in, which is a little confusing. That allows you to convert enemy siege, which we don't really see, or buildings, which could be helpful. Still haven't seen a water upgrade for Leary, but we do see the trap. Is Leary going after the docks first? No. I think he wants the town center. I think he wants which, to convert the dock, but he's going to lose Which TC is monk. going up? Okay, it's that TC. That, Thank you, Vodka. I mean, he could lose a Treb and also a Monk to a little bit of Navy if he's not careful. But I guess Hera doesn't have the numbers. Oh, boy. Hera's trying to redock here. Leary with redemption is being very annoying. That is too. super like, annoying. Like, Hera's trying to get fletching. Like, I'll hit my timings yeah, with yeah, all the yeah, text yeah, coming yeah. in. Nope, not if, uh, not if Leary converts your blacksmith. Not if he gets your stable. Not if he gets your dock on the other side he's also taking out the docks in the north so leary piling on the pressure here for harry he knows exactly what harry needs to do and he's trying his best to stop that transition as leary now starts queuing up battle elephants and Hera's going into stables <laughs> i actually don't <laughs> mind this tristan these are like so difficult for Hera to take care of yeah yeah and Hera had to train him you know he's like Hera gave him all the tools the only thing i hate the is that can't do that leary has 16 on food yeah that's right i know they're cheap with malay but it's gonna be tough because he doesn't have the farm eco that Hera has set up as Hera now goes for a defensive castle here leary is still taking out the docks with his traps but a significant it, amount of fires for Hera. If Hera had 10 light cap right now, I'd actually might even give him a slight edge to win this game. He doesn't have them yet. He's trying to produce because he sees so many monks. Leary has given up on crossbows, has 12 monks, and with seven more in the queue. But he's this converting buildings. super one-sided. That's true. He's converting buildings, and he's stalling out all of the momentum here for Hera. Like, Hera isn't committing onto archers. He is going into light cap, which at the end of the day, if you're fighting against Britons, you're like, okay. Yep. It's but, not the worst thing in the world. But it, it is if you don't have ships. It is if you have only trebs. And it is if you don't have crossbows. I'm concerned. That's hilarious. Love that. And there's more <laughs> elephants in that forward stable that he yeah. converted. <laughs> I love that. 
but uh, there's some con slight concern for me that Leary is maybe over investing into the monks. He's going to have to diversify here. Look at these Trebs doing work against those forward docks and the elephants still doing work at the back. <laughs> the castle is being repaired. Hera's at a stone soon. He's got fast fire ship now, but he's just, he's Making desperately trying to keep his eco alive and spam like have into the center so far the like have <laughs> just aren't doing it the monks are taking care of them so far and if he sends in the fast fires yeah. those can be converted to deal with the like have yeah and and like have are supposed to be a counter but that counter's running into fire now and into the castle fire and leary's like why should one. i make ships when you need to make ships and i can just convert your ships mm -hmm. and then i can roast your light cav and here come the trebs and hera ha hera has not sniped the treb this game i, I know. don't think it's so tough I mean, the problem for Harry, he also lost his blacksmith. I'm sure he wants to get upgrades. And now he's losing his TCs. More so that elephants beautiful coming farming in. eco he doesn't really have anymore. And they more come again. elephants are coming in. <laughs> no Cheap upgrades. elephants. Literally no upgrades whatsoever. Yeah. Those are naked elephants there. Well, funny thing is, the guy meant to pick Magyard. Cheap elephants. Don't see that from the Malay that frequently. Leary's crazy. Like, Leary is still making monks. He's got 11 monks with seven more on They're the They're working. Way. They're working. You're asking what defense he needs against the light cav? Just convert the enemy ships as yeah. they come in. And if you Hera doesn't go for ships, then the Trebs can just sit there all day. Yeah. The castle will protect against those light cav. And Hera now goes for monks of his own to try and convert those elephants. But I believe Leary has a light cav back there converted from Hera to snipe those down. More fire ships on the water here from Hera. He's trying to grab hold of that northern section, but he needs to keep running with his eco. And Leary is just pushing <laughs> him back step by step. Yeah, absolutely. There he goes. Going to get some conversions. Should really get Galleon and get ship upgrades of his own. What is Beyond the conversion that? number at right now? I'd yeah. really love to know that. I bet 17 it's like 20 to something. Oh. It's only 12? Wow. Yeah, but they've been big swings, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's been ships uh, and that has made a big difference. And even if you lose all these monks, you have access to the gold in the middle. So with endless gold, I don't think you're going to be too disappointed in your situation if you're Leary. Yeah, Leary is now facing up against a considerable amount of fast fires. He's going to lose all his monks, but I believe he got about four conversions there, and that's really going to help him defend along with that castle. The Trebs are going down to villagers, but Hera's buildings are dying behind this. Hera still has 113 villagers. He's not done yet, but Leary is still holding on to this middle location. And because I said that, Hera taps out. It is now 2-2 in our final. Hera did a really good job. You know, he got the scout rush in, killed quite a few villagers there. But I think Leary's counterattack was huge. It could have been so easy for Leary to say, I'm just going to defend with these spearmen. Yes, I lost villagers, whatever, and go for water. But the archers and the spearmen was something that Hera didn't expect there. I think because land has been so infrequent on that map, Hera felt like him going for the land would be the surprise and that Leary would simply not do it because, again, no one else has really been going for those types of standard land counterattacks. Beautiful job from Leary. Our final is 2-2, two to two, and it, this best of nine now kind of becomes a brand-new best of five. Four games in, four games in, and we knew it was likely to go all nine. It always does with these two guys. Hera gets up 2-0. We're a little bit concerned. Maybe it's going to be another sweep. No, yep. it's never going to be a sweep against Leary. Not with the form that Leary is playing in. Also interesting last game. At no point did Leary ever bring the archers back to try and deal with those scouts. True. At no point. He yeah, was he just thinking show pure counterattack. He never showed them. I think Hera might have seen the range, but he never showed the archers on yep. the backside. I think that was a big part of it, too. Yep. You know, if Hera would have seen two or three archers, then I think he would have added the range, had the skirms, had a much better situation. I think on some level, you could probably say, maybe you should make skirmishers there if you see your opponent makes the range. But Hera did so well with his scouting micro, or yeah, his scout micro, because of the fact he wasn't doing some other things there. So great game, series 2-2. Two, two. And Leary, he gets to wait and see what Hera will choose on. I think Hera should probably save Northern Isles. I said that before. Uh, it's a good momentum swing. If you really think that you are better on that map, I think Hera is very solid on that map. I asked, uh, I asked Hera about uh, the Northern Isles pick from Viper against Leary. We, uh, we talked this morning, and uh, I was like, what's the strategy Leary had going into that, right? Like, if Leary didn't win that Arabia game, what was the strategy? And Hera said there was no strategy. They had talked about it. He said, Leary, you need to prepare. And Leary was like, well, I'll, I'll just win everything. I won't, I won't get there. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So that was his strat. So 
worrying times potentially for him if he's matching up against Hera, who's looked so dangerous on that map. But Leary is Leary. He has the ability, and uh, he can always pull off a surprise victory. I'm a little surprised we didn't see Bengali selected by Hera. Unless I'm missing it, I'm seeing lots of Bs. Uh, no uh, Bengalis. Uh, Bengalis are... They're not banned either. Not to be seen. Yeah. I'm just surprised because he played so well with them against Viper. And I felt like the Bengalis are a do-no-wrong civilization on Northern Isles. And in a best of nine, I would have expected and to see it picked. Koreans aren't here either. Yeah, interesting. I so know. I spoke to Tato. He thought Koreans were the best Northern Isles pick. Yeah, that's true. Tato. Is interesting. But Tato, Tato has some interesting takes on... Uh, I, I love Tato. Yeah. But, uh, you know, the Dravidians, uh, you know, and, and a couple of the Gamer Legion picks there yeah. didn't surprise... Uh, didn't make me love that Civ at times. But, you know, Dravidians would be the civilization we'd probably see for Leary, maybe Byzantines, if it ends up going to Northern Isles. I think Vikings, Italians, either or there for Hera could it work. Uh, love to see Hippo Arena rematch between these two. It was interesting in the draft. I think a lot of the people watching missed it, but it goes back and forth in cycles, right? And when it got to Hera in the middle of the draft, it was up to him to pick two civilizations, and he picked the Burgundians and the Turks. Mm -hmm. And the reason that's notable is because both those civilizations are perfect for Hippo Arena, but also in Leary and Hera's game five in the group stage, it was Burgundians for Leary against Hera's Turks. And we saw that crazy Flemish revolution from Leary to win and that game. And we are going to go into enclosed here for game number five. So I'm expecting the Ethiopians from Leary. Leary. Hera said that's kind of an unstoppable strap, but now we have the mix up. We have the Chinese here for Leary, and if I remember correctly, Leary picked Chinese against Viper yesterday on this map. Uh, Viper on this map, I somehow forget. I believe okay. I casted that series. I believe I he did. I think Viper might have been Mayans against Chinese. I can't Mayans remember. Mayans Chinese was Yo and Tato, which okay. might be on your mind. Okay, that, that was a really good game, which people should go back and watch. But yeah, Chinese are seen as the superior civilization here in this matchup. For the Mongols, they have the hunt bonus, and there's a quite a bit of hunt and you can see Hera's even pushing in some food so it's all about early feudal damage for Hera all right so players pretty far away on this generation they're gonna have to go all the way around to reach each other Chinese can be a little bit slower than oh, the Mongols Hera forgot for sure. his house and Hera oh he's forced to get loom you can see him scratching his face like kind of oh man I messed up my build already it's not the worst thing in the world but sometimes with Mongols you want to go up before getting loomed because you're so fast. It's actually, it feels so bad at this population that you're almost tempted to just go 15 pop feudal. But 15 pop feudal is so little. So Hera, hey, he is just behind a villager now because he got loom early. Uh, the, the thing with the Chinese is they have more villagers. So that, that's a, a big thing in an RTS game. But also their technologies are cheaper. They, there's more that they can do with their tech tree. And there's also more food on their farms. So and this gets Castle Age, and it's close, I think, advantage, Leary. If you haven't been tuning in for all the Chinese games so far, they do, on the nine villager start, start with minus 100 food. Yeah. But in Enclosed, it's so nice to go for them because your elephants or your rhinos or whatever, always right next to your TC. Yep. So as you can see, even with minus 100 food, Leary has 21 seconds only of idle TC time, which is ridiculous. And you can see the villager advantage, not just with the early loom clip from Hera because he was housed, but also because of that Chinese bonus. Leary is 19 villagers versus 17. Okay, so with civilizations where you can gain early leads, it's important to distinguish this because there's many times, and we've talked about it with the Dravidians actually, where viewers and casters say, why pick this Civ, right? Mm -hmm. But the reality is you pick the civilization because you think you have a window and you have to take advantage of that window. The problem is some people will pick civilizations where they have a short early window and then in the middle of the game they're like, okay, I feel like I should add town centers. I feel like I should make late game decisions. Yep. And Hera does a really good job with the Khmer and, and Mongols where he would just say, no, 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 we're not going to do that. He resists the urge for the town centers and he goes for the aggression. So it's a great style pick here from Hera. He's the best at that. And let's see he's what he does. Men at arms. He's going for men at arms. He's already got the militia in the queue, and they're already heading across. Leary needs to do a good job with his scout, scouting this. And I think if you're scouting, you should hug the oh, edge. He has the experience, no. bro, because how many times have we seen those scouts go along Just the rocky passing. path and not see the stuff on the middle Did area he? here? Okay. He's going to see the next one. I mean, I've seen no indicators. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. He okay. knows. He, he knows. does know now. That's the worst feeling for Hera. 
Yeah, and Hera has turned it now into just the two militia drush yeah. instead of the men at arms. That is interesting. Hera did go for two militia into scouts before on, um, I think it was Moras, but unfortunately here you see don't what, have as much. What food. he's adding in behind that, I see a building coming down from Hera, and it's an archer range. Okay, still on the gold. So Hera will have those two militia forward. He's going to be in a position to maybe harass the gold and the berries from Leary. But Leary wisely walls that yeah. up. And this is just not really a threat anymore. And he's going to find the range. It's uh, not the most optimal start here for Hera. I'm really surprised we're not seeing scouts, Dave. It's a very long distance to get to your opponent here. Mongols have so much food. And I don't even think three militia would have been worth it for Hera. I think all he can do is really kill that deer if you're Hera. Yep. With forward with those militia. That's like really all you can do at the moment. <laughs> this is the most damage you're going to do to Leary's economy. You Whoa. have to wait for the archers to show up. <laughs> Big damage from those two Big. militia. <laughs> yeah, now Leary might be concerned that there's going to be a third militia. I'm sure he'd love at this point, though, if Hera goes for the men at arms. But since both players have opened one range, Hera does have the scout and the militia and uh, what could be a similar number of archers behind this. So micro still really matters. Archers obviously can punish the very exposed gold and berries there for Leary. And Leary, interesting, he wants to move out and make a house there. Yeah. I don't think I would make that house, but he feels comfortable here. Yeah, he's just going to push out with his villager a little bit. Hera trying to be as annoying as possible. Leary's still hanging out near the berries. Yeah. He's not being active with his scout because there's really not much more he needs to see. I think he's waiting for his archers to loop around that way to mm -hmm. get to the berries. Just needs to make sure that he's safe for the time being because he knows Hera's archer range started going up a little bit faster than his own. Okay, so Leary always chooses super weird colors. I apologize. And we're he's, a little bit faded here on his point of view. He's orange here, so. but I want to follow his tracking. Mm -hmm. He's going to look for a flag on this range. Yeah, obviously, he's doing a couple things. Looking, 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 hoping there's still a flag there, I'm sure, because he's uncertain on where the army is. Leary, Leary, look at your range. Look Leary, at the do, scout. What, do what T90 tells you to Please do. Please so make me look like he doesn't I'm look smart. bad. He's looking terrible right now, Leary. Come on, you can't shift Q your scout 15 I didn't know. times. He didn't he know. He doesn't know. This is a big deal as we go back to the normal colors. He's checking the range. The archers come in. This is a misplay from Leary and a great job from Hera to punish the fact that Leary wasn't in the proper positions. Wow, how does Leary let this happen? Your gold is exposed, right? You saw those militia coming forward. You saw they were men at arms. You saw the range early, and you're still losing two villagers Huge. to this. And you might even lose another one here if you're not careful. He's sending another weak villager in to try uh. and block. He's blocking with a weak villager, <laughs> but he's going to get away. Yeah, he should. I, I mean, that is no. a real bro oh, right there. Man. That is a real bro, right? Like, it's not like he was full HP. But sloppy stuff from Leary. Now, I say sloppy, but also... Hera would have recognized that the scout wasn't around his range. So it's a two-parter. Like Hera had to have that recognition. He moved out much earlier than Leary was expecting. And now suddenly the bill count, a little bit closer. Suddenly yep. you feel like Hera's got more of a chance in this match. Hera's just evened out all of the early loom timing and the Chinese bonus yep. on the, uh, the villagers, right? We can see total res collected extremely similar. Leary is now the one forward, but Hera has four archers in defense. He knew that Leary would come around this side because he didn't see any military on the other side. And there were no archers really defending at Leary's yep, base. So yep. great recognition there from Hera, even getting the tiger to oh, help God. him out with this. And the scout is full HP. Hera, so give the tiger the kill. Get, make it weak and give the tiger the kill. Come on, he's been waiting. Just pull away now. Pull away. No. Woo, 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 woo. Let's go. That's not the sound that a tiger makes. I know, but, but they put tigers on the map. Well, I can't do a tiger noise. The only tiger that T90 knows is Tony the tiger. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Dave, thanks for that one. As and we it's see Hera great. Trying to defend <laughs> here. And this is great defense from Hera again. And also, the scout has good HP. So the scout will be able to whittle down these skirmishers. How do they get a tiger graphic? How fast are you guys? Seriously, slow it down. Uh, but the skirmishers are going to die. I'm loving Hera's position with how this feudal age has gone. Still, though, you do favor the Chinese the longer the game goes. Mm -hmm. And Leary has just managed to uh, withstand the pressure, right? Same with Hera. There is another archer range being added here from Leary as he has a lot of food in the bag. Very similar resources. It's, it's always amazing looking at these two guys when they're playing together. You think, like, they've been producing, they've been... Uh, being aggressive, they'll only have one or two hundred food in the bank. Mm -hmm. They always consistently at this stage of the game, around the 12, 13 minute mark, have 
300, 400, 500 food yep. in the bank, and they're thinking about going Castle Age. It's so tricky, too, because if you kill a couple of villagers from these guys, if you're not in the top 20, you're probably later to Castle Age, and then they just bring it right back, mm -hmm. right? But again, a stylistic thing here with the Mongols, a must need or must do for Hera. He Some sells way. a stone. He has to somehow get some type of an advantage. Leary, I honestly would love to see a tower. Because even if you're not building the town centers, the Chinese feel superior to the Mongols. What you don't want to be is to be too greedy here without scouting and hope that you're going to have the similar. Hera sees the second range. I think with two ranges, he's probably fine. He doesn't know that Hera's on two ranges. If he had a scout, that would be really valuable. Hera's as Leary now Hera's goes gonna love market. That. Hera's going to love that market because he now knows that his opponent isn't buying and selling resources, mm -hmm. and he's likely not up. Well, I mean, he could check his own market to find find out, but he I could. guess seeing the market just kind of triggers it in your mind, yeah, right? Yeah, As yeah. Leary now clicks up to Castle Age. Only a minute behind, and it's going to take Hera a minute to walk over to Leary's base. Leary also has double range production to help him out. Hera's only adding the second range now. And I think Leary's going to do the thing where you go forward. You know you're slower to Castle Age, but you go forward, and then you just kind of do a step-by-step -step retreat yep. until you can get those Castle Age techs in. And that's going to protect your economy behind. He's also splitting up his army, which could be very annoying for Hera with only seven archers on the field. Right yeah, now. and Hera's going to want to go forward here. And he's going to be so annoyed by this because four archers could kill so many vills, and yet he just doesn't have the numbers. Yeah, and there's another army coming from the other side, too. So it's like, if you're Hera, which <gasps> army do you engage against? Leary's going to run right into this, and Leary, you can see it in his face. Not happy about that oh. at all. If he patrols there, I think he kills two more archers in that group. Oh, and he misses the villagers there. Hera had time to notice it. At, uh, Hera has what, to come back, though. Yeah, he does. That's a very good point. Has to come back, which means Leary has saved his uh, early Castle Age economy. But it, I don't think he's going to be able to save this military. And I don't think he's going to be able to even pick a villager unless Harry's a little bit sloppy with the ones near the berries to the south of these archers. He should be in a position to pull those away, though. And Leary will now be the one waiting for Castle Age. Ooh, uh, he might find villager picks here. I'm going to die. Let me quickly build a gate. Nice work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's just so lovely for Leary that he knows that army isn't running across to his base right now. Actually, he doesn't. It is. He missed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, it's not as far as it could have been. The skirmisher narrowly missed it. We might want to replay on that later. If he tries to drop a town center on that gold with no army at home, big, big problems for Leary. Oh, geez. Uh, I need to know. What's happening? What's at his gold right now? Oh, he's got He's armor. got plenty. He's got plenty, and he can just delay 15 seconds until his upgrades are in. Even a villager mixed in with that army. She's telling him what to do over there. I think the skirmisher was just standing still on the side there, so it wasn't the biggest deal for Leary missing that, but he was definitely trying to spot any yep. force coming forward. Yep, and As he goes for instant university, interesting. Really capitalizing on the Chinese uh, tech discount. Hera could have bought stone and just dropped town centers. Instead, he went university, and he's trying to get ballistics in a little bit earlier here. And again, I like this. And it, it feels weird to say that, you know, I liked Hera's approach in the previous game where he Two lost. But forward. he's giving himself his best chance at victory in this matchup, which he knows is very difficult. And he did the same in game number four. Leary is going to be pressuring the Mongols with the Chinese here. Yep. Usually it's the Mongols in a position in early Castle Age to try and do damage. That but skirmisher is coming forward. That, that skirmisher is super helpful. Yep. I think Leary, though, doesn't have elite skirm yet. He's got six skirms out. And he doesn't have ballistics yet. So again, a window. I think if elite skirm was in, then Hera wouldn't take engagements. But skirmishers aren't that impressive if they're not elite. Plus and Hera armor. absolutely should. Plus two armor is coming in for Leary, though. He needs to delay like 20 seconds. He doesn't really mind the fact that ballistics isn't in yet. Yeah. But that plus two, I think, can be really, really big. We all know Leary can dodge around ballistics if he needs to. Oh, He's going to wait for the shots to come in. But Hera is picking him apart as he runs away. Always so much easier for a player in Hera's position here. And he knows it. Leary also recognizes now that Ballistics must be in. He's probably looking at his university constantly, just trying to wait for that. It's a lead skirm. It's another 40 seconds. Good window for Hera to chip away. He's got more HP on his army. Still not sure what those two villagers are doing for Leary in the north, but we'll find out soon. They're getting attacked by a tiger. Now Hera's probably going to realize Ballistics is in and have to back away. Yeah, he's trying to dodge the ballistics with those three crossbows, but Leary can realize Hera is controlling those and then target the main force. And Leary has gotten a pretty good fight 
Honestly, oh behind this, boy. now he's got Elite Skirm in, and Hera's the one that needs to run away. Great snipes here from Leary, and Hera unable to do any damage there as he adds the second TC. Looks like he might also be adding a Siege Workshop at home to help keep himself protected as the Siege Workshop now comes up forward from Leary, and Hera does not have any vision on that as of yet. Is Hera going to try and sneak? Oh, is he? I love oh, this. I no, love and this he's so going to find that. Oh, that's so brutal for Leary. It's brutal for Leary, but it's so good from Hera because he knows the army's going to shift forward from Leary, and the only thing... Hera? Hera. Burp. There's a, there's a sit. He waits for it there's to be 90%. It's a big brain play. 99%, it does oh. go up, but the villagers go down. Okay, awkward. But, but actually, this changes everything because... Hera was going to counterattack, but now Leary would see the army counterattacking. Mm -hmm. But I do still like the shift here from Hera into trying to counterattack with the crossbows and the defensive siege. Run away, Leary. You cannot be there right now. <laughs> you don't know when that siege workshop came up. Leary, you cannot sit there, okay? It is against the rules. You see a siege workshop, even if it doesn't have a flag, you can't go in a tiny little Dude, choke point. This guy, Not the best timing for Hera there on that army coming through. Normally I'd agree with you, but this guy lost so many crossbows to demos in the previous previous game and still won. Oh my goodness, where are you going, Leary? And Leary at home does add the second town center. Hera has a Ville lead. Probably a good time to remind you that while I favor the Chinese, big attack rounds, that the Mongol super late game mm -hmm. is superior. Is better, yep. It's gonna be hard though. It's gonna be hard against a player like Leary who will hit that imp timing at a pretty good clip, so. Hera is going to have to expand if he wants to get to that late game. Going to have to control the stones and the golds, and it's going to be difficult to s stretch out towards those. Skirmishers on the other side, distracting the crossbow, still engaging with the mangonels here in the middle as Hera just patrols against plus two skirmishers. Not the greatest fight of all time. Hera's only goal. Oh, Leary, you can't be here, bro. How did you survive that? That's so risky, man. And he does get hit there. And Hera, probably pretty happy now. Not happy about that engagement necessarily, but he'll clear it up. He's got a villager lead, and he's got two mangonels versus one. And Leary really struggling to find damage. How did he survive there yeah. against that shot? He should, the, all of those units should be dead. He just microed away at the last second, maybe two tiles to maneuver, and he found his way to safety. Crazy, crazy plays here from Leary. We look at the economy, Hera once again expanding behind this, and he's trying to make the defense work with a limited number of units. Only two Mangonels, only two crossbows in the queue right now. Leary with a significantly bigger army, but Hera is expanding his eco uh, a lot faster than the Austrian. Yeah, four TCs is really good here. I think both players should consider it. There's a house foundation there for Leary because he's bringing forward a villager or two to be able to repair the mangonels. Actually a really big deal because if you have a full HP mangonel on the hill, one direct hit from your opponent will not kill you. If you can't repair, this can happen. Also an outpost here would be really useful yeah. for Leary. Outpost in these mangonel battles gives you a little bit of extra vision. You have time to prepare for those mangonels coming in. Looks like Leary has the mangonel number advantage right now. He's trying to snipe that down from Hera. Doesn't quite get a full hit. Survives with oh the one God. on the hill. This micro is insane from both. Hera's going to get one. Leary's going to not get Hera's just yet, but it feels like he might get it with the second shot. Oh, my God. And Leary says right back at you with some good micro. What a game here. 28 military for Leary. Really trying to get value from it. And, I mean, it's so difficult Ooh. to have proper economy when you're being pressured like this, yep. Dave. And Leary keeps sending small range unit forces from the other side. I don't think he's discovered that gold that Hera just stretched out to quite yet. He's going to see that villager, and Hera's going to be wise to that counterattack. Hera's still producing Magnus. He's still trying to defend in the north, but in the south, Leary has another force, so he has to send that weak Magnus back to deal with this. Leary's micro is going to have to be on point, oh and it is. Yeah. It's so beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, this is crazy. There could be a big shot here. Leary somehow playing with fire all game. Hera, though, with the good micro. Leary now with the good micro. What is happening? Who's going to get the better of these engagements? It's going to be Leary there. And, and he here? gets within minimum range. Leary is not getting hit by these Mangonel shots. He takes out the repair villager. He finally gets hit by one, but all the army is gone from Herod's five military versus How? 26. He survives again. How? I mean, his economy is also really good. It's not like he's on 10 farms or something. He has more farms than Hera at the moment. Hera is playing out of his mind, but Leary, he's got 
Do we need to blow up his head with the big graphic again with how he's playing right now? Like, this is crazy. This is, this, I don't think this is brain power. I think this is muscle power oh, right now. Oh, the guns oh, are out okay. from Leary, and yeah, okay. I mean, Apparently, the cannons are here from Hera as he completely destroys that army finally. But what value yeah. Leary has found? Absolutely, and that's what it comes down to, right? It was bound to happen eventually, but so frequently that happened so much earlier there. Four mangonels, soon to be five for Leary. And Hera must be really scratching his head right now, trying to find out what he can do. Oh, He's going nice to kill shots. this. So this allows a little bit of thinking on yep. his part. Possibly could drop stables. He's but... going to drop a castle in defense, I think. Hera. And it's just, where does that castle go? And that's so far back. Dude, this is I also... Mean, this is, this is a display of how good it, Leary is with the micro, but it's also a display <gasps> of how Hera can survive with literally nothing. He's just trying to get value wherever he can. Yep. And Leary has pushed him to the limit. Yeah. Yeah, this is crazy. Now, I'm seeing handcart for Leary. Uh, I'm just seeing more archers from him. I'm liking it, don't get me wrong. Hera, I guess he's just gonna rely on the Manga Dai. He's got his castle up now. We'll need to drop a stable for Bloodlines. Does have ballistics though, and Manga Dai are definitely the unit you win this matchup through. There's a castle forward from Leary. I, dude, I, if I was in their position, I would be sweating, both of them. <laughs> like, Leary, you're one misclick away from losing your mangonels, yeah. and then you can't kill Hera. Hera, you're one misclick away from losing your entire economy. Yeah, I was going to say, if I was in so their difficult. position, I would have I would have been dead already. Mm -hmm. Either one, right? If I'm pushing uh -oh, in Leary's Leary. position, I can't do enough. And if I'm in Hera's position, I would have died much faster. Holy you just hell, have to the Moonwalking Manganel. You have to be controlling your army and all three of these, sorry, four of these Manganels at exactly the same time. Castle is going up with only two villagers currently. That's so Leary sick. cannot lose these Manganels here, and it looks like Hera is going to try and get that one. Leary tries to attack ground. He's trying to deal with the Manganai that have a bonus against Siege. He's bringing the crossbows over to the left side. It's a delicate dance between both of them. Hera unable to get another shot. Leary dodges around that attack ground. <laughs> oh my god, bro. Dude, Leary's micro is insane. <laughs> it's just insane. Hera, though, still holding on. Hera, I think, sensing, perhaps, that this is going to go towards Imp. So he has now sold some wood, just like Leary did. But Leary has his castle forward for a reason, Dave. It's, it's because he needs access to trebuchets, and he wants to win this in early Imp and not allow the Mongols to have time to mass those Mangadai. And the imp Love timing it. is going to be so similar from them yeah. yet again. It's wild. Leary now going for thumb ring. He's got to be careful with this army. Hera doesn't get a shot. Again, it has to be so frustrating for Hera. Every single time he feels like he has a good shot, Leary dodges away. As Leary's now working well on that TC, hasn't really cut the Manganel production. Only since he clicked up to imp did he stop making these units. They've just been pressuring these TCs over and over and over again. He built that castle with like two vills. Two vills. He yeah. just knew, like, I'm not going to lose this ground because I'm Leary. And... Might lose this army here. Uh, no, no, no. Who micros in that direction, no. bro? <laughs> he does, he's not going to lose the army. Who yeah. runs in towards the shot to be safe from the shot? If he gets rocked, though, this could be really bad because he needs to have crossbow skirmisher numbers to protect his trebuchets. Just like the Mangadai have been able to take out Mangadels, they're also able to take out trebuchets. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, Hera's got one castle right now, but still, you know, starting to make his best unit. Yep. Leary's sending another army to the south. And that's going to be crossbows. Yeah, Hera, go this time. Hera going for the big counter attack yeah, here. Yeah. And both players patrol. Hera with desperation move there, I'm sure. Hera is also a house because Leary is taking out all his TCs and all his houses. Should have researched nomads, bro. Yeah, he oh, actually viable. <laughs> <laughs> well, normally you have the second castle coming up near your trebs when you're an imp. So I'm a little surprised to see that Leary doesn't have more on stone. He's got tons of res. Oh, though. wow, that's cute. Tower in the center, just a little bit annoying. Yeah, that's true. I think that's more like protecting your own woodline than harassing Leary's woodline. Probably, yeah, especially since you don't have as many range units as your opponent. Leary with 2,000 food in the bank when he reaches Imp should be getting all the upgrades. And there he goes, Chemistry, Arbalest, Bracer, and he's got a treble on the way like we expected. He's he selling a lot too. What's he trying to afford here? He's selling all of his food. <laughs> he had a plenty of it, and Leary even dodges around two mangonel shots. Like, how? Leary has the best Archer Micro ever. I don't think there can be any argument. Seriously, like Hera, Viper, all those players are insane. Leary is just doing some insane things. He knows all of the angles, except <laughs> apparently against the castle. <laughs> if that happened a little more frequently, the statement that I just said before that wouldn't be true. But he's so consistently good. He might. 
he might be paying attention somewhere else. Let's hope that for his sake that he's paying attention <laughs> to these Arbalest because Drill Onager is on the way for Hera. That's what he's saving up for. He sees all of the archers, the Arbalest here from Leary and the Mangonels, and he's saying, listen, I just want to land a few big shots, and then once I land those, I can tra transition into cavalry. If Leary had a castle next to his trebs right now, I think he's completely fine. The fact that he doesn't have a castle next to his trebs tells me that with a couple onager shots from Hera, Hera could keep his castle up, extend this game to the long run, where the Mongols will dominate. It's the only thing from Leary that I could really be critical of this game. He's like trying to pressure the wood right now, but he needs a castle right there. Hera is buying, or Leary is buying stone though. Leary is buying stone and he's going for a castle in the south. Hera is down there though with something. So Leary relocates his oh, castle boy. in the south, and here come the onagers oh, no way. from Hera. Drill is still not in, so Leary can still get pretty close to these, or in fact run away. Once Drill is in, those onagers are going to be a lot faster, and it's going to be very, very dangerous for Leary. Did he just pack up the traps? No, he did not pack up the traps. Hera no repair surprises me. And he can't get Drill now. The castle is going to go down. Yeah, true. So it's just going to be straight onager. I mean, there's just so much pressure here still. Oh, Leary, can Leary. you do this with just a Mangonel, Leary, against Onager from... Okay. No. Well, he's on the wood line for Hera, which is actually really annoying. Hera needs the wood to make Mangadai and needs the wood to make more Onagers. This has given Leary time to get stables up, go for Light Calf, given Leary time for another somewhat risky castle, which I believe he might complete on that side. No horse collar for Leary. Should we be concerned about his economy right now? I mean, Chinese farms do last longer, so there's that, as he's micring <laughs> around a, an onager. I didn't even realize what? it was there. That was under the hood of the TC, and it was still firing. Leary, though, micros around that while he's casually doing 15 other things. Yeah, I, I don't know if I've ever seen micro so good that it makes me just want to quit the game. You know, normally you see good micro, you're like, oh, I want to try that. I just can't do that. It's just crazy. To be doing it in the multiple locations he is, if he dodges this shot, he's a god. But I think he... <laughs> Yeah, he's, he he's actually definitely a guy. paying attention to that. Yeah, and it also means Hera has to respect it. Hera doesn't move out with confidence at all against an army composition that he probably should have some confidence against. And this is allowed a little bit of time here for Leary to get into the light cap, which can easily run in and snipe those onagers. Yeah, he's going to be working away on the villager first. He has now forging on the way, a couple knights on the field too, which could help against those onagers. Finally, a castle coming up from Hera. He's got 41 farmers Hera. now. 56, though, from Leary, even without horse collar, that's a press. Hera's best way back, and I mean this, I'm not memeing. Onager cut through the middle. Maybe. Onager cut through the middle, and then raid with Lightcap there. There's nothing from Leary at home if the Lightcap run into his base. Mm -hmm. Could be, so could be good. potential for that as Leary's trying to snipe these onagers. Hera really wants to save them. You can see Hera trying to body block. He's like, get inside my army onagers. And Hera almost manages to do it. Oh my God, he saved. All, he saved two of those. Yeah. I can't believe it. Yeah, really well played. Leary. And now he loses. Oh, he loses the rest. Good snipes from Leary. 50 on food for Hera. You, you're just not going to see the guy give up when he's 50 on food. 170 pop. Doesn't have a single relic, but neither does Leary. Has better eco upgrades than the Chinese. Still, you know, has one of the best Hussar Sibs in the game. And Leary, I think, a little concerned now because his army composition hasn't really led to a lot of numbers. Yep. And I, I'm, I feel like the castle positions he has are so fragile because if he loses either the castles on the side, he doesn't have any fortifications behind it. There's just a massive opening that Hera can take, and Hera's even just going to run around it and into Leary's main eco. Yeah, where, the, where's the camel production from Leary? He's getting heavy camel right now, but what does he do against those Hassar? He's adding a castle inside of his economy. He's still trying to raid Hera's economy, but Hera's up to 52 on food. Leary is sending the camels back now, but he's about to lose a ton of villagers, and right now he doesn't have any forces mm -mm. to defend against that. Hera as well. Losing villagers, though, and the quick walls come in from Leary. What? He's not going to lose the ones on the lumber camp, that's for sure. Both players pop cap. Hera has a ton of onagers. Uh -oh. Leary's going to try and snipe those with the trebs, but he wisely packs up and leaves. Yeah, and it becomes so difficult now if you were the player that does not have Hussar because your bases, both bases are kind of wide open. You have to spend a lot of gold, not on pushing anymore, but defending. Hera will freely make Hussars. Hera can take risks with the Hussars, whereas Leary's Arbalest and his Camels need to be more protected. I think even though Hera hasn't killed that many bills with this raid, more than worth it for him. Yeah, and you can see the population kind of dropping for both as their armies get cleared up. This is oh. a good find, though. If Leary kills this castle, Hera will be castleless once again. Yeah. 
I think both players could lose a castle here. Hera might actually take out the Trebs. He's repairing with everything he has. Hussars will definitely Don't take know if out it's enough. Trebs. I think Leary takes out that castle just on time. I think there's a few more shots still coming in from the Trebs. Three more volleys coming in. Does he get it? No, Hera saves the castle against the Trebs from Leary. Leary pushing him from the other side, though, because Hera is distracted. So Hera has, what, one castle still? Oh my goodness, what a crazy game we have here. Again, it's gone later and later here, which makes you shift towards the Mongols because of the Hussars that have that extra HP, but also due to the Mangadai and the crazy siege. Hera is still starting, or I shouldn't say still, he's starting to mass Mangadai again. He's getting up for those exposed. Mangadai again as well. But you're right, Dave, Onagers cannot be thrown away like this. Yeah, and, and Hera's even cutting trees. Get out of the way! I need to find my way through these two stables, thank you very much. The Hussars won't easily be able to deal with those camels, not really doing a lot of damage to those, and the Arbalists are still behind. Those Arbalists, I think, have quite a few kills on them as the camels yep. are clearing up the Onagers. They only have five, wow! Imagine I guess they, uh, Hera's just been super intimidated by these units. All the onagers are dead, though. Imagine if Hera still had a castle here, the camels could never contest. Which is why Hera keeping the castle up on the other side is so important, because that kind of blocks off any raiding potential or any camel push. But Leary may be feeling better about the situation now. He knows onagers not cheap. Hera still got three of them, but Leary with a 30 population lead. How did Leary not die to the 40 Hussar raid? He had like 10 camels there. Yeah, well, he got the quick wall on the lumber camp, right? So he saves 10 villagers there, and then he has the camels coming back and the castle coming up just on time. More houses going down. Actually, Nomad's actually viable maybe in this <laughs> game once maybe. again. Yeah. Yeah, I do have that on my list of most useless unique decks. Don't think Hera's the one to click it. We'll Does see. Does Hera lose this Onager? Oh, Leary's so close to sniping that, but Hera saves it again. And once again, Leary has to back up with those trebuchet, but he's raiding on the other side. Yeah, I like it. Castle there from Hera putting in work, however, and Leary is just slowly, slowly pushing it Hera into the corner here. He's getting all of his techs. He's got the camels to defend against the Hussar, and Hera is trying to build up Mangadai, but from only one castle, it's yeah. going to take way too much time. But thankfully, 20 Mangadai is insane, right? It's better than 20 of maybe any other unit, except for maybe War Elephants. I, I think anytime there's a quiet moment in this game, Harris should go out and raid. He's doing it now. And Leary should recognize that maybe there's a little less army here and he should start to think about a fight. What a game here. It's back and forth, back and forth, isn't it? Hussar coming in here from Hera. I think Leary needs one more castle along that line in the south yeah. just to defend against those raids. They've been a constant headache ever since Hera got some time. Trebuchet is still pushing forward. Credit to Leary hasn't lost those yet. Attack rounds. But Hera keeping the Onagers alive. He gets a decent attack round. I don't know if it's enough, though. There's more cavalry coming in from the left side, and they're going to be able to snipe the Onagers there from Hera. Hera also losing a few Hussar and some Mangadai in that group as Leary comes in to raid once more. Oh, Hera's putting up such a crazy fight, but it's 70 on food for Leary. 130 population for Hera. He's got so much pop as well, and Hera doesn't, as you said, Dave. And even if some Trebs go down here, it just feels like the follow-up is going to be so consistent and so strong for Leary. He certainly believes so yep. as he spreads out his trebuchets randomly. I think he's just looking, he's looking to push this back. He senses the momentum is changing here in this instance, and he's sending his Trebs in, and it just seems so overwhelming for Hera. I think Leary's taking a risk, hoping that Hera's going to resign in this moment because everything's going wrong. Yep. But Hera has the ability now to snipe these Trebs, hold this area, and then Leary is going to have to build up these Trebs once more. So it's definitely a risk from Leary. I don't know how much there is, but again, the only thing I'd say is Leary needs more on stone. That's it. Because when he takes positions like that, what should happen is castle drop. Mm -hmm. Hera can never push that. So we'll see. But, I, I mean, stone is kind of weird on this map because it's in multiple places, but it's only two tiles at a time. So it's kind of hard to find. Hera's is that 115 pop. Oh, He's at 110 population now. He's at 85 villagers. Leary has been doing so much with these raids. Hera just desperately trying to hold on, but there's still units back there, still killing villagers, and the Trebs are still attacking the front of Hera's base, and Leary still has control over the stuff to the south, so Hera is in deep, deep trouble. Only Mongols could come back from this, I'll say that. GG. But bad timing, obviously. Her Leary wins the game, and what was so good about that game there, Dave, besides the micro, which is maybe the thing that should be at the top of our list,
It was the fact that Leary died in game two in a very similar situation where he had pressured all game and then Harrod just dropped some stables and pushed him back. Remember, he was late to Camels and we talked about that. Leary got the Camel timing in. He must feel so good about that one. That is three straight victories for Leary. Two wins in a row for Hera, three wins in a row for Leary. And uh, we have ourselves a set here as both players take a break. This is the finals that we expected. And that's the micro that we expect from Leary in that game. Also, Hera with the defense. I mean, he's like, he's defending against 40 military with 10. Yep. And he's trying to boom behind. And against any other player, maybe it works. Not against Leary in that situation. Yeah, a little awkward for us. They did walk right past us. But all we can do is really compliment these two for how they played so far. We are at our halfway points. Mm -hmm. As close as you could maybe get to a halfway point here with four more games to go. Still some really good... Or one really good map actually for Hera banked up here. That's interesting. So only his home map, Northern Isles, is remaining. But I do feel like Hera Hello, viewing party. so well on that. And let's not forget about the viewing party. You got to sign some autographs and meet many of you guys there last night. It's a weird feeling being on part of an autograph table. <laughs> that was it was like a production line. I yeah, was there I, for an hour signing stuff. That was crazy. I have a, a handwriting problem that I'm reminded by every time I use a pen, mm -hmm. which is like two times a month, mm -hmm. or a month, not even, a year. And uh, I don't know why, but my handwriting is always really small. And so... Chicken scratch. Yeah, it's the it same is. same with mine. I yeah. don't know why. And so I signed a bunch of people's first, and then I looked at, like, the shirts, and I looked at the cards, and it'd be, like, tiny little T90, and then the Viper, right? And... I don't know if I should apologize. That's why for that, my but. signature is just block letters. It's just Dave exclamation mark with an underline underneath. Is that like, did you practice that? No. Okay. I just came up with it. At least if I'm going to sign something, at least it's got to be unique. You know, that's why the exclamation mark, that's why the underline. It's certainly And I do unique. it in block letters so that I don't mess up. It's easy. Yeah. Like, I can even write it yeah. with a fist. Five minutes. Yeah, Five minutes. They need a break. Nearly just Maybe signaled to us. on occasion you should do a Dave question mark, and that becomes like a Dave? limited edition signature. Yeah, it could be. We'll sell it, someone will sell it yeah. for big money on I eBay. I did say all of those signatures in 20 years are going to be worth exactly the same value that they are right now. <laughs> Six million dollars? <laughs> Mine? Nothing. <laughs> Uh, Absolutely nothing. Well, it was really cool, though. Um, I know that we have a lot of viewers online, um, but you know, it's not the first time we've done uh, a, a LAN event where we've been able to meet fans, but it yeah. is really cool to be able to put a face to the name. Uh, and everyone is so nice, right? Uh, to me, the players, uh, to you, of course, as well, after your amazing autograph. So thank you, everyone, who you know traveled to get there. And I'm, cor I'm sure, of course, if this community keeps growing on the trajectory we, we are on currently, that I will maybe have an opportunity to meet some of you guys watching in the chat at some point in the future. So uh, that is, this is not, this is our viewing party here at the Gamer House. So they are now looking at the stream, seeing that they are on camera. Some people wave, some people are like, don't, don't look. That's Jordan look right the there. Camera. That's Jordan. The hand to the right. That's such a Jordan. All you have play. to look for is the guy who's wearing shorts. That's such a Jordan. Oh, play. that's not a leg. That's <laughs> <laughs> if that's okay. a leg. I Sorry, I have really bad eyesight, honestly. Okay, well, actually, you know what we should what probably... What is it saying? It's saying, hello, my name is Jordan. Hello, thank Jordan. You for, thank you for watching NAC. Nice to meet you. Oh, boy. That is really well done, guys. Very well done. They have not I'm going this way. This. I, don't, I don't like you anymore. Get away. Yeah. Well, before away. I forget about oh, it... Oh, come, come here. I'm not done with you. still not... Come back. Come back. Oh, who are who is that? <laughs> who is that? Keep going, Dave. Mystery has appeared. Oh, you're back. I had something else to tell you. I couldn't remember. I'm gonna walk away now. This reminds me of when earlier on in the week, production did a did a Muppets thing with Hera and Leary while they were casting, and then it dawned on many of us that they might not even know who the Muppets are. No, they definitely didn't. Like that scene came <laughs> up, like... and their look of confusion. Everyone there was laughing, and their look of confusion was so genuine yeah we knew i knew right away like these guys are too young for the muppets yeah, like um there's i was watching else. the muppets before they were born yeah like, i know and yeah. i was like oh god i'm so old there's another instance i don't know why okay don't judge how random this is but like finding nemo was brought up at some point oh well, there I, we are and then i look at oh, oh. Okay. i forget the names I, of these guys guys though. i didn't they were always up for the, this. at the top now people there. are gonna make fun of us yeah 
Yeah. At least they, at least that guy is not like. Usually, when they make fun of me, it's like some bald person, like Patrick Stewart or something. They'll put me on the Enterprise. Yeah, don't do that. Didn't you put into your contract that there can only be five bald jokes made in this event? Mm, I don't think I have that option. Oh, okay. <laughs> we surpassed that on day number one. Okay. Too. <laughs> um, to finish my point, though, and we will be back to this final very shortly, guys. Mm. Um, but. It, we mentioned Finding Nemo, and like again, it was like Hera Leary, like it was like, ha, ha, ha. like I totally know what you're talking about. And I had to quickly look up when Finding Nemo came out because I was yep. concerned that that happened before Leary was born. No, it happened about a year after Leary was born. Yeah, which was equally disturbing. Can we switch this? Can we like flip horizontal, please? Mm. I wasn't comfortable in that situation. Ay 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 production having way too much fun well i hope you're having fun at home players are walking back to their desk they're probably confused why we are so awkward currently no, no they're not confused they know us well yeah. theory scarfing down some food there he's not only got the water but he's also got the food folks sustenance i mean <laughs> it's important luckily for him he has some privacy instead of nilly and dave standing next to him reading some weird chat gb you poem. chose to sit on the main couch when we were looking to fill time you put yourself in that position. Who sits there and eats? No one eats on that couch. I mean, I thought it was a proper spot, mm. but yeah. Who knew T90 had the body of a male villager pay me later? I'm not quite as shredded. Not quite as shredded, but I'll take that as a compliment. Thank you. Leary pouring some more water. Oh, that is that looks like a depressed hippo. That was that was nearly today with all the show matches. <laughs> <laughs> I had oh, such we great have, dreams. We have an hour more to fill. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bombard cannons, the Team T90 versus Team Nilly. Yeah, when he, he got 3 0'd. Yeah. Yep. That's all right. It was good fun. I, I hope viewers enjoyed that. I didn't actually get what to see. What is the other hippo doing there? Oh, boy. Production. Can we. Guys, go to the Nature Channel if you want to see this, but not NAC4. Thank you. Um, I, I really did enjoy the show match earlier. It was a little wild. Uh, so I hope that viewers did enjoy as well. I didn't actually get to see a lot of feedback from people. I assume it was good. People stuck around. Mm -hmm. We are under a lot of pressure with no filler content. Can we get the draft, please? Let's get the draft. Talk about that because I want to return to my point. Also, NAC puts in some money to NAC. So we're we've we're still waiting for the draft. Not added Sponsored any. by Backforce and Leet Desk, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you for donating but, to but the Earth's the prize pool. On paper, though, look at this, right? So two wins for Hera. Mm -hmm. He's got one home map remaining. Three wins for Leary. He's got three home maps remaining. Now, I will recognize that these two are both so good and are both really good on all the maps. So maybe it's not that big of a deal. But in terms of map preferences. We also have an interesting scenario where every win for Leary was on Hera home maps. And the one, wait, no, not the one win for Hera. Two, one two of his wins, wins yeah. was on the home map for Leary. That is very interesting. And then also, of course, Hera won game number one. which But was they're super similar. Map. I would feel like the only true home map here for either player was probably Northern Isles mm -hmm. for Hera. Um, yeah, I think if Hera picked Hippo Arena, because I really like his play on Arena, I would say the same, but Leary did pick it, so I still don't know what he has planned there, actually. I think he's going to try and go Burmese. And maybe you save, like, ooh, he already used Britons, because I feel like Britons would have been really good on Arena versus the Burmese. Mm -hmm. I'm not actually sure what Hare will go for. Certainly Burgundians or Turks for Arena. I guess that's pretty straightforward. Imagine Leary goes for Ethiopians there. That'd on Arena? Wild. Torsen Engine wild. Bombard Cannons? No, it'd just be fast imp. Yeah, that's true. Fast imp barb. Yeah, fast bomber can. Fast imp barb. Yeah. yeah. So Leary needs two wins, and he is the winner of his first land final ever. He's been in well, counting this six now, though of course we don't know what this the is the is sixth look at. land final that Leary has been in. That's the way you meant to summarize it. Yes, I did, yeah. and you you so kindly corrected me, which doesn't make me look like a fool at all. Nope. Our viewers aren't wise enough to realize He's 0-5 so say. far. So he's looking to take his first win. And if anyone deserves it, it's Leary. But if anyone deserves the win specifically in this tournament, it's Hera. Because he's literally won every set that he's been part of, even in the group stage. And here we go. Northern Isles. We're going into game number six here. Hera has chosen the Vikings. And Leary has chosen the Dravidians. Now Hera 
had an amazing game where he beat the Vikings with the Bengalis in the group stage against the Viper. We didn't see Bengalis drafted by either player, so clearly they didn't feel like Bengalis were all that good. Hera himself opts for the Vikings, which cannot make fire galleys, so typically it's going to be a galley-only play. There is a unique ship for the Dravidians, which we might see in the late game, but I think in the early game, the fishing ships carrying more is helpful. The plus 200 wood they arrive, uh, they receive excuse me, when they arrive to each age is helpful, and uh, the docks providing extra population room isn't too bad either. Fishing ships carrying extra food. Yeah, it's great nice. As well, nice. right? You can take fish efficiently from very far away, and that unique unit was called the Teresidae, and there we go. There's the villager already heading across. For Leary, he doesn't even have a dock yet. I think. Chris, I or think is this a for dock. a dock on the side? Okay, this is for a dock on the side. Yeah, I think it's a dock on the side, and maybe there's a world where we see a transport later on. Maybe. There is actually a bit of a meta here. I think Nikov did it. I forget if Hera or Leary did it. There's definitely one more player that did it where uh, they try and build one of their docks more forward mm -hmm. next to where they think the opponent is fishing. And this is a unique water map because you start with the transport, and that transport acts as a scout. So where Leary's headed right now... Oh, boy. ...would tell him... Actually, Hera's back here. Hera's going to find this dog. Yeah. But, I mean, you're always going to find the dog from you the should. opponent unless it's somewhere where you've scouted very early. Yeah. And then you might miss it, but you're always going to loop around because you have this transport ship from the beginning. Yep. It's a decent line of sight on it, and both players find the docks at exactly the same time. So Leary will be aware that Hera has gone for the back dock approach, which generally indicates you're going for Castle Age. Yes. Um, and Hera will see that Leary has gone for the side dock, which could be a number of things. It could be a Castle Age play. It could be uh, building up galleys. It could be going into the fire galleys. You never quite know what the side dock means. I don't think that Hera will love the fact that Leary is somewhat close to him. If you think of all the possibilities, like the middle yep. or the very back for Leary, that's maybe, uh, mu it's just a much greater travel time. So I was expecting Leary to maybe be the aggressor here in the first place. It certainly gives him an opportunity. But for now, the scouts are just pushing in deer from both players. Uh, another thing to point out here is that there is an island in the middle. Nobody make the jokes. Uh, but there's two bears, a relic, and a bunch of golden stone. And that island becomes very important the longer this game goes. Mm -hmm. Tons of room to place things there. Uh, castles, towers, archer ranges, of course. Uh, as Hera now loads up a scout and comes across to Leary's island. Leary has not sent his scout across towards Hera yet. I think he was busy pushing in the ibex. And Hera is going to start exploring. He knows where that dock is, so maybe he takes a look and sees if he can get value against that villager. I don't know if Loom is in yet yeah, from Leary. The, oh, does he see the transport ship? Loom is in. Thank you, Vodka. Okay, so Scout hopping into the transport. You always should wall in your dock villager here, especially if you're far away from your base, because the Feudal Age Scout will always be in a position to snipe it. What's Hera going to do here? I doubt he's going to go land. I think he's going to go water, and maybe just since he knows Leary will come aggressive against him, he will maybe go two docks on the back and be happy with that. Hera's not going to see these militia coming out from Leary unless he loops around this wood line and keeps going in. Okay, he actually might. He will. This might be massive scouting here for Hera. He might think about potentially picking up a scout once again. He misses the barracks for the time being. He doesn't see the barracks. Okay, he sees it. So good. But does he see the militia coming out? Hera does not see the militia. Did he Leary's send being it into very the TC? sneaky. Did he yeah, send it yeah, backwards? Yeah. He's being very sneaky, and now oh. he's doing a, a V back towards the shoreline where he can pick it up with the transport ship. <laughs> that is so clever because with this feudal age timing, Hera might assume that it's an archer play from yeah. Leary. It won't be 100% certain on the men at arms play, but he is walling up right yeah. now, so I think he has an inclination of what this is. Super safe play here from Hera. I think it's just a timing thing where he recognized that if that goes up at that time, that it's going to likely be Militia. Um, but could have been a brilliant play there from Leary. Just shows how good these players are and how much they respect each other. Now, with any other Civ, you might see two Militia, and you might see the Man-at-Arm upgrade and say that's a problem, but Dravidians do have 50% off on their barrack technologies. And plus, they also received all that wood from arriving to the next stage, so very helpful. Leary with the second dock will be making some fires. Hera's just going to go galley defense on the back and wall defense at his base right now. Wall defense is pretty dangerous, though, against the men-at-arms. You take your eye off it for one second, and they can be in, and they can kill villagers quite fast, and Ooh. Leary wins the 1v1 scout war. Hera still doesn't know that those men-at-arms oh, are there. Oh, man. Dave, something I've been at waiting for all tournament long is you go man at arms and you bring one vil. Mm -hmm. I remember a game where ACCM against Terra went man at arms and then made archers at home. 
Bring a vill. Make the range there. Can Herrick you imagine? Can this. Herrick can trap this if he wants to. He can uh, gate gate that, I'm pretty sure. But if it doesn't work... Yeah. <laughs> if it doesn't work, then it's tragedy, right? Yeah. So Herrick. he's not going to take the risk. He'll go for a barracks. He'll just repair the walls behind. He's got galleys in the back. Fire galleys on the way from Leary. Leary is also redocked at the front side to make his uh, galley push a little bit faster. And he's going to dock at the back of his island. So he's shifting all his fish. That's, back that's, towards that's that? unique because I think Hera will likely find some fishing ships and so he's thinking that he could maybe hide a couple back there I don't hate it um, I'm not the biggest fan of the range placement at home but I suppose if Hera were to land you you then can make some defensive units mm -hmm. Hera's gonna be completely fine here one fire is not enough Hera will have a massive galley buildup over time here yeah and the tower is going up on Hera's gold so that's gonna be able to push the men-at-arms away and it already has Larry saw that and he's looping around towards the other wood line yep. from Hera. But Hera should be in a position to drop an archer range of his own soon. And he did. Leary now going for the blacksmith. He's still building up archers. Still has that transport ship to bring the archers over. And he's going to move his fish to the back. Now I'll be curious if Hera goes to the front side with his galleys first, looking for those fish. Or if he loops around the back side of, Hera, or of Leary's base looking for damage. Timing on the archers is huge here. Hera will win water over time. Uh, and if the archers were to be here now for Leary, Hera would be at a disadvantage. But Hera is making range units as well from home. He knew that he would need it eventually. Transport ships on the way though, and fletching is coming in. How many archers is it? It's three. I like the number, Dave. That's a really good number. Hera might need to leave the wood line. Mm -hmm. I think he will, because it's only going to be archers from him, right? It's only going to be archers. Hera is now looping around the side. He's going to have to deal with this fire galley, but he's going to be busy with other things. He is. Leary still has the fishing ships alive, and Hera's not going to expect three archers showing up here right away. It's a great buildup from Leary. Oh, man, and what do you do? You can kind of run back and forth and dodge some of the shots. You're obviously making your own range units, and Leary can't easily reinforce, but I feel like you lose a lot of hills here. Are they at the bottom of a hill as well? I think there might be a hill there. Yeah, I think there is a hill there. And the run. additional bonus damage is piling up here as the house is deleted and Hera is trying to escape with the villagers. Leary trying to get damage. He's going to kill one. He's going to kill a second one. Will he get a third? He's tracking the archers now and he does manage to snipe a third villager from Hera. At the same time, Hera was forced to come back with his fire galleys because I believe, or sorry, well, I thought he was coming back with his galleys, but apparently he's still got some at home because he was dealing with the fire galley from Leary, yep. and he's found the fish back here. Great snipe from Hera. A crucial find. If Hera did not find these fishing ships, he would likely lose this game. His eco is all out of whack. He can't really farm that much. He can't really take his berries right now, but he is still in this game because he's got navy, and because on this map, it is extremely hard to fully finish off your opponent. Great snipes here from Hera, pushing those away. Still didn't get all of the fish there yeah. as Leary manages to run away. We take a look at the economies behind this. Hera is housed right now. Leary has killed three villagers and Hera has yet to kill even a fishing ship from the Austrian. Hera, this is going to get interesting because Hera has more range units now. Mm -hmm. If Leary doesn't bring more range units over, Hera might transport, if he still has it, uh, his units over to Leary's side, but he never really knows how much Leary has there. I'm really excited to see what Hera does. Hera only lost three eco this game. Considering the pressure he's been under, it could have been much worse. Mm -hmm. Now, we all usually talk about Dravidians kind of falling off. They don't really fall off on water maps. Yeah, agreed. agreed. Because you still have this distance between yourself and your opponent, and I think they have like a full water tech tree. They yeah, basically they get everything along with their unique unit. So it is wild, this civilization, as we get later in the game, as Hera tries to block the fishing ships with his galleys, and he's going to finally manage to take these out. Res collected actually in favor of Hera. We have to remember with the Vikings, he does get wheelbarrow automatically, so his economy has been fairly efficient behind this. Leary's going to try and take out the archers on this side, get some value with the men-at-arms. He and still has archers at home, so if Hera transports over, Leary will have a defense. And Hera has had fishing ships. Not only has he had his original fishing ships, but once he realized he had the edge on water, he added a few more. He's so, adding a second transport ship. Yeah, not sure I'm the biggest fan of that. It will be interesting timing because I think Hera's getting to the point where he will transport his units over to Leary's side. So that'll be kind of fun oh. to look for. Also, random fishing ship for Leary on the left. I don't know what that thing's doing there. <laughs> it's protecting the archers, man. They're trying to sail away. 
It's like, uh, I read the tech tree and it says it can carry more. I thought it was Vils. Don't think Lyra would make that mistake, nor does he sound like that. All right, fishing ship. Blocking the archers <laughs> right now, it's just so <laughs> random. But he does manage to kill a fishing ship from Hera, and he's on the way up to Castle Age. Hera is also on the way up about 20 seconds before him. Resources looking pretty good for Hera. Leary doesn't have as many on food because of the fishing ships from Hera this entire time. So resources collected still in favor of the Canadian. But Leary does have two transport ships <laughs> ready to go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't think he thought he was going to keep his first one alive. I recall a moment where I saw it. And I realized... Bro, did he actually want to? I, maybe he did, actually, so he could send eight units across. Oh, what in the world? He's Dude. gonna be sending them right into the fleet from Hera. I mean, he's going to lose his... Um, he's gonna lose water if this continues. Yep. So, I don't know if oh, I boy. like this. You gotta go all the way oh, around. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I mean, it's better for the archers. Think of the archers, not... Of Leary. Yep. But Leary's trying to archers. circumnavigate the globe here with these archers. By the time he reaches there, <laughs> he's going to be Imperial Age. <laughs> uh, it is funny. Oh, he too. comes back. Dude, he loops back. He doesn't see the ships yet. Yep. So since the ships aren't coming through that choke point, he knows that he can go that way. Bro. Also, a good engagement, I believe, on the left there. That's pretty good. War Galley can come in soon for Leary. He's going to have crazy resources, and Hera does too. I think I want... I, well, yeah, I think, and I want Hera to go longboats. Yep. Uh, War galley numbers are already really high. Longboats are a bit better against the fires. Oh, my God. There's safety in the oceans. That's what they told us. <laughs> <laughs> and he's made the decision to come back to the north because he knows where the fleet is from Hera on his main dock. Hera adds two extra TCs. War galley research is coming in from Leary. Fires are going to be pretty difficult for Hera to deal with against the fish anyway because they can do a lot more yep. damage against them, but I don't think he's going to have that upgrade in time to really take out these fish at the back. Hera will start switching now into longboats as the transports finally make their way over towards his island. It is a convoy <laughs> here. I mean, Leary's really done a good job to make sure that these archers do not die. Uh, still no crossbow upgrade as he drops his town centers, but this could make a big difference. There he goes. Two transports drop off their archers. And let's see if they can find any value here. Oh, geez. Hera's going to miss that, but the longboats will see it. Yeah. Unfortunately for Leary, Hera's going to get a Dentac notification. He doesn't seem to have noticed that right away. Okay. No, he. I don't know if he noticed that, Tristan. He does those have longboats didn't move at all. Spot. The TCs are going to be good protection here for Hera. I still think he could be okay. Even losing a couple vills here is fine as long as you notice it and get a Siege Workshop up. Yeah, he's fine. And Handcart is in for him. So those Vils are going to be speedy. Running away from that. Leary not able to do any initial damage with those crossbows. Fire still Fishing trying ship. to find value. Fishing ship still trying to find a safe harbor to drop off its fish. But it's, uh, it's do or die here for <laughs> that fishing ship, and it ends up dying. Yeah, crazy game. These guys are just so even. They are. They, there are some differences between the two, but they are so Demo. similar in strength. There's a bunch of weak war galleys in there, too. I think we might see that. If they come through, Hera, is he going to push through? Maybe Leary wants to bait him with the transport ship. You bring that transport, you load up one unit yep. into it. Come this way, into my demo. There's the siege from Hera. Great defense. And there's the, the offense as well from him. Great uh, sequence for Hera. As he deals with the landing, he still has control on water, and this is what Hera wanted when he picked Vikings. A relatively untouched eco and the better navy in the mid-game. And Leary with a visible eye roll there. Yeah. Because yeah. not only did his demo not work, but his entire army got cleared up by yeah. a Mangonel. That was a terrible moment for him. We look at the economies, it's not too far behind for Leary, but remember, he doesn't have wheelbarrow, he doesn't have handcart. So while the villager count is close, you can look at the total res collected, and Hera is still trending above him, and it's just going to get worse and worse and worse. I'd love to to theory craft here and think of what you can do. How did Theresa die do against Longboat? Yeah, that's probably the only thing. Um, Ooh, so desperate. Underwhelming. I think... I, I think it's too expensive to make them. And the other thing about the Theresa die is you can only make them when they're an imp. So it's really only a unit you add after you've already committed to more navy. 
at this point, you're like, oh, what's my bonus? Oh, I get plus 200 wood when I make it to Imp. It's like, woo, that's a dock. A ship. Yeah. Yep, exactly. Um, so I think it really just comes down to Hera making a mistake from here. Hera should be in the Imperial Age faster with the Viking economy. Hera should have the better navy, but Dravidians could maybe have a fast fire timing, which could catch the longboats and the galleys off guard. Good block there from Leary. It's really hard to block longboats. Yep. They are squeaky. Like, they will get through any gap. Leary manages to kill one of those. Hera is still patrolling around the center, though, looking for these fire ships. Leary finally getting wheelbarrow, and both players are kind of trending towards the same things, right? Leary is looking for Imperial Age. Hera is looking for him. Leary is looking for a castle. Hera is looking for a castle. But in both instances, Hera is just a little bit further ahead. Yep. And he's going to hit those timings before Leary's able to. And this happens between these two, where they both are, especially on maps like this, they both kind of have the same idea. Mm -hmm. And then one player just out executes. And then eventually the other recognizes, well, can't break it, and this resigns, right? Like, even Hera's stone timing's perfect. He can bring villagers to the middle faster to be able to drop a castle. Leary's going for back docks, so that's not likely to be a fire ship approach, right? I think it still is, because okay. if your opponent could make their own fire ships, you might not do that. Yeah. But because your opponent can't make their own fires and would need to add demos, you kind of have to make them do that. Yeah, and, and then you add the docks on the front later on. Yeah, exactly. Oh, okay. Um, but you're even hesitant to make a castle on the front right now. Look at these ships. You spin mm. me right round. Mm. Mm. Is he firing? Mm. No, he's not firing, but the other guys, nope, they're, neither of them are firing. I, I mean, they're trying. They're like, dude, move. They are hyped. Move around. The castle from Hera, perfect. It's not too close to the shoreline in the event that there would be trebuchets. Hera now finds the back docks. This will come as no surprise to him. Uh, the only thing I'm a little surprised by is the fact he's continuing to make galleons because they are a bit weaker against fires. But as I say that, Leary's not even going yep. for any fire ships. He's just going to try galleons himself. He's going to go for the galley approach, and that's why he went for the back docks. And there is the castle from Leary to secure this position. I don't think the longboats are in time, and there's not enough of them to deny that potentially, as Leary will have war galleys over here to help out in defense. But... Still, Hera will be in Imperial Age first, and Hera will be in a position to afford a lot of his techs. Not quite elite longboat yet, but he will get Bracer, will get Chemistry, and that's going to be pretty tough for Leary to stop with limited numbers of War Galleys. Yep. And I don't think you need to go two castles in the middle. Something Hera's really good at here is he'll place a defensive castle along the shoreline and the wood line. Just cover all of his bases. You have to think, how do I lose this game? And the way you lose this game is if you overinvest in the castles on shorelines where you can be trebbed, or if you get outmassed in Navy. That's pretty much it. There it is. The hair is so consistent with these types of decisions. Don't love the lumber camp, but I mean, it's whatever. Mm -hmm. It's the only thing that I can really talk about in Hera's economy right now that's maybe somewhat quiet. He's recovered so well since that early pressure. Yeah. Like anyone else would have folded, and Hera is just in a position where he's reaching Imperial Age first. He's got a good setup. He's got the middle. He's got the castles on the choke points to the left, and uh, Leary is the one that's going to have to make a comeback push in this game six. Hera still going on to Galleon. He doesn't want to go for the longboat approach. Let's see if this... this ship which leary should try the three sedai let's see if it's bonkers right i have seen it before i think in qualification i'm sure stats guy is already on it we did see it from maybe valis do you have or to... a couple other players but i've seen it in practice games as well but yeah, do, you, yeah. do you have to go shipwright first because they're so expensive always okay i think you that like well he just goes straight for them but okay. he needs nothing well i say always but it's shipwright is such an expensive upgrade yeah. how much is shipwright exactly it's a thousand food and 300 gold thank you i knew that 100 percent. and i'm not even 100 percent, but uh, uh since you know 100 percent, i yep. assume i'm correct we are about to see the biggest chonkiest unit in age of empires 2 history here as this ship will be coming out taking up half the map and leary will be pushing forward we see the stats on that 250 hp it fires a couple arrows and it's nine plus three attack and nine range total so it's lacking one range against the uh longboats i believe yeah but it's the same range as the galleons lower your expectations people uh, he had to wait till imp to build it so he has very little build up momentum here and uh i don't consider it to be the best of units ever mm -hmm. but it is very girthy it is very wide it's got 
Certainly the menacing factor. But Hera, he drops the trebs. And he's going to start trebbing down the TCs and everything else. Yeah, he's even getting infantry up upgrades. So he's thinking about a landing here as yeah. he adds in cannon galleons behind this. Leary is taking him so long Dude. to get across to this side. And Hera's adding two more castles here. You have to get galleon if you're Leary, right? Yeah. Because you already have so many of them. Might as well get the upgrade. Oh man, Hera's just in such a good position right now. There we go. It actually took way too many shots to kill a Mangadel. The Hera drops another castle. He will see these ships. Will he be intimidated? There's no chance here for Leary to push through this. Even with 250 HP on each one of these ships, it, you see how long they take to die, they, their but they're not really output, doing any damage. Yeah, their damage output's not good. And that's the main issue here. And they're also very, very expensive. Leary's got 15 of them, though. He's going to make a case but he for this try. unique unit. And it looks like Hera is going to be the one taking control of this middle area. Leary unable to do anything. Where is the fleet from him? <laughs> it's going to get there it's eventually. slowly, <laughs> one step at a time. Does he mistake those three that are stuck together as a dock? I but don't think so. I think it's more than three, bro. There's like a traffic jam. There was seven there, eight there now. He's sending them in <laughs> one at a time. They're getting stuck <laughs> against the, they are so big, they can't even squeak around a corner. They're getting stuck on the rocks and Leary taps out. We are 3-3 three, three here into this best of nine. Both players needing two more wins to take it. And Hera, indeed, takes Northern Isles. Yeah, we as casters, we occasionally get called out for possibly taking things too far, for possibly beating a point to death. But we said it. We said this could easily go for eight or nine games. When people asked me for predictions last night, I had said nine games. And we meant it for a reason. Back and forth series here. That was Hera's last home map which does matter to an extent possibly, but you need two more wins if you're either player here. This is now a best of three, essentially, to see who wins NAC4. A tournament with now $82,000 in prize pool, thanks to all the donations from the community wow. and Microsoft, of course. And uh, I don't know about you, Dave, but I want to start over. I just, I just hit my peak in terms of energy. Can we just start over? Best of nine? New one we right are, now? We are maximum three games away from being done with NAC4. Yeah, that's a little wild. sad. You just made it a little sad. It's but wild, dude. We've been here for so long. I know. Time has, has flown this week. Uh, there also have been times where it's drug on. You know how it goes when mm -hmm. you're away from home and everything. Excited to get back home, but not without the conclusion of this final. Hippo Arena, Frigid Lake, and Golden Lake. So we've got two lakey maps remaining for this best of nine. And then Hippo Arena mixed in there. Where, I, where are the waters going from Leary? Is he drinking all of that? They're gone. Dude, I, I've been trying not to hydrate because we can't take breaks. I, I know. <laughs> I'm just, I'm like, I'm, I'm sucking away at this water bottle yeah. over here, and I'm just like, oh, man, it's getting pretty <laughs> low. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, if you really need to, that's fine. But I have developed a bit of a reputation this week because I've gotten up multiple times to use the restroom. So I'm just simply dehydrating myself. It's a good strat. Leary can take breaks, of course. Our players in a best of nine. We're going to let them take breathers after the game. And it looks like both of them are getting ready mentally and physically to get into game seven coming up. And, of course, this is a best of nine. It's a long slog, and we all expected it to go the distance. I really like Hera's civilizations to get two wins, which is obviously what he needs. Mm-hmm. Hippo Arena, he's got Turks and Burgundians, so advantage there for Hera. I just don't like Berbers, but everything else is, is yeah. great. Italians on Golden Lakes could be sick. Yep. I think we see Italians, Byzantines on Golden Lakes. I think we see uh, Burmese versus Burgundians it on could be, Arena. It could be Ethiopians on Frigid Lake, and it could be Lithuanians on Frigid Lake, too. If I had to lean towards any player here based on the draft, I, I lean towards Hera. Mm -hmm. I actually think the draft is so good for him. I guess Leary gets to choose the map, but I think Hera might win the next two games. We look down at previous NAC finishes. NAC 3. That's the only one that Hera's been through. That was his big breakout performance three years ago yep. in Nilly's apartment. And NAC 1, 2, and 3 for Leary. He's been every single one. Second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. All he needs is that first place finish to round it out. I think you have to go Frigid Lake here if you're Leary. Because you want Hera to have to play Italians on Frigid Lake instead of Golden Lakes. Mm -hmm. 
and, and Golden Lakes, Hera would then have to play like Berbers, Burgundians, or Turks. Hera could play Berbers on Frigid Lake. Remember that villager push Maybe. strategy? True. That was, what, 32 HP away yeah. from working, killing that dock before the demo came out. Thank you, Smith. Thank you, guys. Everyone donating towards this prize pool. But thank I, you, thank you, thank you so much. But I, I really don't think you fear the Berbers as much with the civilizations you have. Yeah, Kuduri. maybe. So you, for, you go Frigid Lake here, and if you go Frigid Lake, you hope Hera uses the Italians and you can beat it. And that's what we have. Italians for Hera, Lithuanians for Leary. Three more games in this best of nine final. And we've seen various instances where we've had some early barracks uh, and early docks with the Lithuanians in the game. So let's see what Leary's up to. Look at how fast Hera goes out. He wants to deny an early dock, possibly, too, which is always possible with some of these builds. You can also make an argument for, like, trying to steal the sheep and stuff under the TC because they'll be on the fish. True. But I think it's probably just scouting for that villager coming forward. See, he heads right back. Yeah. He finds the TC, and now he's in between the TC and the water. He's looking for that unloomed villager. Yep, he should. And he's Absolutely. going to miss it. He'll double back. The dock's not going to be oh. far to the north or the south. He'll double back here. Three, two, one. Hair doubles back. Oh, no. There he goes. Okay. He is, but Leary's going to be walled in by then. Well, will he, though? I'm not sure he will. Hare's bringing a villager as well. <gasps> the, he doesn't have the wood for the dock. Okay, Leary, in this abandon position, it. abandon Abandon. Abandon. Abandon ship, abort, abort, abort. Hera oh. maybe can tag that dock and take it out. He looks to it for one second, Whoa. but he's going to go after the villager instead and first work on that scout. However, Leary getting HP down on Hera's villager, and now it's Hera who's in trouble. Ooh, what a decision there. Leary actually decided, he's still no loom, by the way, to stop building his dock, to not wall in his villager, which he could have easily done, Dave. Kills the villager. That was a confidence move. I wonder how much HP was on that dock foundation. Hera did get his dock up first, so yeah. he did delay the dock from Leary. It's not the worst thing in the world, because it looked like he tapped it for one second, and the villager from Hera might have been able to kill to that to foundation, it, yeah. which would have been just the best start ever. Yeah, Hera finishing his boar as well. Keep in mind, he might not have sheep. I think part of the reason he came forward is maybe because he found all of his res. Mm -hmm. I'm looking, it almost looks like he, oh, he doesn't have sheep. That's because he went forward so early. But he, he actually has compensated a bit here. He, I think he has three villagers next to his dock. So you can actually bring in the, uh, the food there. Yeah, and that's Hera realizing that he's going to run out of food underneath There's that There's not much food left on that fish, is there? Like what's left on that thing? 152, okay, it's not that bad. Maybe he wants to go forward with something when yep. he clicks up to Feudal Age as well, but Leary is the first one here up to the Feudal Age as he continues to push those Ibex. You have to push those from quite a distance, from yep. the middle of the map. We saw Vinch famously shooting one of those by accident with his TC, which is just devastating, <laughs> right? Yeah, and, and that's been something the players have said. Leary's also missing two sheep, by the way, uh, kind of next to his little face cam there on our screen. But... um. It's the, the uptimes are so fast in the Nineville starts, and things can be so aggressive, and you also don't have a ton of food. So every little sheep matters. In this case, it's even, I guess, with both players missing the same amount. I love how Hera recovered there. Mm -hmm. So many players get to a point where they don't have the food, and then they think, uh, then decide to build a mill, then decide to go to the fish. At this point, he's up to feudal, and he just leaves. Yeah, Leary going to go for a second dock. His feudal age will come in before Hera's. So he should have an advantage on the water, but his scout is weak, so he has to be careful about Hera's scout here. It's two hits away from death, and Leary oh, will man. hit Feudal Age and be able to run away, save it for the time being, oh, I man. think, anyway. You really hope that Feudal comes in fast here. Oh, you gotta run now. I don't think you he gotta should. run. He's gonna be he's gonna be he's able to get away. He's yep. fine. Yeah, that you was can actually see that well speed timed. boost. The NOS kicking in for the scout from Leary, and he's gonna head back home. Good for Hera, obviously, though, that he has more HP on his scout. No second dock for Hera. When have we seen this before? Hera just says, you know what? I'm going to switch to land a bit faster. Very common for him on Frigid Lake. And he's going to now scout and probably see Leary's second dock. Yep. I think this is where you go demos on water to try and kill Leary's fish. Maybe. And you go, you have immediate focus with the archers. We've seen one too many instances for the best players in the world to not get their archers to their opponent's base fast if they know they're not going for And the there's card. also, like, you scout the fish over there. You're kind of like, okay, there's an opportunity. Got to run away from the fire galley. There's yep. two fish stacked up. That's worth a demo. Yep. Also, the potential of killing the other two villagers. 
over on the other side, a lot of people pull those villagers away when they get to feudal age. They don't want those vills expo exposed for the potential demo demos. Yeah, Harold will lose his fish. He's choosing not to make anything on water, actually, which is a little surprising. They canceled the demo? I think he might not be able to afford that with what else he wants to do right now. Okay, so he canceled it. Interesting. Now we have walls there, and there's sheep for Hera. He's going to send them to the south, probably loop them back over to his base. And what does Leary do? He senses the fact that his opponent is just going to give up water, which means it's going to be land investment. So he correctly adds the barracks. Okay, so very tense stuff here. Hera, obviously, the forward push didn't really work out the way it, he wanted it to. Yep early in the game, losing a villager and not able to take a villager or deny the dog from Leary. He's managed to recover. He's the first one to arrange, and he will be sending his archers forward immediately because yeah. he knows the scout from Leary is weak, but Ooh. Leary now going for a stable. Honestly, I don't think Harris faced this before. I mean, you're at the limit with food eco, but you are expecting, if you're in Leary's position, to be able to get more of it because of the fish. So demo timing even more crucial now because if Hera lands a demo on fishing ships, Leary might not be able to use that staple. And, well, if Leary gets one scout out, he, he could do some damage against these archers that are coming yeah. in in single file because yeah. Hera's not expecting the exactly. stable. Yeah. He knows the scout is weak. He didn't make any spears to support his archers, which is usually what you want to do. And Leary's going to scout that third archer, a second archer, coming forward all alone. Now the stable spotted from Hera, and he's like, I am out of yeah, here, Yeah, immediate bro. spearman. Immediate yeah. spearman, right? <laughs> and there's actually a spearman there from Leary. It is fast with the Lithuanians, excuse me. But man, Leary's not really going to have a surprise anymore. And Hera can't even get back on water because I think his dock is going to die fairly yep. soon. So usually you want to go to the land and you mix it up by getting back on water again. Yep. But I think Leary's been working away on that for a while. And uh, Hera's dock is likely pretty low HP. This, yeah. is, this is the problem with the scouts, though. You could afford to make three of them. And now your opponent has simply added a spearman and has five archers. So suddenly you're in panic mode. It buys you a ton of time, though. It buys you a ton of time to get the walls down, and you still have the water. That's the thing, right? You still have the water. Yeah, let's see. The preemptive tower there for Leary is because he didn't see this force, and he is going to need to use these scouts to buy himself time. He's got maybe 10 villagers walling. I like this. Just add in fishing ships if you're Leary. Take the advantages that you've gained for yourself, right? And even though the scouts cost all that food, you're going to recoup this food by having not only your fishing ships, but also your villagers taking food back in that area and now Harris based up against the prospect of scouts running into his base and his archers not able to get into his opponent's economy i always have a hole in my wall in these situations so i'm scared for leary such a great job to get the walls down what do you always say if you're gonna wall commit. make sure you commit yeah. yes otherwise you just end up walling 90 percent wasting those resources and they're in anyway yeah like it didn't matter at all Wow, five fishing ships. This is a good position for Leary to be in, provided he can keep the army away. I think he's going to use a market to protect that wall because he's probably going to buy food anyways. Messy times here for Hera now. Oh, boy. Leary running around his eco, and he's still looking for damage. Leary can go for a market behind that. Leary added in an extra fishing be ship. Patient. His food economy is looking good. He's diving on the archers here. The spearman is coming from Hera, so one scout will go down. That was incredibly weak, though, and Leary will still be distracting. Hera in the back of his economy as he's building up to go towards the next age. Market is about to go down, and Leary has 650 gold to sell. Yep, he saves the villagers there. Hasn't lost a single villager or fishing ship in this game, Leary. And if Hera loops around to the gold as he's Ooh. trying to be fancy here, it's so much work. This is why I say be patient, right? Like Hera's got to do so many different things. Look at Leary's resources. He's going to click up. It's That's all huge. because of the water. It's all because of the water. He didn't just have those fishing ships. He also had two villagers working away out there. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of free food that Hera gave him by switching on the land so early and not investing in any water contest at all. Hera will go up shortly, but Leary's definitely going to have an advantage. I like what Hera's doing, though. He's really, he's working on breaking in here. But if we could see Hera's vision, I think he doesn't know about the tower. Yeah, so, so he's going to think, oh, OK. So I could deny his gold if I move in a little bit further, mm -hmm. but the tower should be enough to push those archers away. It's actually just wasted time, right? Because what you want to do is you, you want to be breaking through to find immediate value. Let's see. There are weak villagers there. There's like, nope. Yeah. Yep. I'm out. That was huge.
He's finding the villagers in the center. Larry can save this if he comes along oh with a demo. Boy. Archers can't snipe ah. that in time. Hera, uh-oh, boom. Bam. Didn't get any value. Okay, but wait. That was just the trailer to this movie. We will see it soon. No, he's leaving. Okay. Yep. That was good from Hera, though. It was a disappointing demo for sure, lack thereof, wait, but wait, the demo wait, is wait. still alive. It's very weak though. Hera's coming in with the archers. The demo is very weak. <laughs> villager needed to repair that, and Hera snipes the demo. He gets the villager anyway. That was great. Hera was laughs so at your navy with his archers, and Leary splits away from those archer shots. Great job to save those scouts. No skirmishers from the Lithuanian player here. They have very good skirmishers. A, a couple skirmishers out there would have helped against the archers. There's also no real eco for Hera to make scouts against that. So Leary really opting for the knights here, but I can't argue with it if you've got this much food in the bank. And of course you're the Lithuanians. The danger here is that that micro against the demo might have given Hera confidence that archers can actually do it against <laughs> demos. And he might get wrecked here if he goes under the water. I see another demo in production there from Leary as he immediately goes for a monastery. There's the demolition raft. Hera staying a couple tiles away from the water. He should be fine. Leary wisely ejecting that so there's no flag on that dock, maybe baiting Hera in. Hera is still 45 seconds away from the castle age, but Leary doesn't immediately have a force to hit Hera's economy, and Hera will be fully walled in time for the knights. Is it a bad play to go for the monastery instead of a siege workshop? Where are the relics and what can Leary see? That, that, he sees the one in the center Which, and he sees the sure. one to the north. I think if they're close enough, it's good to go for a monastery. Okay. Because then you can put those re that res towards the siege yeah. workshop. But I don't think it's bad, but fact of the matter is, if he would have had a siege workshop, mm -hmm. then he could have scorpions out and a mangonel. A either or would be really good in combination with knights against the archers. It's just when you're Lithuanians and you get relic uh, attack on your knights per relic collected, you almost always see players go for the monastery. Ooh, Hera. You have walled yourself a little gap between the water Hera, and your base. He won't, dude. He's not scared of this. He's not scared of this. Like you said, not he's got crossbow. lots of confidence. Yeah, not with cross. He can one shot it. Yeah. If Leary wants to get this demo off, he's gonna need to attack Hera somewhere else, distract him, and then send the demo in. Yeah. yeah that's you never can't send happen. it in like never. this, dude. Never. If you have knights as well, then maybe Hera gets distracted. But Hera doing the right thing here. I mean, wouldn't suggest this to our viewers at home. No offense intended by that, but he knows the fish is some type of an advantage to his opponent, so he's trying to deny it. He even sees the monk. That that looked like a free relic to us earlier on. Mm, demo will dip and duck and dive Huge. and maybe push these away, but it's not in time. The monk goes down. Leary may be frustrated about that one. Both players adding a second TC, and Hera is able to wall up behind these knights. There's more knights coming at the top, I believe, but the crossbows are still pushing through the middle. Leary this has another so demo crazy. in that dock. Leary has another demo in that dock. It's dangerous times for Hera, but he snipes down the demo. And he gets a conversion. That should be a conversion. It is. Oh, this is so good. And Leary There's another demo never coming out. Is this the other dock? Where is it? Where is it? Oh, it's just too late, Tristan. I mean, it's all desperation moves for Leary. He didn't build up towards skirmishers. He doesn't have any armor upgrades on his knights. He doesn't have any relics in the bank. The, the scouts that are out there haven't located many of those relics, but you know, Hera finds himself in a really good position all of a sudden, and it's just wasted opportunities for Leary in a must-win game, I'd say. So, so frustrating for Leary, and you can see it in his face with every single yep. thing that's not going his way. He's rolling his eyes. He's getting very, very irritated as Hera just managed to foil him every time. Doesn't even see that monk with the relic. He's he's too busy focusing on this crossbow army coming in to the back of his economy. Great job from Hera. We see oh, quick walls there from nope. Leary. Spearman says, nope, you're dead. And Hera maybe needs to delete that one. Tries to get away, gets away, love and life. 48 eco for Hera, resources collected for a guy that didn't have fish, only 800 resources behind. And when I look at the economy setup for Hera, I think I'm going to like it a whole lot more if this game continues. But still, obviously, you are Lithuanians, and zero relics have been collected by anyone, which means that Leary can get them, which means it can be devastating. Yeah, the problem for Leary is definitely going to be this food eco pretty soon. He needs to add a little bit more to keep the knights coming out. And aye, the crossbows aye, aye, are aye, working aye. away at the gold. One, two, three, four, five. Six villagers, potentially seven killed 
from Hera there on that gold. That is absolutely brutal, and there's not really much damage coming out from that tower now because there's no one inside. Five or six demos made in this game, very few kills. Maybe like six monks made in this game, zero relics collected. And I also think I recall a lot of knights going down. As we see the knight here from Harry's gonna kill another monk or, or Willy. Harry's trying to block it, but the crossbows are there and the monks are behind, right? Yeah. The monks are behind. Demo Raph coming in. Maybe it could get convert the monks the demo. this time. He'll convert Maybe the it demo. could get the monks this time. He's trying to convert the demo. He's splitting up his monks. He does get one and he will be able to push this back potentially, but his monk did die and he needs to retreat with the knights now. Harry's playing so well. Also, I love the stone buildup too, because you do have some exposed resources. You might want to get water control again. Hera just killed his own scout with his crossbows, by the way. Oh, that's nice. Converted that at the last second <laughs> as it was dying. This is crazy. Like, there's no world where Hera should be getting that relic in the middle, right? But he just played towards archers, kept it simple. And I think Leary, if he was, like, if Lithuanians didn't have the relic bonus, mm -hmm. I think he goes skirms. I honestly do, and I think he goes skirms, and he booms, and he has map control, and this never happens. It's just oh so tempting to get those relics, and Harris denied every single one so far. Leary is banking up stone right now. He still has the advantage in total res collected. It's just the map position doesn't look good. Harris made an impressive comeback after a rough start in an earlier castle age here from Leary, also denying all those relics like you said. Still no siege. Ballistics oh my god. coming in. Stone is being cut off now. Yeah, I think... Hera's not really a forward castle guy, but when you realize how much res you've destroyed and you see those two golds there, I know your opponent should be adding siege here, but you haven't seen it yet. Do you just drop a castle forward? Mm, there's a siege workshop now. <laughs> I mean... I think if you're Hera, you don't really... Maybe you can get away with one kind of in the middle okay. of the map. A safe castle, especially because yeah. you might want Genoese Crossbowman. And it'll lock down a com like completely one side of the map as well as one of those neutral golds. So I don't think a forward castle is justified. It's a good way to throw a game. Yeah, that's true. And at this point, I think he probably wins the game if he just makes it to imp with Arbalest. Look at the resources destroyed. Almost 3,000 resources destroyed for Hera. And so while he is or was behind in the eco, he's not anymore as he kills a monk. And monks don't fire arrows. They're very lazy. I guess they are old. So Hera just goes right underneath that town center. Lyric can pop out and try and convert with these monks and maybe bait Hera back. But this is all of the farming eco from Leary that's being cut off. He does have a Mangonel in the queue, but he's going to lose a bunch of villagers. Hera splits up his forces now. Hera is getting more eco wow. kills. And Leary taps out. What a comeback there from Hera after a rough start. Initial strategy didn't work, but he's just so consistent. That, if, if Leary does not win this final, he's going to be kicking himself for that one. Oh my goodness, he had such a good position. But the thing about Hera that you always have to reference is game to game, series to series, consistency. Yep. Right? Consistent archer production, switched into the economy, and he looked for opportunities if his opponent were gonna, was going to give him any, and there were opportunities that he was able to take. Mm -hmm. Well played from him. He needed that one, Dave, because we, remember we were thinking that maybe Italians would be used for Golden Lakes. So what I'm thinking now is that if Golden Lakes happens, that it'll be a disadvantage civ-wise for Hera because he's got Berbers, which could be good. Turks, Burgundians could be good. Haven't really seen them. So Leary will pick Golden Lakes, probably have a civ advantage with the Byzantines. And then... If this goes to a game nine, which I'm leaning towards currently based on the civilizations at least, Hera will have the civ advantage on Hippo Arena, having two of the most famous picks for Arena, Turks and Burgundians, at least in recent history. And uh, man, oh man, what a final here. Leary is really going to have to work hard to get two wins of the next two games. Leary's body language during that entire game was like... It wasn't good. Mm -hmm. He was very frustrated after every single fight. You could see him just kind of shaking his yep. head after that loss. He knew that he was in a really good position after he killed that Ville. Yeah. Got water control. Hera didn't even contest. Took all the food. Faster to Castle Age. And then Hera just... It's all started when he microed down that demo ship. Yeah. And then from there, there's just so many wasted demos. So many monks going down. Knights didn't find any value. He, they got converted. He needed a siege workshop. Yeah. If you go siege workshop there... None of, I mean, okay, we don't know what's going to happen, but Hera didn't have anything to contest that. And he went for the monastery because he wanted relics, and I don't think he ever got a single one. A siege would have prevented Hera from moving out, would have really been able to pressure Hera. But I understand that, which is why I brought it up in the cast, because I think myself and any other person just loves to collect relics with the Lithuanians, mm -hmm. and you're faster to cast it just feels natural.
But I think Leary's dejected look right now is because he knows that not only does he need two wins, but because if it goes to Arena, he just doesn't have a great sieve for it. Yeah, we'll see what he can do there. I know he loves the Burmese. Like, both yeah, of these guys love sure. the Burmese. They think they're a very, very good sieve. I'm not sure they can match up against Burgundians. I know we found value with them against Turks, especially against the Genissary play. Yeah, but, like, knowing that, will Hera pick Turks? That's yeah. just such the struggle. So Hera absolutely should not play the Burgundians here. Um, I think we could actually see Turks because Turks have fast imp potential which is could be decent against the Byzantines. I also for historical, you know, significance would love to see Turks versus Byzantines, but Hello viewing party. Hello viewing party. I Where's hope you're your enjoying energy? yourselves. There's a bit of a delay. They're going to see a lot of energy in a second. Wait for it. We just call them out. I mean, that was one hand, two hands, three Wait hands. There we go. Yeah. There you I don't go. blame the people in the beanbags at the front because that's where I was watching from yesterday, yeah. and it makes you want to fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> also, I, I wasn't expecting John Slow to really, you know, have that fast-moving speed energy look. Mm -hmm. And here we have in the gamer house. Look at look at these guys. They've either played all week, supported all week, or casted, of course. And now we're showing the people at home wave at your screen. No, we don't have a camera if angle. That would be creepy. Yeah, but if you don't wave at your phone your tablet or your TV yep. right now, you're not allowed to watch the rest of these games, mm -hmm. okay? You don't think we have control over it. We do. Don't don't report me. Report Nilly. It's his event. I said, Nilly, it's not a good idea. They're into the game. They're into the game, and I believe we're playing Golden Lakes, and we are. Here we go. We've got Golden Lakes, and we've got a very interesting rocky terrain. Here. Yeah, I don't know if this is planned <laughs> as part of the map. Uh, very, very interesting generation. I mean, it doesn't affect them building anything. It looks hideous. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it doesn't affect them building anything, yeah. so it's not really a bug. It is definitely a bit different than the terrain. I didn't even before. know this was a possibility, and the game is paused. Yeah, that might I be think. We confused. might see a one in a million generation here on the terrain. Anyway, Hera is playing Berbers. Leary has gone for the Burmese. Okay. Do you have ugly terrain too? Yeah, it's terrible. My terrain is full of stones. Is it bugged? Question mark. Same. I had to check if I can build on it with Palisade. We can ask. Okay. <laughs> well, Nilly's on the way there, and I'm sure we'll clarify this. Hideous. First. Yeah. Absolutely hideous. What's going on here? How is this even like a thing? I've never seen this generation on this map once. Yeah, I think, you know, I know enough about map scripting to know that sometimes map creators have this uh, weird little way of making sure terrain places properly. Mm -hmm. And in order to do that, they will use different types of, of terrains. So a lot of times that stuff is hidden. Like I know at one point, uh, destroyed farms were used to place proper wood lines on a tournament map. There's a lot of weird things like that. Yo, Michael, thank you for the dono. If you guys want to donate towards the prize pool, get them in now because this could be the final game of NAC4. I've seen a lot of familiar faces. I'm seeing a lot of new ones today, obviously with more people watching. But people who have been tuning in every single day for NAC, and it's been crazy, the level of support we have reached. Um, for these final games, I mean, go tell your friends. Get them here right now. We want to pump that viewer count up as much as we can. Many people here enjoying this live from Berlin. And finally, we have a good map set up. It is desert terrain rather than rocks this time. As Hera has chosen to go for the Berbers, Leary has gone for the Burmese, and we are playing Golden Lakes. Okay, so there is a world where someone may eventually question Leary at the conclusion of this game and say, why Burmese here? But you only have so many civilizations left. And what you don't want is to pick, like, let's say Byzantines, which he had, win the game, and then not have a good civilization for the final game. Because the point is not to get four wins and then lose the final. The point's to win the whole freaking final. Mm -hmm. So I actually really like what Leary's done here, because when I was looking at his civilizations, I felt like he would be in a really rough position if he went for the Byzantines here in game nine. So if he wins this game, and then we have Byzantines on Arena game nine, might be the longest game of the series. And as we know, Byzantines have really good late game potential. All right, we see Leary already going out to the pond on the left side. Hera is patrolling around there with the scout. Leary needs to wall this villager in. That's something that you should always do on tournament games. And Hera is going for Loom. I don't know if that's planned or if it's because he was housed there um, at 15 population. I think he was housed. Is it also because he was expecting to maybe lose his villager? No, I think it was housed. I okay. think he was housed there. 
Okay, it's possible. That was an accident. He's still patrolling around with the scout. Oh, is, oh this is also very Oh, awkward. did Oh, I thought Leary killed that with the Oh my god, bro. Heart attack I thought Leary here. killed that with Heart the Heart attack for Dave. Glad you're still, still here with me, bro. Yep. Okay, so Berbers have faster villagers and faster ships. Faster ships is actually actually not even helpful on this map as we have another pause. I don't think it's due to a bug, but since Nilly's next to me, maybe Nilly could be on Nilly is jogging. I think they're going to unpause here, Nilly. It should be fine. Uh, let me complete my thought. Like, is it not hurtful for you <laughs> to have faster fires here? Because you, you go in towards the opponent's dock. You could be baited into demos No, faster. I don't think it's hurting you that your ships are faster. Couldn't it? Couldn't you make an argument that that could be a negative? No? Okay, all right, fine. It's been a long day. You're just not receptive to any ideas Burber, I have anymore. Villagers move 10% faster. Ships move 10% faster, by yeah. the way. So and that, that means you need T90, to react 10% faster mind, to a demo. In T90's mind, that means they're 10% more likely to get smoked by a big demo shot. You're also faster at running away from the demos. I guess that's fair. You can get out of range. Listen, I'm going to blame you for that because that used to be a Dave take. And somehow the roles just changed That's at one not point. A, that was never a Dave take. It would have been. It's what the way your brain works. We don't know what happened. Maybe there was a bug map here? Uh, I don't know. We've received zero information. It I just could, saw You know run. what it could have been? That Hera didn't... Don't you usually start with two houses here? On these nine villager maps? Uh, no, no, he he, no, no, no. I think he, I think he would have had the houses because he was at... He got housed at 15 pop, which means you start with two houses. Hmm. If he got housed. Ooh. I see we're looking right now. I'm wondering what's happening here. It looks like those two are the starting ones. We'll, we'll ask Nilly. Restart. What? Okay, boars not envisioned. So they're supposed oh. to be scripted where you always see those boars as part of the Nineville start. So Hera couldn't see the boar uh, in his vision. And that is something that has been consistent the entire time with this map. And that's why he sent the scout for it, right? Yeah. It seems like such a minor thing, but it's a conscious decision when you script the maps for nine vills that all that starting res is in vision uh, because we're so much later into the game yeah. when we start with more population. So they're just going to restart that one. Will be really painful if either player loses a villager yeah. on the dock now uh, as they'll restart this one. But thankfully with a nine villager start, it is a little bit faster. And good from Hera to know the rules there, right? Because like you said, you go forward there because you figure, I have my two boars in, mm -hmm. in sight. That's how it's supposed to be scripted. He There's honestly might have, he might have gotten housed because he was busy looking for the boar yeah. with the villager. Yeah, maybe. That's a good point. I don't know. We'd have to watch it back. Brill also, Gates, possibly re related to the uh, other gates. Thank you for the donation. And here we go again for the third time. Third time's the charm. Yep, third time's the charm. Terrain looks fine. Houses are all there. We will see docking eventually from these two players. And Hera moving out again. So this could be huge. If Hera is able to find the correct pond and try and kill Leary's villager, he was there actually too early last time. Mm -hmm. So he might have an opportunity This is pretty here. far away. The, the pond is super close to Leary's base, and I think Hera should know with the way he's generated that Leary is probably exactly opposite yep. on the map from him. So he's going to loop back around that way. And he might get out there just on time. His pawn is really, really close to his own base, so the dock should be coming up shortly from him. And he's not going to be housed this time. It will come in just in time for him to produce another villager as Leary moves his way out. And Leary should have seen that scout mm -hmm. from Hera. I think he missed it. Oh, boy. Yeah. Let's hope he walls Dude. in the vill. Uh, let's hope he does, because it was completely fine mm. before the re here. Hera's doing everything he should do. He has do. enough for a dock, but not for a palisade wall. Leary uh, is going to be attacked by Hera here. Maybe he could retreat so towards that wood line. He's going to try and get the quick wall. He does get the quick wall and the dock. Impressive stuff from Leary. So important there not to lose that villager. At the same time, he was luring in the board and shooting it with the TC. So. Yeah, can you imagine that? all the things that could go wrong there? He could levels. lose the villager, not be able to dock, shoot the board with the TC. Great save from Leary. This is an eventful Dark Age. But from here on out, I do expect this to be rather chill, so let's talk about the sieves. Ooh, um, sending a villager very quickly, too, ooh. considering he's already docked on his own pond. I mean, when you don't have that extra moving speed, you might need to leave a little earlier. And with Burmese getting the wood upgrade for free in Feudal Age, might feel like a good civilization to contest water with. Yeah, he's going to find these two sheep, it looks like. 
at the angle he's going for he will and he'll find the stone he can't really attack that villager on the dock with the scout and the villager because no, 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 the tc shouldn't. is so close yeah from Hera, it's gonna be right beside the water might be what he's thinking and then into placing a dock but i think it's just gonna be a sneak dock here he might try and Hera might like wall in the scout or something crazy here because it's always a weird spot to be in Hera. oh he can't he can't oh he maybe he can he thought he could I actually really like how Leary decided not to trade off HP there. The Villager still any on damage. the way. Really, really nice. Wow, this is going to be so fast up. So, again, we had explained some points in the restart cast. I, I assume that will be included in VOD format later on, where um, Leary has gone for the Burmese, which is quite rare because he wants to save most likely Byzantines for later on. Can he get the dock up? Harris checking this. He would never expect this to be so fast. And he, of course, could deny it. In oh age. boy, he doesn't expect the villager to already be there. Like he's oh. doing the right thing. He's scouting over here. Might even be looking for those sheep. But uh, yeah. the scout from Leary obviously taking those earlier. And he's kind of like, do you have a villager coming out in this direction? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Leary sent the vill so quickly. The nope. hair is not going to be able to find it. And now Leary clicks up to Feudal Age, but he's had 15 seconds of idle TC time. And he's considerably behind Hera yeah. on the way up. I really think Hera is thinking, let's fish boom behind walls because I have cheap fishing ships. Mm -hmm. And if he's ever going to expect the dock, he's going to expect the dock much later here. Really fast here from Leary. I guess he just wanted to guarantee that he could get the dock up in the first place, right? Because he's most likely going to lose his scout here with Hera being faster to feudal. Do you take your scout over to the dock here? So you have an extra unit to fight off? Oh, never mind. Yeah, they're just going to part ways. Yeah. Leary will use his to explore the other areas of the map. Hera will use his to maybe check again for a dock. Maybe use a fishing ship. I don't know if Hera has scouted or attempted to scout there at any point yet. As Leary now adds a wall at the back of his own base. Hera's not going to gold, Dave. That's the most important detail. Also, Leary isn't. Okay, he is. I lied. Um... So Hera can make the first fire, which he's going to do because he scouted it. Mm. But he has to shift more over to gold here to be able to make more than that. That's good scouting from Hera. He yep. did that with the fishing ship while he was engaging with the scout. Didn't need to bring it over there. And now the scout from Leary is still exploring, making sure there's no villagers coming back over to the dock in the south. As Hera now walls up, Hera also went for the mill, which is an interesting timing on that. How much HP is that? Sometimes players will just That's do 27. one HP. No, on the Palisade. Ah. Okay, uh, that should be fine. Yeah. Okay, so Hera goes two docks defensively with the Berbers. Faster ships. Uh, Burmese have the wood upgrade for free. You see the barracks has been scouted there by Leary, so Leary might be thinking, hmm, okay, were you thinking think, of going scouts here? I think if you're Leary, you just put this wood into walling like he's doing, and then you add a bunch of fishing ships at home, and Hera can't justify adding fishing yep. ships here because you're contesting forward. So you're basically stalling out his eco as you're putting your excess wood yep into uh, more food economy at home and making more docks in the south. So honestly, I do like to start more from Leary, especially with that forward dock there, applying a little bit pr of pressure on Hera's economy. If you're gonna wall though, you oh, wall. Might take out a villager here, Leary. He got the initial damage with the fire galley. Hera's not able to save that with a wall and Leary does take out a villager from Hera. <laughs> I love how Leary said, nope, I'm not even going to use my fire against your scout because I need that fire to be alive here. Mm -hmm. And Villager gets pulled over here. A nice little palisade there to protect his Villager. So good job from Leary at the start. Obviously, Hera hasn't taken any losses here. He even added a galley there. Hera's also in the north here with a Villager, but Leary's there as well. So Leary's going to have a dock in this pond, the one to the south. He's going to have a dock in literally all four ponds. Yeah. Here, Hera not adding excess fishing ships at home. Never mind, he is. So he's taking kind of a risk there yep. with just two fire galleys and a galley of his own. But I think he expects Leary to be spending wood on fishing ships at home yep. and these other ponds. I think it's likely both players could actually just fish in that pond in the north for a bit before they find each other. Uh, of course, no scout for Leary now to confirm anything. Holes all over the place in Leary's walls too. So he's yeah, realized yeah, yeah. that it's not land pressure really at the moment from Hera. He's gone for an archery range. Hera sending the scout over to discover if there's any docks in the south. Not enough HP to take out that villager. And Leary not investing any more in that dock. Hera doesn't know. It could be two fire galleys in yep. there. It could soon be four fire galleys. But right now, Leary just has one inside of that dock. And Hera can only see the flag. He can't see the numbers. Yeah, and did Hera scout anything here? Is that a scouting fishing ship from Leary? No. 
But Hera adding the fire and then a fishing ship. I love the order of production there from Hera. And I, I would love to see a demo from Leary. I think it's worth it to try and demo the ships in your opponent's uh, lake there. I like how Hera's is kind of calling Leary out. He's like, I know you're not going to produce up there. Yeah. I know it's not happening. You just have one ship in there and that's it. I also know that it's likely you're on the top pond, so I'm going to go with a fire galley first. As Leary now has a fire galley in production, Aww. I wonder where that's from. Is that from the top dock? It's not. It's from the bottom dock. Yeah, it's so funny too. Hera's expecting the dock, if it ever happens as he loses his scout, which is huge, mm -hmm. to come on the right side yep. because of the location of Leary's base. That would be the normal path so to take. So fascinating, dude. Yeah. And he, he's going to be so surprised when he sees those fishing ships. He's going to be like, uh, excuse me. Yeah. He now uses the market to try and go up to Castle Age, and they might click at exactly the same time here. Leary clicks up, and bop, Hera's on the way up to the Castle Age. 13 15 is the timing on that, and it's pretty impressive stuff as Leary manages to deny this villager in the south. Leary needs to realize in the north that he is going to be contested. He's going to find out the hard way. We'll probably end up losing this pond, though, which will mean it would be two pawns for both. He just simply gives up on this area, happy that he brought in the food. We'd love to see him drop off the food before he loses the fishing ships, but he does have other things to worry about. Notably, what is your plan? Yeah. Uh, will you go monks? Will you go spearmen? Do you continue with archers Burmese in a civilization that lacks armor? You're up against the Berbers in Castle Age, where they have very cheap stable units. Hera opened a hole in the wall there. Yeah, Leary true. Could be very annoying with that, he, because the first scout from Ooh. Hera goes across, and Leary will see that Hera has a scout there. It's good information. No surprise with Berbers. I think that he'd be adding stables at this point. As Leary now goes for a fire galley to contest, it looks like he saved the fishing ship at the north, but that's it from that fishing eco. So Hera has control over two pawns, Leary has control over two pawns, and Hera is contesting now the pond in the south. He's got a sneaky little dock down there. Huge. Huge, and still not seen by Leary. Again, he was to the north and the south first, starting to lose some ground here as he shifts focus to land. And Hera seems to realize now this is going to be a bit of a forward there. Mm -hmm. uh, wouldn't surprise me at all to see Siege and Monks with this push. Ooh, Hera's trying to wall Himself in the villager in. from Leary. He doesn't quite get it. The villager is chasing. <laughs> it is a Berber villager <laughs> versus a Burmese villager, though. So the Berber should have the advantage there. As soon as Hera sees these villagers forward, he should go for scouts. It's going to be Pikeman, Monk, Siege, presumably from Leary as he tries to push the main base from Hera while also contesting the water. He's got a lot of things to do. Hera, I think, can just go light cav here and try and defend initially. Yeah, it, it's the early monks that matter. If you snipe the first, the, if you start sniping monks before they get a mass of about six, then you're okay. If it gets to six, big problems. Burmese do have the cheaper monk technology, so we should see Sanctity very early before a monk even shows himself, see, now that you know your opponent has light cap potential. And uh, here, that villager really wanted to build a house. Mm -hmm. Has completed the house. War galley upgrade is in from Leary. How many does he have over there? Two fire ships going for the siege workshop. I like the way he's kind of saved his villagers in underneath those monasteries. And uh, there's no opportunity for Leary Ooh. to clear that up. And there's already two monks on the field here. Hera's got to be careful. Demo is coming out. The villager is exposed. And the scouts have made their way over here. But the demo is here. Leary could actually bait those scouts into the demo. Leary, I think he's loving life. That's not going to hurt too much. But the fact that he's forced to tower out of Hera, and Hera had to pull the gold villagers away. Double tower. Yeah. Hera's going to try guard tower here. This is crazy. Wow. Looks like that red villager that's just now dying, um, he was... Okay, sorry, I got distracted. Uh, he was converted, and Hera will lose control of the north and the southern ponds right now. So Leary's going to have control over three different ponds here. He can expand his fishing eco. Also has that presence at the front of Hera's base. Hera is going to need to defend against this, and he's chosen the towers to do so. He also has the university behind. Like you pointed out, guard tower is a possibility. Much, much better against the Mangonels than the watchtower. Yep but it takes that stone investment and it's a static defense, right? You can't use it to push back across the field if you get a good engagement. I don't know how that villager died, but sorry, dude, you're not that important right now to the plans. He's not that Leary. guy. No, he's not that guy at all. You need like, I think 200 food, 100 wood for guard tower. It's about 300, maybe 350 resources. Plus you probably need to get Bodkin Arrow as well. So big investment, but what I like 
about Hera's approach right now is that he recognizes he can't really contest that. Mm -hmm. So he's doing things like this, and that's two vills dead? Maybe one villager dead there. Total eco KD is eight to three in favor of Hera. I know a number of those were fishing ships, but Guard Tower is now in. Yep. He's gonna have to defend against the light cav, and he has enough pikemen to do so. Repair. Also needs to repair oh. the mangonels at all times. One mangonel goes down. Monks are now being targeted from Leary. Doesn't get value against that, but the guard tower is almost able to take out the next mangonel from Leary. This is really, really tough for Leary to keep these repaired. It feels like Hera's long-term plan is maybe Camel Archer here, and I don't hate that. I think that's your your best unit against the Burmese. The Burmese are known for weak skirms. Hera goes in with Lightcap. He's gonna kill the Mangonel. He sees some vulnerable monks, thinks about it. Oh, he's so active with those, isn't he? Oh, oh this is so frustrating. Hera's back and forth with three different units. Yeah, interesting as well that Hera has had very little TC idle time compared to Leary. He's got more villagers. He doesn't have as many fishing ships, obviously, and Leary's gonna be adding more. But, you know, Hera's main problem right now is he doesn't have a long-term army. No food eco either. And so, you know, considering you already have the university, considering you've got a lot of wood and gold, I'd love the idea of dropping a castle and going camel archers. Mm -hmm. The problem for Hera right now, I think, is the lack of control over these three pawns yep. that Leary has. And we can see Leary just relying on the fishing ships for food eco. 13 on food, 12 of those are ships. So he can put all of his other villagers onto gold, onto wood, to invest into this push, and now he's allocated a few to stone. So maybe think about going for a forward castle to supplement this eventually. He's building up his army here. He's getting an, a few more Mangonels, and there's the castle from Hera. This castle will stall out this push, and Leary is going to need to uh, come in from another angle of attack. Maybe he can kill a few villagers here, though, while yep. that castle is trying to go up. Great, great job from Hera. Realizes this. This should come as no surprise. Also, using the distraction of the light cap, light cap against the monks. How many kills will they get? One, two. I think enough is the Double answer. Mangonel, though, Tristan. Double Mangonel. Double guard tower as well. The light cap are trying to take out the Mangonels, and it looks like Leary is doing enough to repair them, but the light cap loop around again and take out yet another monk. Hera is so active with those. Yeah. In the, over the last couple minutes, Leary has been able to gain an economy lead. He's got just as many villagers as Hera, but he's got superior fishing ship numbers. The problem, and this is the main problem with this whole predicament that Leary had even before he got into this game is, what do you make as Burmese here on Golden Lakes? What's your unit comp? He wanted to end this game. It's not, it has not ended yet. Skirmisher. And the Camel Archer is just so freaking good here against the Burmese. Yeah, Skirmishers are usually not to play with Burmese because as you can see from the top right there, they're only getting access to that first archer armor. But I did watch Leary once win a game against Valesa with nothing but Burmese skirmishers. On so arena. if anyone has faith in them, yep. it's probably him. The scout's still being active from Harry. Sees that skirmisher from Leary. He's going to be like, uh, bro, what is going on here? But Leary knows that he needs some options against these camel archers. Yeah, so I think with, with everything that we've said, you want to prevent Hera from being able to make the Camel Archers in the long term, mm -hmm. meaning forward castle, uh, oh, unlock the ability for trebuchets by making it to the Imperial Age. Yes. And that the reason he's not leaving that area is because that's exactly where he feels like the best castle will be. This imp timing, though, is going to look pretty good for Leary at this pace, right? He's kept the same amount, like same ratio of fishing ships to villagers on food. Yep. And he's only producing out of two TCs. Now he's stalled TC production. He really wants to get up to Imperial Age. Really <laughs> wants to have a castle forward. And the monk parade is on the Look way home. Look at Hera's vision. Look at Hera's vision. The, the funny thing is, guys, these guys are so elite. They know exactly what's happening. Hera knows that Vils are going to try and come forward here. Mm -hmm. And Leary's like, crap, I've oh, got to somehow get there. And he's left. Oh, oh God, what geez. a find from Hera. Oh, geez. Hera with the game sense. This is big, folks. This is big. He's killing all the villagers coming forward as Hera is on the way to Imperial Age. Villager count now heavily in Hera's favor. Of course, Leary has those fishing ships, but the fish are expiring, and Leary really needs this castle up, and he really needs it up before Imperial Age comes in. There's the castle right there. It's an okay location. Would have loved to yep. see it a little bit more forward, but he just needs to start building right now. <laughs> okay, so now... <laughs> 
I mean, that castle's probably going to go up. It's like, what do you do behind? So now, yeah, now Hera, that, dude, I'm just Oof. loving this so much. He now needs to punish the fact that Leary's forward protecting the castle uh, and its construction and needs to punish this right here. So the TC is mainly a defensive structure here for Leary. Burmese skirmishes. And then is Hera attacking at the same time as well? Yeah, he saw that. Leary had to pay attention to it. That's why he lost some bills. Leary thought about going skirms and then thought better of it. Canceled the upgrade. Yep. And I think I I actually really like this defense from Leary. He I went for the two houses and then he went for a TC there. That's going to keep Hera away. He only has, what, six camel archers forward there. It's not enough to push in under TC fire. So he's going to back up. And now he's kind of cut off from his main base. So Hera is in a position where he really wants to be in Pyrrhal Age, but he has to invest, invest into defense. Yep. And it's going to be so, so tough for him if he can't find a hole in these walls. Yeah, if he gets through, though, could be really problematic for Leary. And Leary maybe thought there was a hole there and just dropped the university. I'm not sure he really needs that. Lots of production for Hera. Dave, what's been so beautiful about this final is that we have not had big question marks over their strategy at all. And in instances where a player loses, we say, Oh, yeah, they played that as well as they could have, right? Yep. It was and a good attempt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's what I'm saying here with Leary as well, right? Like, this is his win condition. Had he tried to boom up towards late game, it wouldn't be good. So well played from him, but well played from Hera, as he's going to go all in Castle Age against I this. just want to see something from Leary to deal with these Camel Archers, because even Castle Age Camel Archers are going to be in a position to swoop in. Yeah. Take damage on those trebs. The light calf can get the monks as they're being targeted. Block printing now coming in oh, from not Leary. Yet. And the camel archers are trying to push up the hill. Leary does get two of them, so that's not bad. Trading off two monks for those camel archers. And uh, he does have trebs in the queue, so he's going to start attacking that castle from Hera pretty shortly. Hera pretty far away from Imperial Age still. He's got 38 on food now, so he's trying to get his economy balanced enough to get up to the next age. It's just so, so difficult here with the imp timing from Leary. Yeah, and now 12 range monks, right? So there's enough pikemen in there with a lot of extra attack due to the Burmese bonuses to protect the monks. Nation, theocracy, it's all coming in. Hera's going to try and break in, Dave. He's going to try and somehow break into Leary's base. With a forward castle, maybe? I, I wouldn't hate it. But then again, you might need to keep your castle up at home. It's so complicated. Leary has double house wall, building wall pretty much everywhere except right in front of the town center. He needs to make sure he does that because Hera's desperate right now. Here come the light cav. Hera's going to hope that Leary is distracted with the raids at the back as uh, Leary is now trying to send army back. And he's sending more bills forward. And for oh! the second time, Hera has found oh, the God. bills. But the light cav are in. The monks need to hop in the castle. Oh, no way. Uh, monks went down. Uh, pikemen have gone down. Hera takes the fight underneath the castle. And the light cav say, hello, trebuchets. You have no protection anymore. The monks are still alive, though. They're still inside. The pikemen are going to be able to clear up these light cap, but not before the trebs go down. Another treb coming out of that castle. And the monks are trying to convert the camel archers. Hera, though, is just diving underneath this thing. Care. He's not afraid. No, he doesn't care. Yeah, because he knows he's got the eco lead. And he knows if this game goes on longer that his civilization is far superior. A great engagement there from Hera. So creative, right? We thought he would break into the main base from Leary. But instead, he just looped right back around as he came in with another force. And Leary is forced to TC in the middle as he has zero on gold currently. And he's going into a gold composition. We've got Pikeman now coming out from Leary. Desperation Pikeman in defense. He's got 65 villagers against 93 from Hera. Yep. Potentially our last game of the tournament here. As Hera looks for damage, he moves away from that wood line that could have been devastating for Leary. And now Leary is like, enough is enough. He goes for the stone gates in front. He's going to try and protect his trebs. He's moving the Pikeman around. And I don't think there's a world in which these light cap can take out this trebuchet with all of these pikemen around. Should Maybe be. I'm wrong, though. Maybe Should Leary be. can defend this. He repairs. Treb is still alive. Treb is still alive. Hera has sunk a lot of stone into repairing that castle. Remember, he had about 700 stone at one point. Never made another castle because he needed the stone for the repairs. And there's still enough monks to convert camel archers. There's still no way for Hera to break into wow. Leary's base. And now Leary says thanks for the camel archers because my ranged units are garbage. And he's healing them up and he's going to use them as part of his army. And the camel archers are good against the other camel archers. Yep. So suddenly he's got a counter. Maybe Leary has a chance here. Hera very far ahead on Eco. Hera up to the Imperial Age, but Leary's still with the momentum. He's still pushing. He's getting the armor now for his pipe.
Pikeman, 21 of those on the field, and a fourth Treb coming here as Hera discovers <laughs> that TC in the center. That That's Leary's golden come, which is kind of the funny thing, though. Right? Like, if he loses Trebs again, he could be GG. And Hera has wisely taken the golds with the mining camp in the middle. That's something that Leary can't punish because he has to have all of his force in the same spot. What a game here, Dave. Leary catching up on a couple blacksmith upgrades. I don't think you necessarily need that uh, as a big priority long term because you have so much attack Castle on your pikes down. already. The castle does go down. Hera's now housed, and he could lose his MTC. It, bro, Which one is his MTC? I, I don't know. It's the middle one. It oh. is the middle one. That is a natural target if you are Leary. Maybe the guard tower is first and then the MTC, so those might buy him time. Yeah, and also absolutely. the fact that the camel archers and light cap are there. I think the biggest thing for me is we identified the camel archer as Hera's god tier unit in this situation. Where is he producing those from? Yeah. There's no castle that's anymore. A, that's a fair point. And Leary's economy is also really good. Mm -hmm. um, remember, Hera did a great job in the Mongols Chinese game where he was able to get value from the Mangadai that he still had. But, you know, here you, you got to question if 12 Camel Archers are really enough. And you're going to need that gold in the middle. Leary might find you in the middle here in a second. And it feels like Hera's just kind of delaying, right? He's pushing him. He's like, don't go this way. Yeah. Don't it, go this way. You can go that way. It's because. <laughs> It's such a hard unit comp to control, right? Like, you look away for a second and you could lose everything. You could lose the halves of the camel archers and you could lose the monks of the like. I absolutely love the way that Leary is not splitting up his army, though. He's full buddy system yeah, also, with I everything. Love, he stops chopping wood at various points at his base. He sees the bills. Because he's so concerned. He wants more camel archers, for sure. He's valuing those camel archers, and he wants them, for sure. Hera comes in from behind with the light cap. He's only attacking the TC, though. Armor upgrade is coming in from Leary. It's almost as if Hera's like, come back and fight me. Don't pressure my main base. Hussar uh -oh. is coming in from Mary. He's got 50 on food. He can produce, but the halberdiers from Burmese are so strong, and the Trebs are pushing back now. Leary finally with some momentum. 161 population for both. That's about to change, I feel. Yeah, and Hera's trying to get go in. And then a lot of the halves will chase various units here. So he's trying to be patient with this, but he hasn't been able to get the monks, which I think is the biggest thing. The Trebs are taking out some of his buildings, which can add up. But like you said, Dave, the population's high for both. It's just so little potential for Hera to change his position right now. He's doing so much with his mobility, though. Like, the control he's had on these like Kevin Hussars has been insane. It's like he's pressuring Leary back. Leary has to take it one step at a, at a time with this push. Credit to Leary, though, playing so defensively. Finally getting Horse Caller here, so he's going to drop some farms behind, not just relying on fishing ships anymore. Leary is still just protecting yeah. these trebs. The, but the, here's the thing. Hera also doesn't have gold if he's pushed out of the middle, right? So I think Leary could, should maybe be using any units he's converted to send there. Maybe some halves there as well, because what are you going to clear up the halves with? It's so tricky for us to say, though, and it is so much more difficult to control Halb Monk than it is to just control Hussar. Of course, Hussar, though, it dies to the halves. Burmese, or sorry, Berber hand cannons. Not a unit you see all the time. As a bad fight there from Hera, but he runs away, and that means there's less halves over by the Trebs. He's trying to snipe these Trebs once again, but he can't even get one. So good. Leary's push is unstoppable right now. Yeah, this guy's micro is insane, right? Go back to the Chinese-Mongols game, the things he was able to do there, I, maybe no players can do. Uh, how has Hera not been able to bait him out of position yet? Because Hera's tried too so good. many times. He's, yeah, and crazy. he's done such a fantastic job. I feel like any other player would have taken the bait one of these times. But Leary is playing so rigidly yep. around these trebuchets. Hera's trying to expand, but he's down to 31 on food. He was up to 50 when he got to Imperial Age. Also, his eco upgrades are not that great, but can you blame him? He's been under so much pressure here from Leary. And there's the gold villagers from Hera. I feel like we might be in a position to go to a game nine here if Leary keeps this up. Yeah, absolutely. He needs to keep it up because hand cannons are coming out for Hera with what little gold he has. That's a unit that could also be converted by the monks. It's a lot of military. But yeah, exactly. He, imagine if he had 20 hand cannons with the Hussars. Oh, God. Look, every time there's a camel archer, boom, monk converts it. This Man, is sick. Leary is doing such a good job keeping the helms near the trap. I know. I've never seen someone be so consistent with it. Hera just trying to take out another trap from behind. It's attempting to join the party, loses tons of Hussars with that flank attempt. Leary is up at 190 pop. Hera is at 164. The Trebs are still firing there for Leary. The Halberdiers are trying to get damage, and the Monks are converting the hand cannons. Oh, it's so good. And Hera's now out of gold, right? 
Wow, what a game. So many halves here for Leary. Remember, he picked for Mies because he wants to save GG. Byzantines. We will see a game nine. Don't ask me how. And Harrow with a bit of a grin as he gets up, probably to take a break or something in between. It's been a long series. What, an insane, what an insane set. Welcome to NAC4 as I see more people filtering in here. That was crazy. There was a moment there where Leary had 65 vills. Yep. Sure, he had the fishing ships, but it was only like 14. Hera had like 90 or 100 vills going up to Imperial Age. So sick. And you felt like one bad fight, Leary's out of it completely. Hera tried to bait him into bad fights probably 20 times. Leary did not bite. He was so stubborn keeping those halves near the trebs, and he was fully walled behind. This is Leary's moment to win a land right here. He went for the, the I don't know what to say, the, the gutsy move, the move that could be questioned by thousands of people of picking Burmese there mm -hmm. instead of saving Burmese for fortified clearing. He still probably is at a big Civ disadvantage, but if the game goes late against the Turks or the Burgundians, those are Hera's options. I imagine it will be the Byzantines for Leary, and I'm so excited for this game. Hey, viewing party, how you feeling? A show of hands, how are you feeling? I see Tara right there. His hand hands. is probably going to be... How do you show how you're feeling with a hand in up. the air? Up if you're feeling good, down if you're... Uh... Okay, we got one. Tara is very slow. Yeah, there we go. Okay, okay, okay. There's a little bit of a delay there. Hope you guys are having fun. I hope you're having fun if you're watching at home. We are indeed going into the game nine. This is what we all expected. And this is... Well, it's doing justice to the amazing tournament that we've had so yep. far. I, I honestly, though, did not expect this because of the Civ situation. I'm so happy for Leary that he just showed everyone what he could do there. The thing is, with the previous game, if you, you lose those three trebs initially, normally the push is dead, right? And especially because he had he only had gold excess in that middle area for a bit. Yep. Um, again, Im impressive stuff. Uh, now Hera has the big decision of, do I go Turks or do I go Burgundians? Yep. What do you think is, I mean... Yeah, those are his options. Um, forgive me. Which civilization do you go with? The Turks have the crazy late game, but the Burgundians probably have the better economy and better early Imperial Age. I think you go... I think you go Burgundians here. Yeah, with your hair. I agree. Because I think they match up well against the civs that Leary has. I think Turks can struggle potentially against Byzantines. Um, and it's... I don't know. I For me, it's more like, what does Leary pick rather than be, what does Hera take? Because Hera has two solid sieves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And how appropriate, if he went Burgundians, would it be if we ended this on a Flemish revolution so after Leary got that uh, that fourth game against yep. or third game against Hera in their set? That would be amazing. I think, oh, boy. I mean, if we see Ethiopians here, I'll eat a shoe live on stream. There's no way. There's no way we see Ethiopians. We have made these shoe promises before, and he <laughs> never lives up no, to it. No, have I? Really? Never lives up to I've it. I've never said that and not been correct, right? Mm. Yeah, you don't even remember. Get I think he might go Ethiopians. Why? I, because it's Leary, and they're archers. And you could hit a fast stim timing. I don't know. Actually, I mean, <laughs> you do make it's a not a It's a compelling argument. You do, yeah, I was going to say, yeah, I gonna say that's actually, I kind of regret saying the whole shoe thing now. I have to say, it was encouraging. Hera came out here for a second to get a drink, and uh, he was smiling. He was smiling, so that's great. Uh, he's obviously having a ton of fun there against his teammate. And I'm sure they, if you had to ask them what their preferred position would be in this finals, it would be game nine, me against Leary. And, and then one Duking of them it out to see who's then, the best. And then Leary would say, I prefer Burgundians and Turks, though. <laughs> right? <laughs> like, he'd be like, uh, yeah. not having business. Uh, I didn't Ethiopia. want to get to Arena anyway. <laughs> yeah. And there it is. Here we go. Burgundians. Game nine in this crazy final. Thank you, everyone, for watching. This is going to be one for the books. And Byzantines, it is for Leary. Not a civilization we've seen picked at all here at NAC4 on this map. Uh, but while they don't have the eco of the Burgundians and you don't have that long list of bonuses that we're going to show for the Burgundians on the right, you do have an insane late game, which we'll get to. But every single thing there on that right side for the Burgundians is utilized to high-level arena. We've seen the Flemish Revolution end games. Burgundian Vineyards brings tons of resources, not to mention the economic upgrades being cheaper and available in age earlier, and the stable bonuses being cheaper, and the gunpowder units, extra attack, and just everything. Everything is good is for a, Is a stack sieve, and this sieve's yeah. been nerfed like three times and still seems to be dominating. Meanwhile, Whereas, a sieve that's basically never been nerfed. Yeah is the Byzantines since its inception in the Age of Kings. And 
The buildings have more HP. Of course, we know, everyone knows the Byzantines have a wide variety of techs they can go into. Camel Riders, Skirmishers, and Spearmen, 25% cheaper. And you get Town Watch and Town Patrol, in addition to your Monk's Healing, which could come into play here. I would love a situation, Tristan, where we have... Flemish militia against cataphracts. I don't think I've ever seen that. <laughs> that would be amazing. Well, as good as cataphracts. Lucas, thank you. As good as cataphracts are, you do have to remember that there's going to be a lot of Flemish militia if we see the revolution. Yep. It's a numbers thing, not necessarily a unit thing, and it is instant. There was a noise that you hear, but that is when things have already changed. So it is almost impossible to prep for that. But Byzantines for Leary is, I think, his smartest choice. Had he gone for the Burmese here, it's a bit a, a bit hard to explain this because many people are like, well, are Burmese really good on Arena 2? And I think they are. I just truly think that Burgundians and Turks would have just outclassed the Burmese, which is why Leary went for that off-meta pick and got the win in game number 8 the way he did. I think Burmese are better on the more closed versions of Arena rather than this one where you can really expand. Like, if you get outside, if you get castles on the outside, your opponent is going to have to take a long time to go clear that up. Yeah. Whereas, like, normal arena, you can cut out half of this open space, and they are just tunneling right at you, which could be really good with the monks and the Arambai from the Burmese. But the Burmese are not here. We have the Byzantines, so we have to question from Leary, what is the opening? Is it like a 3TC play into a forward castle, yeah. faster Imperial Age? You know, I'll be honest with you, Dave. I struggle to know what to do here as the Byzantines. Because it's not a close a, a close map. It is a closed map that's not close, right? So you can't truly be aggressive. Um, if you just boom, the Burgundians. I mean, it's cheaper eco upgrades and a freaking age earlier, right? So they're, then they're going to get the the lead. I think the key, really, you have to accept you're going to be behind in a lot of different ways. Is don't give Hera the map in mid castle. I would like to see early pikemen. I'd like to see pikemen patrolling the map because Hera might want a forward castle. Uh, fast trebuchet timing here to end this game quick. Oh boy. We, there's a reason we haven't seen Byzantines on this map yet in the tournament. Yep. And it's sure. because there are a lot of better civ options. For sure. being one of those if we're playing the meta. The question is, does Leary have something off meta or is he just going to stick to his strengths, which is archers, fast imperial, and try and snowball? Yeah, I, actually, here's a question for you. So, what stage of the game is Byzantines best? Early imp? Early imp. Or. Super, Super late, late game. Like in. after yes. the gold runs out. Yes. And Burgundians are not bad in that stage either. Yeah, I know. That's why. It's they so have tricky. the farms bring in the gold. But I think the thing that Burgundians might actually struggle with is crazy trash spam. Mm -hmm. I don't even know if they get champion. Oh, God. The, I mean, the, the situation's so prepped for revolution, right? Hera tries to push. Leary, 50 skirms, 50 halves. Hera runs out of things to the do. The problem against Hera Byzantines revolution. with revolution is you can never kill the castle. <laughs> true, true, So true, much true, HP, true. right? Like, this is all theory crafting from us as we wait to see what the strategies are going to be. We've got Hera going up with 23 villagers to the feudal age. We've got 24 villager uptime here from Leary, and Hera's going to be in a position to go fast castle. Same with Leary, although Leary is a villager behind. And no horse collar there from Where? Hera before the first round of farms. Not surprising. Hera usually likes to get horse collar before the second round. Yeah. I, I think, you know, the, the thing with champion being an option against Halb Skirm, we saw a two and a half hour game where Yo with fully upgraded champions with the Bohemians, mm -hmm. he couldn't do crap. And he said Hussars. champions were a mistake. He said champions were a mistake. And, and then uh, you add on top of that, that the opponent has a unit which shreds infantry in the cataphract. So I don't think champion, even if it's available for Burgundians, will be utilized. And actually, have you ever seen champion from Burgundians? Uh, no, I don't know if they have it, and there's a I reason we they, wouldn't see it, because yeah, yeah, they have yeah, yeah. so many other options yeah. that it, are good at what champion is good yeah. against. It falls into the category of, even if they get it, you should never make it in a in a ideal We should scenario. have, like, the, instead of the Civ overview button, we should have the Tech Tree button that pops up. Yeah, so we can scroll through it with listen, the Listen, we, we might not always seem the smartest, but we are really good with relevant information. Sure. <laughs> way, way, to, way to agree with me there, Dave. All right, guys. Well, 26 villagers in Dark Age versus 25 villagers in Dark Age. So Hera going up a little bit faster. Resources collected already extending for Hera. Um, I'm a, oh, they're all, both on the way to Castle Age. Excuse me, I got that wrong. So relevant information incorrect. 
Um, but yeah, Dave, I mean, it's just going to be a boom fest here. I'm not really sure what much, what more to say besides the fact that I actually think we're going to see the button in this game. Uh, we might. We might, and we might see a successful counter to the button. I think if any Civ is going to withstand the Flemish Revolution, the Byzantines have a good shot. Yeah. A really, really good shot, especially if Leary has a few castles set up. And they your have walls access. are still up? Yeah, the, like hand cannons, you can go into Arbalist, and usually the revolution fails when there's a big ball of range units yeah. that can just hide behind castles and pick them off one at I a think, time. I think, though, in the event Hera's going to lose, he should never resign without clicking said mm -hmm, button. Mm -hmm. And if he already knows he's going to win, he had that happen to him from Leary in group stage. So that's why I think we're going to see that button. But look at this. Leary seems to value the Byzantines highly. He picked them five times out of seven drafts, sniped them in the other two drafts. Also, this is my last stat for NAC4. Thanks for letting me stats be a part of this. Stats guy. Let's stats get a round guy. of applause for stats guy. Nerf wait, Box wait, here. Wait a second. He's been wait pumping out those stats wait. towards production the Hold entire on. time. Hold on. I appreciate you, stats guy. It's Castle Age, baby. Come on. We can't get We've another got stat. We've got at least three more stats. <laughs> exactly. I, I had higher expectations. But no, we appreciate you, stats guy. He's been with us this whole journey. Yes, and he he's has. Been, he's been amazing in combination with production. All right, four, T, uh, <laughs> four TCs. Three TCs probably eventually into a four TC boom for both. Notably, neither player really going for the early monastery or trying to add scouts. I'm surprised what the resources collected, though. It's actually even. Yeah, it's fairly even. I mean, Leary went up a villager later to Feudal Age, right? So that's going to add up over time. But now we're going to start seeing those eco upgrades kick in. Yep. And Leary will be a little bit slower to the second and third town centers than Hera. But resources collected, like you said, super close. Yeah, I think the boom is going to be much smoother for Hera. Uh, he shouldn't have as much problem producing villagers out of the three TCs, but this is all to be expected. No real mistakes from Leary. Leary actually added another villager in Dark Age, so he'd be able to do this a little bit smoother. Mm -hmm. um, but Hera, of course, has the civilization. He picked Turks and Burgundians on his draft in the same wave. We've seen Turks against Burgundians many times, uh, but uh, you know, in that instance when Hera was drafting, he clearly wanted to eliminate an initial arena sieve. Wish and I could play like these guys. So do I. <laughs> I, I, uh, I thought the guy who donated was named Dave for a second. <laughs> I was like, there's another Dave Relatable. out there. Relatable. Yeah, very good. So we continue on here watching the scouts. We've seen zero units killed, zero units lost, and we wait, Dave. We wait to see what the decision is. It's a very happy hippo right now, if you look at uh, Leary's point of view, though, I think. It's a very. It looks cheerful. Is that actually Nilly's little, like, kissing hippo thing? Is that what that's supposed no, to be? No, if you want, do you, if you want the true story behind this map, John Slow actually told me. Okay. That uh, they wanted, so there was a map submission contest, right? Yep, yep. And uh, he was disappointed that there was not no as many arena. closed maps. Of course, of course. So he said, as a troll, one of his viewers generated this image on top of arena, <laughs> and then submitted it as a joke, and, and nearly accepted nearly... it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, wait, wait, wait. Was there a map script made, or was it just like a mini map thing? Because there are other aspects of yeah, this yeah, map. Yeah, yeah. I think I think really he cool. generated as a mini map thing, and then they scripted in the other okay. resources later. Yeah. I was gonna say because the yeah. the thing I like about this arena, you know, forgetting about the hippo, is how expansive it is, mm -hmm. and it has produced more unique arena games. It is. It it hasn't been bad, honestly, and yeah. it's given us that clown perspective that we all know and uh, sometimes love. Mm -hmm. Hasn't been super clowny. I'm sure John Slow, who's at the viewing party right now, would be disappointed by the lack of monks, mm -hmm. the lack of all-ins, and the lack of struggling to micro. But these guys have plenty of micro. And 52 villagers versus 51 resources collected. Again, I'm surprised. Uh, 8,400 resources collected for Hera. Ooh, big engagement coming up here. Leary's going to engage against the scout. Who's it going to be? Mono heal, a mono. Heal He's fast. sending a villager. He can also heal. heal fast with the monk. And I think if he heals right now, he might be able to turn around and go pat back to hit that scout. And this is the most action we've had in this game, which is weird for such a tense situation yep. in Game 9 of our Grand Finals. But finally, we get some military production. It is a stable from Harris. He's sitting at 57 villagers with Wheelbarrow. Leary at 54. Missing Wheelbarrow, just getting it in now. 
and missing the farm upgrade, second farm mm. upgrade as well. Okay, so Hera's going to add units for map control, which has been standard here. And if Leary senses this in any way, shape, or form, he should be doing the same. We have two monks for both players. The whole series has been close. This game has been close, but again, to restate it, felt like Hera was sitting on this civilization or the Turks just to wait for this point in the event we got to game number nine arena. Hera should just heal up the scout. He's gonna... No, 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 it'll die. No, uh, I think you heal up the scout. Uh, okay, yeah, you heal up the scout, yeah. you were right. That was he really doesn't close. doesn't convert, because if you convert, Leary just backs away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It like was, you heal I, it up. I think it was two hits away from going down, but the healing was just enough there. Now Harris got the advantage, and he's on the prowl, but there's more monks coming out from Leary, and this is all we have to look at as more scouts are being added from Hera. Two monks here from Heal. No, Leary. No, no, he's convert. going to try and convert here. He's got two months working away. Doesn't get it, but he's going to heal up his scout. Yeah. Potentially. Uh, and he gets one relic. It, it just it feels like ludicrous right now against a civilization Univer that has that eco University, and that has cheaper though. stable units to not have spearmen right now. With University right now from Leary, though. And he's about to click up. He's about to click up to Imperial Age. And I think he's oh. going to go for that castle approach. He's got two spearmen in the queue. And as long as he saves this monk, I think he'll be fine. He's got two more monks behind that. So if Hera wants to come in here, it's a big risk. There's two more monks behind this. He could potentially uh -oh. even make the case for healing up his monks in front. Two conversions might come in. They don't come in. Leary is visibly disgusted with that conversion timing. And, and maybe disgusted about the lack of spearmen, right? Like every single game you're seeing here is stable units for map control and your Byzantines with cheap spears. Mm -hmm. Leary moving out early. Hera with two relics behind this and has grown with his resources collected. I think, honestly, Tristan, if you heal up with those two monks behind with Byzantine healing, you can get at least two of those scouts Maybe. with the monks in front. Yeah, I mean, scouts are... <laughs> I'm laughing at the reactions from some people. Scouts are meant to do well in those situations. Yeah, they have it, resistance. They have resistance, right? Yeah. So it's still not a situation that you necessarily want to be in if you're Leary. He did actually toss away his scout prior to that, hoping to buy his monks time too, which kind of hurts, because Hera can move out and get relics uncontested. Fourth barracks. And the stone is rising, and I wouldn't be surprised to see villagers come out here soon. Yeah. He's also adding another monastery, which is very interesting yep. for Leary, as Hera now stretches out towards that TC. Does he have loom this time with his villagers? I'm pretty sure he does. It, like, no, he might die to another bear, but the bear is slow. You need, a, you need a progression in these games, ideally, right? I go for this. It forces him into that. After that, I've got this prepared. You want to be the first person to set the pace there and set the way the game is going to work. Oh, Vodka knows exactly what to look at right now. That bear is weak. Yeah, the bear's not going to get the kill there. Right now, from what I'm seeing, Leary's got maybe two steps left. He's going to go forward castle, trebuchet, halbs, then maybe adapt from there. If Hera clicks chemistry right away, he knows that this is a threat. Hera's going to have bomber cannons prepared, but it will be a Byzantine castle it'll be up against. And I'm not even sure if the castle will be forward at all from Leary yet. Why make this many pikemen if you're not going to go for a forward castle Agreed. here? Agreed. You're, he's sending the villagers. Oh my god, this whole build up, this whole, all these nine games for this moment as Leary comes forward with the villagers. The parade is on the march is here. Hera it's on the move, and the villagers are coming forward with the pikemen, now being halberdiers and it the monks. Is Hera going to go Bombard Cannon Revolution? Is he just immediate revolution? Oh, Hera's going to Hera's going to use this tech in this way to try and get it out of the game right now. Like, holy crap. Dude, this is risky, though. So risky. So risky. What? It, like He's not going to go for it immediately, surely. He's adding more TCs, dude. And One, a back two, castle? three, four, five, six, okay. seven, eight, nine this TCs. Is okay, so what you need, right? You need chemistry because the key, as you said earlier, Dave, is you need the Flemish militia, which will be your villagers, uh, and then siege. And if he does it, there's no counter. If, if Leary sees no that, counter. if Leary sees that, the first tech you go for, fortified wall. The very first tech you go for is fortified wall, and then you try and find value against those bomber cannons. You what do you see, the though? Flemish militia. The thing is, the tech is instant, right? It, yeah, but it's you, not see the you see the notification. I think there's time. There's and time. Hera run? needs to move across the, the map, right? Okay, yeah. And Hera, before he clicks this, he's going to need to get a bunch of bomber cannons or trebs set up. He's going for a castle right now. I think it's going <laughs> to You're going to need, like, probably, f like, four bomber cannons, three trebs or something. Yep. To really make it work. Does because Hera Leary has a decent eco behind this, and he's going into chemistry, which means... 
He can go for hand cannons as well. Oh my goodness. Does Hera? Oh, they're doing it again. He's walling him in, bro. The Hera special and the Leary special. Can I see if Hera knows about that castle? I assume he does. I'm just not 100% because that's kind of big here. Okay, so he's known about that for a bit. So yeah, he's hoping to push back and all in. Leary, uh, Hera doesn't see the walls. Imagine he clicks the button, he comes out here, he's fully walled in. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's just so much walling, right? And Hera's escaped. What will be interesting, when I reboom with the uh, revolution, you, you use all your TCs and you just click them randomly to farms. Yep. Three of Hera's TCs are not on food eco. So if they would become army, and then he's creating villas out of all of his TCs. I, he does have five at home, which is great. But man, Harris is waiting now. He's just he's waiting as long as possible so he can get as many villagers as possible because he doesn't feel like there's any way to stop 200 military. Well, he might wait too long because the hand cannons are already coming out here and hit chemistry isn't even in for Harris. So he's going to have to wait for these bomber cannons to accompany the trebs. Three trebs is not going to be enough to clear all of this up. And Leary has a decent economy behind this. Leary doesn't see any military from Hera. Imagine going for this strat in game nine. Yeah. Hera is trying something completely different. It might work. Every time we've seen the revolution in this tournament, it's worked three separate times. Will this be the time that it fails? Will Leary get the vision he needs to know what Hera is up to? Yeah, he, he must be so confused. And he's probably like, okay, no one's going to just open revolution, right? You can, but I mean, Burgundians have so right many now? other bonuses. What else right now? Yeah. The only other thing Hera could be doing is like building a paladin army in the back of his base, <laughs> but like you don't do that against Byzantine Dave, helms. Hand cannons have a bonus against infantry. Yes. Cataphracts have yes. a bonus against infantry. And Byzantines have more HP and on Byzantines their buildings. And Byzantines have more HP. Literally, if there was a civ designed to stop the revolution, the Byzantines I, are that civilization. Honestly, dude, I feel like Leary needs to be making squares in the middle of the map to put his hand cannons. Oh my god. Here we comes. go. This Here we is go. wild. Here is the Flemish revolution. The button has been pressed and the military advances. Is Leary packing up? He's going home, okay. and he's going to try and defend. Hera will have zero eco for a moment, and Leary is just going to run. He's like, I'm out of here. And all the walls crumble here from Hera. He hopes for the same thing on Leary's base. Leary going for another castle at the back. Fortified wall tech is not coming in yet. He's running with everything yes. he has. Leary is absolutely terrified. Because you can't, you can't fight it, right? You just don't have numbers. You have counters. You have this. You have that. You cannot fight it. The hope now is that you can fall back, get a big enough mass of hand cannons, like 50 or 60, and then Hera can't make more. I'm shocked Hera is trying this. I, I love it from an entertainment standpoint. Can Leary regroup and push this back? It's 180 infantry streaming across the map, and he's got four trebs on get the field the with walls. four trebs in the queue. Get behind the once walls. These, once these Flemish militia die, the trebs will start coming out. He's cr producing villagers get behind, behind too. Behind the walls, dude. There's more coming, and Hera's got the trebs ready. I like how Hera skipped. He's actually taking out the first castle with Flemish militia, and he's trying to go for the other ones. There's hand cannons outside the walls, Dave. You don't have enough to stop this. You're going to lose everything if fortified, you're Leary. Fortified wall is coming in from Leary. Hera's going to work away on that castle. The Flemish militia count has gone down by 30. Villagers now in the queue from Harry. He's only got 10 on food right now, so he's struggling to produce vills behind this. He's got the trebs working away on the castle. Cataphract's coming out now. More hand cannons here from Leary. Will Hera be able to do enough damage? Will Leary be able to survive? Wild game nine here at NAC4. And fortified wall is so coming much. in, but it's too late. Leary literally did everything that we said maybe Hera could have tried when Leary Another was against him. He's run. He's trying to wall. He's Byzantines. He's making cataphracts with hand cannons. The, he's playing a defense scenario right now. We have a defense scenario from Leary as he tries to stop the Horde. He's found himself an interesting choke point there in between the barracks and the archer range. The castle still being repaired. Leary has plenty of stone. It is a wave that he needs to stop. Hera needs to do damage here. 128. Flemish Militia still on the field. Hera still pumping out villagers and another castle coming in behind from Leary. Didn't go for any of the other bonuses that the Burgundians have. A sieve that's just stacked with bonuses and Hera sending a message to Leary. You did it to me to bring a game back from the dead in the group stage. I will do it to Leary you to close out away, the though. finals. Leary picking away though, Tristan. Like you look at the villager count from Leary, he's at 107. Those hand cannons have so many kills. The castles have a ton of kills. He the first castle goes down. Hera only one treb inside though. And Hera's down to 93 Flemish militia and he's only got 50 vills behind this. The trebs are bumping up against themselves trying to get in. This might have bought Leary enough time.
I, I don't know, Dave. You don't have gold, right? Hera will have a similar vill count to you in a bit because he's producing more vills. I, I fear for Leary that he's only going to max out at the 20 hand cannons. And so many cataphracts trebs. aren't good enough. The, the, the unit's insane. And the so numbers matter trebs. so much. So many trebs here from Hera. And this is what you need behind this. You need the siege. And Hera made sure that he had the siege numbers to push Leary's base with. He's going in with his final Flemish militia. He's down to 60 now. The hand cannons have so many kills. 71 kills on those hand cannons. Hera's still trying to kill the economy and the hand cannons from Leary, but the Trebs are working away and they have demolished that castle. Leary's got scouts coming up from behind this. Lightcap, he's trying to create choke points for himself. He's trying anything desperately to survive. In game nine, Hera though is in the center of his economy. Yeah, and again, look at the Vil count. Hera will have more villagers. Hera still has the relics. Hera can go for other things now. This is not a one and done technology. This is a technology that if you prep for, you could be anything because I think the Byzantines are the best civilization to stop it. I feel for Leary right now, Dave. He's trying so desperately, but I mean, seven hand cannons, three light calves, 73 villagers. He can't win this game. Well, if he takes out those trebs, he's got maybe a glimmer of hope because the Flemish militia numbers are very low. Hera, though, we look at his economy. He's already up to 91 bills. Yep. He's already back up to 91 bills because he was fully prepared for what was going to happen. Leary weathers the first storm as he now stretches out with the hand cannons and the light cap trying to take out the siege. But he's not even, like, it, soon he's not even going to be half the villager count of Hera. Yep. And now Hera can say, well, actually, you know what's unique? You can actually produce Flemish militia out of your town centers. I don't think you should, but you can. Um, but, you know, he can go for other units. So we see ballistics for Hera, which might just be for his castle. We see husbandry. We see some of the uh, unique unit. Yep. Normally, the order's a little different, right? You see the unique unit, you see the light cab, you see this, you see that, then you see the, the militia. And he calls the GG, GG Hera, winning NAC4 dominant run Woo! from him in a game nine, and that is the fourth Flemish revolution. We've seen this tournament, they've won every single time. The Canadian taking it home. Feels really bad to lose like that if you're Leary, but I'm sure he's like, well, I did it to Hera him. Plan it's in the game. Did Hera it planned him. for it. Yep. Hera had it all set up perfectly and, like, the courage to go for a strategy so, like that yes. in game nine. I mean, you have to have a lot of comfort in that technology if you're going for it as the opening against the Byzantines. I just, I love the storyline, right? We, we talked about it in Dark Age. We weren't entirely sure. And the fact that Leary won an unwinnable game with it uh, in a very different situation in the group stage is beautiful. That was the perfect final of NAC4. And uh, feels bad for Leary, obviously, yep. but you can't say Hera didn't deserve it. Hera played incredibly well. Uh, and the big thing I'll bring it back to with Hera is not just his height, uh, not, not physical height, of course, but like the height that he can reach with his play, it's but it's the consistency. Yep. The consistency across the entire series is always so good. And like it, feel, it feels terrible for Lear because that's, like we said, that's another land final that he can't make it through, but he's always in the final game scenario. Yeah. He's always here. He fights back, right? He went down two games, and then he won three in a row. Yep. I don't think we expected that against this level of Hera. And then Hera fought back again, and of course we get to a ninth game, and he just has insane... Like I said, insane courage to go for an unorthodox strategy like that in that position. Yeah. It is wild. Big smile on Hera's face. We've got Leary as well in the couch, teammates, and they are just at the height, the highest level I think Age of Empires has ever seen uh, in terms of skill. And congratulations. Yeah, congratulations to both of them, obviously, yep. and to Hera, who we'll talk to in a bit. I'm not really sure on the plans here, if we're doing the interviewing and whatnot. Seems like we are, so we might as well head to the couch. You want to go take a take a seat over there? I'll guide you in. What? I'll guide you in. What, what does that to even mean? To the interview. All transition. We're in a finals here. We've got 25,000 people watching. We've got to be smooth with it. You've got to be picking up what I'm putting down here, Tristan. Go over there. I'll guide the camera in, and then I'll join you in a second, okay? Thank you, everyone, for watching. We're going to take you to the interview couch here with Hera, our champion, T9, and, of course, Leary, his teammate from Aftermath. Tristan, take it away at NAC, uh, NAC4, excuse me, uh, to the right of me and to the left of you, I have Hera, the champion, and then I have Leary right here. It was an amazing series. Uh, Hera, I'll just keep it simple here. How do you feel right now? 
it uh, feels amazing, of course. It's a really, really big tournament. And honestly, I'm really proud of both of us for how well we performed. The final was a literal coin flip. I mean, it was last game, could have went either way. So big GG well played to Leary, and I'm really just proud of both of us. Obviously, happy to take it, but you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, Leary, is a long series. Eventually, we're going to break down specifics here. I've got to ask, considering you guys played in the group stage, how, uh, like, what were you thinking when you heard that little roar that goes when the Flemish Revolution's research? I already thought that he had something prepared like that, but um, hopefully it's going to get nerfed after this. <laughs> okay, no, no, gotcha. no. Removed, not nerfed. Removed, removed not nerfed. Uh, Has to be viable removed. anymore. I mean, Beleza said it. You've said it. I don't know. I mean, Hera, was there... I'll save my questions for that till later yeah. on, right? It was a really long series. So we open up the series. Hera, you go for Magyars, a sieve that I feel is very strong, but we just haven't seen a lot in the earlier rounds. Tell me why it's such a comfort pick for you. Um, because the Graveyards is game one, uh, you know, we're not, we're both not playing the sharpest and, it, you know, it's uh, a lot of mistakes could happen. I feel like Maggers was a good pick for that. You get the cheaper scouts, the extra attack, so a lot of aggression uh, can be put. But I think his defense was really stellar early on until, of course, my scouts started to pick up a number. Yeah, gotcha. And then, Leary, what do you think went wrong for you in this game? Opening strategy. Opening strategies. You, yep. you shouldn't have gone scouts? Uh, I didn't like my scout approach. It okay. just plays into uh, to the hands of Magyars too much. Oh, gotcha. Well, you did shift into archers there. You did try archer spearmen, but Hera, pretty comfortable. They just stay on stable units all game. And there wasn't enough uh, in defense there for Leary as Hera took down game one. Felt pretty convincing, right? But like you had said, Hera, like game one, maybe both players aren't feeling quite as sharp. Uh, game two is interesting. You had to delete your lumber camp. You lost a villager here. We, I assume you were surprised by this. Uh, it's funny because I should have not been surprised, but I was very surprised by it. Like I was super caught off guard. Uh, it's just that, um, you know, I've seen it before in the group stage, so I should have known about it, but that was a big mistake from me and uh, a really nice siege push from him as well here. Yeah, absolutely. Like Leary, typically I say, and I, I just can't handle the cumins one way or another, but typically it's Siege Workshop first. Did you just have the impression that this was going to go late and that's why you opted for the town centers? Mm, yeah, I thought I did enough damage. That I'm still going to do enough damage, so that's why I went for the eco approach. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you did, right? And I think that's just like most players just can't micro like you did. Hera, you had some problems here, right? Like you, you had snuck out to this stone yeah. in the first place, got the TC up, but then he spotted it and you started to lose everything. So what were you thinking at this point of the game? You know, at that point, I felt like I was pretty lucky to have that area for so long. If he scouted me earlier, it would have been a lot harder yeah. because I needed that golden stone that I was taking. So I was quite fortunate. I knew I would lose it, but I just tried to expand on the bottom at that point. Okay. Um, obviously, it was a really big risk moving out, but I had to because the game was very lost. Yep. Talk to me about your approach here. Uh, Cumin's great late game sieve for spamming Hussar, one of your favorite units, but outcrop a map with a lot of gold. You didn't really try and go for the raid approach here. You just kind of tried to, you know, hit him in the face, I guess you could say. Why is that, and, and how do you think it worked out? Yeah, I felt like it's really hard to raid him. I mean, look how he's positioned his castles. So every time I go for raids, I'm losing 510 Paladin, and they're really expensive. So I wanted to make... Uh, you know, the raids happen only when I have the trebs, so that I can actually break the castles. Did Paladin surprise you, Leary? Um, not really. I should have come for Camel, though. Okay, so Camel earlier. Not Flaming Camel? I have no clue what that is. <laughs> <laughs> I was calling for it. I think with the way it panned out, probably Heavy Camel was the safer play there. Uh, Hera wins that game. All right, this game was pretty insane. Uh, but, you know, for you, Hera, it kind of all fell apart in Dark Age. Yeah. Was it bad enough where you just said, oh, God, I'm up against Portuguese and I'm down this bad early, I should lose this game? Or did you still feel like, you know, you had a chance there, Feudal Age, Castle Age? I mean, it didn't show it here, but his, uh, his play in Dark Age with the villager was really smart. Yeah, he yeah. caught me off guard, he killed my vill, and he denied my dock at 68%. So... From that point, it was really hard. I still felt like I had some winning chances if I did everything else right and if he made some mistakes, but unfortunately, he was just too sharp with it. And in fact, uh, you know, he was the guy still uh, taking more and more advantage as the game goes on. Yeah, absolutely. And at that point, I really have no questions for you, Leary, because it was so dominant. I don't mind. Yeah, okay. I'm sure you're. Uh, you're I thought tired. I had something going, uh, going for me at the last push, but then I see 20 nights and I'm like, okay. <laughs> I guess not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And at that point, we thought you were going to resign, and you, you just attack around your own crossbows, which is, I enjoyed. I really enjoyed that. I, I like doing that because, like, you go out with a bang, you know, one way or yeah. another. It just affects the KD a little bit more. I, I was going to attack around the knights because I thought it was three, and then I saw 20. I'm like, okay, the crossbow, nah. the crossbow's <laughs> got to get hit, you know? <laughs> yeah. I, I'm going to assume production was like, oh, we need that highlight. So before we move on to the next game, we can watch that. But uh, it was a pretty clean game from you, Leary. 
And I, I think both of you feel like Portuguese are easy top five, right? Civ wise? Yeah. 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 With but a mixed it, map pool as well, right? It's not like it was a Civ win here, though, because Japanese are probably right up there as well. Yeah. So. But if Japanese lose fish early, it's like that's one of your main bonuses, absolutely. Yeah. And they don't show it, of course. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, okay, no. <laughs> okay, uh, Hera, talk to me about your approach here. It feels like every game players have just gone for water v. water here. You had the Britons versus the Malay. Mm, I should have went Mongols. In fact, I wanted to go Mongols here um, just because I was really scared of uh, some of the water sieves he had. But with Britons, I wanted to go scout opening to not fight early water versus Malay. Yeah. And I got a lot of value. I'm actually not, not sure where this game went wrong, to be honest. I mean, from my perspective, it felt like insane value with the scouts. This is where you both didn't realize God. that you were killing. You're both like, I'm killing so many bills. And then you both realize later how bad it was. Um, but from my perspective, maybe just scouting, Hera. It was really tricky from Leary. Leary, are, do you like demo ships? I'm starting to like them more and more, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think there was like two demos that you ran directly into. Uh, there's another unit that you made a lot in this series, which uh, I'm not sure you start queuing up now. There's you getting some value. But at this point, you don't have Galleon. I guess you do have Bracer, I suppose. But you're going crazy Monks, dude. You've got 14 Monks with the Malay. Yeah. Uh, I just feel like Monks are the go-to unit instead of Navy, I guess? Yeah, if you have the middle control, then yeah, it should be pretty good. Okay. Obviously, didn't have range units, so it worked out. Okay. Yeah, Monks are super OP if you can defend them. So... Uh, you know, he just has 10 monks and he sits on them, and it's so much harder for me to engage on that. Yeah, and I guess you don't have to move around on this map, yeah. right? So the fact that you don't have to be in different positions, and you, for example, trying to hit different areas doesn't really hit the main goal of the map. Yeah, I could see how that would be the case. Uh, Leary, you had two wins in a row here, tied it up 4-4. Four, four. Um, was there any surprise for you two? Like, you went up two games. I'm sure you recognize that Leary could always win two straight to tie it up, right? I think he can win five straight. You have to be super careful. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. So this I, is this yeah. is a big moment. Sorry to interrupt you yeah, here as we're moving through here. Harry, did you know that you went unchecked here with his scout? This is Hare, This is a uh, <laughs> uh, Leary's point of view, uh -huh. and he was trying to keep track of your range. I was curious if you sensed that he didn't have a scout around that range. Oh no, I, I thought he saw my range. I was just sneaking the archers. I thought my archers were sneaking. No, no, no. He did know the range. To be oh, clear, okay. he just I, I was you know as a casting position there, saying that he was looking to see when you would run forward. Is all. Uh no, I just I, I sent them forward and prayed that I get there. <laughs> okay, gotcha. How sweaty was this defense here, Hera? Because Leary's micro was like off the chain yeah, in this game. Yeah, that, that was perfect. Basically, he put the skirms in front and he micro back the weak eight expo and then just went forward. It was like. Yeah, really bad for me here. Like, it, even later in the game, I think it, the man had five Mangadals all moving simultaneously and dodges every single shot yeah. to try and get yeah, on this him. This is just going to be a micro highlight at this point. Yeah. But, uh, like, after the fight that we had just seen prior to this, when you went to do damage in early cast with fast ballistics and ran into Elite Skirm, did you, like, what, what percentage would you give Mongols as far as chances at that point? Because uh, it fe feels like the dominating conversation is Chinese in mid game, which is so much stronger. I felt like I, I had only one win condition, which I talked to Leary before, which is the uh, Onager's Mangadai. Okay, okay. And, and he told me you'll never get there versus a solid player. <laughs> and, I, and I didn't get there. Like, it, you know, in theory, I, I went for a Mega Boom, and if he doesn't push me, maybe I can. But obviously, his siege push was so deadly from that hill that it's just, uh, yeah, too much pressure from him. Did you expect Onager then because of that conversation? Yeah, I knew it was his only way out, right? That's the only thing he has against like, Arbalest, so yeah. it was his only play. You took zero shots, though. <laughs> <laughs> I got no value from the Onagers, <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah, you even killed an Onager with like six arbs underneath your town center. It's oh. probably one of those where you're just like, I'll finally kill those. And then it didn't happen. By yeah. the way, Dave, feel free to chime in here. Were you banking you. towards drill, or were you? No. Did you prioritize Hussar first? Yeah, I couldn't afford yeah. drill. I think I felt like I had to go Hussar. Drill would be nice, obviously, in an ideal world, so I can actually hit some shots. But I felt like I'd rather just go for the be lucky approach rather than uh, you know the safe play with drill. I mean, Leary, you had 40 Hussars run into your base at one point. Did you did you begin to sweat at that point and think, oh crap, I could actually lose this? Mm, well, at that point, I was just buying the castle and getting cameras out, so I, sh I should have been fine. And okay. I was fine. I knew it was fine. I gotcha. Yeah. Was there any like, I, I guess like learning from the game where you feel like you should have added camels? You'd said game two, you needed to have camels out earlier, or was it just completely different? I guess kind of underestimating paladins and overestimating CA. Okay. Like, probably. Gotcha. Both Fair enough. Kinda. Well, this game was very interesting. We had early aggression, which isn't shown here. I think this is actually near the end of the game. But Hera, uh, I'm sure you played plenty of practice games with this guy. 
were you always the water player and then you expected the landings? Did you expect maybe in the Dravidian matchup that there'd be a landing? What was going through your mind matchup wise uh, in I, the openings? I like quote unquote knew he would go men at arms uh, because I scouted the barracks and it's a yeah, strategy. Yeah. It's, it's actually a very strong strategy. So I had to prepare for that. But what surprised me was the three archers and how fast they came. Okay. So I took some damage on land earlier, but honestly, the game becomes so like anything can happen that you're never really dead. That, that, that's how I feel. I don't know what Leary thinks about it, but like there's so many ways to come back or to like play the mid game. Mm, it's hard to kill, like hard to destroy anyone. Like either on land or on water, there's always a way out. How many yeah. times have you fought with that ship before? Before this day? Zero times. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. That are ship you, is really good. Impressed? I would have resigned way early, but I wanted to make the unit. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's amazing. It miraculously saves me. Also, frigid lake here, Leary. You seem frustrated after this game, right? Like you had a I good was. opening, and it seemed like Hera just had all the right micro engagements, and he got every single demo you tried to send at him. It I got more pissed at myself because I was doing knights, and knights is the worst unit in the game right now since there are monks in the game. <laughs> And yeah, that's about it. I think I look, I'm pretty sure I gifted him more knights than I killed units with my knights. So yeah, that's the story of this game pretty much. Yeah, it's one of those things that snowballs on you when you commit to that many monks. Mm. Uh, and Hera, you were pretty confident with the crossbows and the monks on the water. Talk me through that a little bit. You have to be, because if you try to run, run around, like you waste so much time running around on attack than running around on defense. So. I realized you just have to be confident running through demos, and obviously there's a massive risk, but I was paying more attention than usual. Yeah, yeah and crossbows yeah. one shot it anyways. Yeah. At this point, I think soon after this, Leary had to tap out, uh, taking it to 4-3 Hera, and I was like, I was asking big questions about the draft at that point, uh, because I knew that, I thought, sorry, you would go Burmese, uh, as Leary got the quick wall down here. This was actually after you guys had to do a restart, by the way. Yeah. And I was thinking, this would be so unfortunate for Leary, who got his dock down prior to the re, to then lose the villager. Ay, ay, ay. But Leary, okay, you pick Burmese here. I assume it's because you wanted to save Byzantines for later on. Yep. Okay. And do you start to lose these villagers? You, you feeling desperate at this point? Mm, I, mean, I still knew he had no gold, right? And he's, and he's Berber, so... Not really an eco bonus, and the only thing he can do is, is light calf. So I knew as long as I would somehow survive, push this castle, and like a decent eco behind, I would still have a chance, and worked out. I thought I would win after this engagement, actually. I thought this one went really well for me, but it only hit me after that he had a good economy behind it. I thought he was 1TC, and normally when he's 1TC, one fight like that and you win, but his economy was good enough to just rebuild it, and his units were like so much stronger than mine. Bro, you tried to bait him into so many engagements, and he just never bit yeah. anything. Zero mistakes. Like the, the one mistake is near the castle, that first fight. Like, barely I had some opening, but after that, yeah, he played really well. Like, and there's really not much I can do here. This is just a really good uh, push from him. Yeah, it was interesting. Like, you, you did it. I, I feel like you forced every fight you had to. Yeah. You, you got onto the gold, but yeah, then we get here. Game number nine, you had Byzantines. This is what I wanted to ask you about. How do you counter this? How do you stop this tech? I don't think you do. If Probably done properly, you have to expect it, and uh, maybe I could go cataphracts, but like not really realistic either. What do you think, Hera? Like, wh obviously, let's say you go into this, and he knows you're going to open Flemish, I or you know you have the option for Flemish. What do you do against it? Well, the only way to counter it is gimmicky stuff like fortify walling, three layers, taking the relics, buying so much time. Um, and if I see him do anything gimmicky, I just don't do it. Okay. Um, but if he tries to play the game normally in any way, if I just go boom to 200 bills and then do it, it's an auto win. Uh, and this is one thing I want to talk about the Flemish Revolution because normally people do it as like a backup plan. But I was talking about it all week saying if you make that your main plan, it's super broken. Yeah. And so this game I was finally able to make it my main plan and it was like that tech just it, like has to be removed because it's a competitively way too unfair. And, and arguably you could always open with something somewhat standard and then go yeah. Flemish Rev as well. Um, wh here's, here's a question. Obviously, you play to win, right? If a text in the game, whether you like it or not, you got to use it. Was there a, did that enter your mind to open with it because of that funny game that you guys had in the group stage earlier in the week? Was there a bit of like, all right, you did it to me. Now I don't feel bad doing it to you. Um, like that's a nice storyline, but I was just thinking about like, it's so broken. I have to use it. Okay. Not, not really that, like he got, he got me with it, you know? Okay. It's, gotcha. one, it's one one on the friendless revolution between us. So we'll see what happens next. All right. Awesome. Um, well, you know, again, congratulations, Hera. Congratulations, Leary. It was a great event.
I hope you guys had as good an experience as a player as I did as a caster. If um, there's one thing I can add on the end of it. Absolutely. I just, just want to say, first of all, thank you to all the viewers and everyone at NEC who made this event happen. And I also want to do a quick shout out to uh, our, like our team. Uh, obviously, we don't really have a, a proper sponsor with Aftermath. It's just me, Leary, and a couple other guys that are just you know trying our best to make it happen. Of course, we had Nikov, NBL, and Hart. And we put together a lot of effort to make a boot camp happen. And it cost us a few thousand dollars. But it really paid off with how like we bonded as a team, got closer. And I just feel like going forward, if we can potentially pick up an, an, an esports team, a sponsor, to help facilitate the, that kind of arrangement for us, I think that's the next step for us as a team. We're all loving Age of Empires 2 right now, and I just feel like going forward, I don't know if Leary has any words, but that's kind of where I want to push uh, you know, our, our group of guys. What he said. <laughs> uh, awesome. It's a perfect Hera, moment for that too, Hera. Congratulations, Hera the, dude. Hera, the spokesman for the team as well, apparently. He's the Actually, micro. I still want to add one thing. Um, obviously, I missed it out in the last couple of events, but I uh, obviously want to thank everyone who supported me, uh, my whole family, and I know some friends are watching as well. Um, I think it goes the same for Hera and other, any other player. We always welcoming any support, and you know, that's what we're here for, right? We play for the people, and uh, we just love the game. So, thanks for that. And uh, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed it all. Yeah, and I'll shift that into a big thanks for Nilly. Uh, this event is like so utterly selfless in the way it's organized, right? Like 100% of the prize pool going towards the players. Uh, amazing compromise for, for us to get us here, make sure we're comfortable. Uh, it's a lot of work as someone who hosts events myself. I know how it's like oftentimes a year or two in the buildup, especially if you're doing, if you want to do like a repeat of a land and a pandemic happened, right? I'm sure he's been thinking about this for a long time. So uh, our hippo who will eventually, oh, he's sitting there. Okay. So who will eventually come to take this mic deserves all the love uh, and claps and salutes that you've got for him. Uh, he's, he's awesome. And, uh, well. and, 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 every, yeah, 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 those everyone three, everyone except us, everyone except us, absolutely. <laughs> oh, no, no, you guys do, you guys do. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, seriously, uh, you know, so if you already haven't given Nilly some love, make sure to do it. And with that, um, Nilly, I am finished. I will take some couch time alone then. Wonderful, go for it. Bye, chat. Um, yeah. So, um, two quick uh, things um, about the chat activity that we just had. First of all, oh. something that I'm... Or just some claps for Hera directly. Um, so obviously, winner interview is mandatory, and loser interview is completely open to the person. Leary himself said, "Nah, I'm totally fine. I want to sit there as well. Want to share the moment." Obviously, he was still sad. Um, so respect to Leary. Um, this was com completely voluntary, right? So uh, much, much respect for him. Also, uh, I'm probably breaking some NDAs here. Um, but screw it. Um, we are obviously in a balancing discord with all the top players, influential people in Age of Empires, and constantly discussing potential changes for the game. And the devs are aware about Flemish Revolution. That's what I will say. Um, <laughs> be hopeful, be not hopeful. Um, yeah, that's, that's what I will say. Um, Obviously a crazy event again, right? Uh, nine full days of Age of Empires, long, 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 long days. And I won't make a long speech, right? I, I, I made massive speeches at NAC 1, 2, 3. I also had a long speech at N4C. Uh, so let's keep this one short. I will do a recap video um, coming midweek, right? I already said there were a lot of like questions that came over and over again. I will address all those in those videos and then we'll get into the emotional part, what I, what I felt with you and numbers, what I wanted before, yada, yada. Um, I think we were around like 41,000 in total and I think like 24K on this channel alone. So um, very, very reasonable spoiler alert for the video there. Um, our sponsors, obviously, as you can see at the top, Backforce, providing us with all the nice chairs just quote from Hera, Backforce and Lead Desk together, he felt so comfortable, was always um, having the perfect working conditions there, if he practiced, if he played in the tournament. Then also a good friend, 
obviously big big name in the age of empires community and supporting this event as well i hope i did them justice um obviously they didn't have an event in quite some month and send them some love they are obviously um so kind to me, so kind to the Age of Empires community in general. So thank you so much, Red Bull. There, Terra Gaming sponsoring our PCs and giving us all the setup there. Um, worked very, very smoothly, I have to say. Um, yeah, basically perfect setup. We set everything up in the shortest of times and could just start training and could start with the tournament there as well quite nicely. And now I'm hearing myself a lot in the back there. Yeah, that's the setup with the training room. People absolutely loved it. And obviously, the basically biggest sponsor and ma making so much happen for us, Gamer Legion, right? Obviously, I struggled a lot with sponsors. You know about that before. And they are flying in, said, Nilly, you're on a massive hole. But we will cover it for you. Um, go continue making this event as good as possible. Um, try to be break even. And obviously, I, I still invested more and all like. The, the sub money and all the, the ad revenue and something is all to cover the cost. So I, I'm basically break even here thanks to Gamer Legion. And that's why we could put all this crazy amount in there. 35,000 on top. And obviously Microsoft, who gave me $100,000 to run this whole tournament. I had a talk, um, a YouTube video like two or three weeks ago, where I talked about what this event costs and how we ended up here in this situation. And yeah, now we're coming to individuals. First, a uh, big, big thank you is towards the players. Uh, crazy how good they performed, how much they practiced before, how much they practiced here, very, very dedicated, and how I never had to twist. Tristan is constantly eating, right? How we never had to... <laughs> Five, hours. Five hours, he says. Um, how I never had to twist their arm to help out with show matches, help out with casting, all the interviews, SIF analysis. It was so, so nice. And obviously, that's the backbone of this tournament as well, right? How they simply participate on it. That's not like an eSport event. Okay, we're grinding it out. No, it becomes a bit of a family and everyone works together making the product as good as possible. Casters, obviously I love T90, I love Dave. I knew that they would work. Took a big risk with Dash, right? Kind of a no name in the scene, obviously was following, was playing and oh boy did he deliver. And I'm so happy how welcoming the Age of Empires community can be. We have Riley integrated into the community and so many people love him and I think Dash is the next step, the next person that we have there and I, I'm so happy to have him here and he was a great, great addition. I saw so many hearts in the chat, I saw many nice YouTube comments and people loved him. People wanted to g uh, see him cast the finals as well. Maybe I didn't give him enough camera time over the last uh, playoff days, but oh boy, uh, I'm happy that he was here and what a great addition he was be, uh, in front of the camera and behind the camera. Also someone that was a lot behind the camera, Vodka. Nine, 12 hour days or something, and he soldiered through every single day, people clapping. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Way too good looking to not be on camera every single time. And he was just sitting there observing, right? Never a break. People jumped into the game, production screaming at him. And that was, that was just massive how, how well he improved and how open he is to feedback there as well. Absolutely love that. Nerfox, the stat guy as well, always flying in, trying to correct me if I'm having the wrong stats or squeezing in some nice fun facts. Lovely stuff as well. Debbie helping me out with my socials, helping out with people uh, setting up and making my life so much easier. Now I upgraded from my average three hours of sleep from NAC 1 to 3 to three and a half hours of sleep. So it makes my life way easier as well. And obviously, the production, the meme lords, the guys that constantly got in there. Uh, three people making so much happen. We had the highlights flying in, the POVs, all the transitions, the draft looked beautiful, in my opinion. The memes flying in, Clippy, uh, I, like so many people loved it. Um, it was crazy for me. And obviously, the biggest things. Without them, anything wouldn't happen. It's you. Yeah, I'm talking to you. <laughs> the community. 
right? Um, uh, like we are fueled by your energy, by all the chat messages, by the crazy amount of dollars that are flying in. And with, without you watching, this wouldn't be a thing. And therefore, if you want to see more Age of Empires, we have lots of crazy tournaments coming right now. There's a Nations Cup running. We are having roughly 16 teams left, the best one in the world. Watch that. All the casters are covering that. Then we have a Rage Forest tournament happening, a 4v4 Black Forest tournament. If you like Black Forest, you see, I think, 10 people on this tournament here participating. T90, me are playing, eight of the players, and it's going to be great. And also, Mamp has an announcement there as well. So, be, be very excited. And if you want to see more Age of Empires, the community will have you covered. Thank you so much for tuning in, and see you soon. Goodbye, Apple lovers.